Area high school basketball is on the air. Every week, Eagle 102 brings you the best of area high school sports on air at 102.1, online at kjfmradio.com and on the KJFM radio app. Now to the court for high school basketball on your area sports leader, KJFM radio. And welcome back to Bowling Green High School for the boys championship afternoon, if you will. My name is Jim Ross. Stacey Martin and Maddie Ingram are with me this afternoon, and we'll bring you the three boys championship games tonight from the 99th Annual Bowling Green Invitational Tournament. First up for us is the consolation game, and the North Callaway Thunderbirds will take on the Ellsbury Indians, the five seed and the six seed. We expect it to be a good game, and we'll tell you all about it on the Bowling Green Pharmacy pregame show after this on KJFM WBBA Sports. Bowling Green Veterinary Clinic and Tom Bowling Ford. Family Drug, your community health mart pharmacy in Louisiana, reminds you that this is a good time to review your medicine cabinet. Another cold and flu season means taking stock of outdated or no longer used medication. The folks at Family Drug also remind you that changes in your prescriptions may pose drug interaction problems. When you're choosing a pharmacy for your family's prescription, talk to your dedicated staff at Family Drug, Louisiana. Health Mart, taking the time to listen and care. Experience the ultimate golf adventure at Tea Time Golf, Bowling Green's premier indoor golf simulator destination. Whether you're a solo golfer looking for a relaxing round or want to challenge your friends, Tea Time Golf can accommodate up to six players per hour. Choose from a variety of game modes, stroke play, scramble, teams, or even driving range. Visit their Facebook page for more information on pricing and reservations or call 573-591-6699. Tea Time Golf is not just a game. It's a golfing experience year-round like no other. Swing by and elevate your game. They are located at 1107 Business Highway 61, Bowling Green, Missouri. Don't have time to stop by the bank? That's not a problem if you're a customer of People's Bank and Trust. With our mobile and online banking service, you can now bank from anywhere. Deposit checks, pay bills, transfer funds between accounts, check the latest activity on your account, and view images of your checks, all from the convenience of your desktop and smartphone. So start banking on your schedule and download the People's Bank and Trust app today. People's Bank and Trust, hometown banking the way it should be. Member FDIC. Hi, this is Shelly Clucky with Fight County Mutual Insurance Company. We appreciate the value of working hard and making sure you've taken steps to make sure you're prepared for whatever comes your direction. Best wishes to all of our area athletes for another amazing season from myself and Corey Buchanan at Fight County Mutual Insurance Company on the square in Bowling Green. The area's best coverage of high school sports on Eagle 102 brought to you by Pike County Health Department, People's Savings Bank, and All Parts. Bringing you all the action from the Eagle 102 broadcast booth, sponsored by Family Drug in Louisiana. It's time now for the Eagle 102 pregame show, sponsored by Bowling Green Pharmacy. North Callaway reached the consolation game. They uh, fell to... Bowling Green in the opening round, 75-50, to and then defeated Silex, 51-42 on Thursday night. Ellsbury fell to Clompton, 57-43 on Tuesday, and then defeated Louisiana, 45-38, to in a game that was actually much closer than the final score indicated. And that brings us to the consolation championship game tonight. These teams have not played Stason, and uh, – they should be fairly evenly matched. Ellsbury is seven and eleven. North Callaway is four and thirteen. So we expect a competitive game here. Oh yeah, I, I agree. I think it's going to be a very, very close game, and that's also why their seedings are, I mean, five and six, because um, obviously the seeding committee per se feels like there are similarities. So I'm kind of intrigued to see how North Callaway comes out of the gate and. See if Bo, uh, oh, I don't know why I said Bowling Green. We're in Bowling Green, and see if uh, Ellsbury has a match for Peasold and Creekhead. They are the two leading scores for North Callaway at sixteen point nine for Peasold, fourteen point one for Craighead. Ellsbury's scoring is generally pretty balanced throughout the year. They've got a couple of guys that can get hot from three, and every time I say they struggle from three, they light it up. So I'm going to keep my mouth shut tonight, and we'll just see what. 
what the Ellsbury Indians well, I had, thought you were had gonna, to offer. I thought you were going to say something. We could have had a shootout today. There you go. <laughs> they have not met this year <laughs> <laughs> at, at all. Uh, so they will meet later on in the conference, uh, in, in the conference uh, season as the conference season after this tournament is pretty much tournament season's over with in Missouri and conference uh, – Everything will be conference battles from here on out to the end of um, the season, which is actually about the 16th of February, I think, are the last regular season games. And so we're only three weeks away from from districts in and, and, and Missouri and regionals in Illinois firing up. And so it, 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 it seems like the season's flown by. Well, I was just going to say the same thing to my mom. Like, Man, really, it's been a quick season. I mean, teams have only played 15, 16 games. I mean, for both sides of the river, you know. But then there are some teams that I've covered that have played 20, 22 games. Right. So it has been a short but yet a long season for some teams. Let's take a break, and we'll be back with Keys to Game after this on KJFM WBBA Sports. Some work, Salon and Tanning, Hayden's Motorsport Center, and Lynn's Heritage House. It's a great time to buy or sell a home. I'm Vicki Cadwalder, and I take pride in offering skills that make the process go smoothly from beginning to end. Even after closing, I enjoy staying in touch and being there to help you if you have any other needs or questions. During the process, I'll work closely with your lender and other professionals to make it as effortless as possible. I'm here with you every step of the way, so when you're ready to buy or sell, call me and we'll create a personalized plan just for you. Vicki Cadwalder Real Estate, loving our small town life. You simply can't buy a better replacement window than one from Sun Window Company. Energy efficient windows and doors with a lifetime warranty on both the window and installation. Sun Window Company, family owned and operated since 1989, offers low factory direct prices on high quality vinyl windows. Custom designed to fit perfectly and built to last. See how much you can save. Call Sun Windows, 573-549-2080 for details and a free estimate. Sun Window Company, Highway 161 in Middletown. It's time to visit Hayden's Motorsports Center in Frankfurt. Time to ride with Honda and Polaris ATVs, side-by-sides, and motorcycles. Time to work with steel and Husqvarna chainsaws, weed eaters, leaf blowers, and more. Hayden's Motorsports Center, just off Highway 61 North in Frankfurt. Welcome to Vast National Bank. How can I help you? Hey, I'm here to talk to someone about a loan. Oh, I'll grab you the L97B. We call it the Just Talking Form. Mm, What about actually applying for a loan? Oh, my. Let me pop in the toner cartridge. Hey, Bill, you want to pass me the big stapler? Yeah, I'm just going to go to People's Savings Bank. Skip the mega banks. When you need a loan, visit People's Savings Bank. The people you know and trust. Member FDIC, Equal Housing Lender. Area high school sports on Eagle 102. Brought to you by Rick Rodhouse, Country Financial Agent, NOAA Builders, and Central State Bank of Illinois. Time now for the Eagle 102 Keys to the Game on KJFM. Sponsored by Vicki Cadwallader Real Estate in Louisiana. Well, the keys of the game tonight for Ellsbury is they've got to slow down and keep an eye on Sam Peasel and Isaiah Craighead. Craighead, he's probably 6'2", 6'3", and he'll step out and shoot the three from time to time. And those are the two main offensive threats for North Callaway. For Ellsbury, they are going to need to defend, and they're going to need to make make some shots. They're, they're going to be undersized a little bit, although – Ezekiel Byers is 6'4". Uh, after him, they, they, they're they not very tall. And uh, Tapley will play a lot, I think. He's about 6'3". So, but they're just not a very physical team, Stacey. And you've seen Ellsbury play. And uh, uh, North Cowley likes to mix it up a little bit. And so Ellsbury's going to be have to be able to handle the physicality of this game, too. Yeah, uh, I agree with that. Uh, the few times I've seen Ellsbury, it seems like they're kind of scared to go into the ring and box a little bit. Uh, they kind of want to stay on the outside and kind of shoot uh, from the outside arc. And even though if they may not have them going in, they don't change the course. They keep doing that. But uh, they do need to find an answer for North Callaway's inside presence, whether Ellsbury wants to play that style of game or not. They're going to be forced to play that way, I would think, today. So I'm kind of intrigued to see who's going to step up for Ellsbury in that regard. Both teams will get out and go with it if they get a chance. So there's the possibility we have an up-and-down affair here in this first game. 
We'll have a third place game between uh, Bowling Green and Winfield. That game will be approximately at 2.30. And then the championship game will have Van Farr and Clopton scoring off in what should be a doozy of a championship game. If you didn't tune in last night, North Callaway girls, they won the consolation trophy, defeating Salix 66-59. Ellsbury took home the third place trophy with a 32-29 win over Louisiana. And the Clopton Hawks dismantled Winfield and won the championship with a final score of 59 to 37. So you're all up to date from the Bowling Green Tournament. It's been a week of basketball with eight games on Tuesday due to the weather issues. And so we've had our whole crew, and we'll tell you about that when we get to the end of the night. But it takes the village to do this, and we're glad to be here and glad to have you with us. Let's take our final break, and we'll be back to the starting lineups and your opening tip right after this on KJFM WBBA Sports. By Center Locker Service, Community State Bank of Missouri, and Meyer Implement Company. Community State Bank of Missouri in Bowling Green and Troy, where the number one priority is the customer and adding new services to help simplify your life and building a strong, high performance financial services organization. Community State Bank in Bowling Green and Troy, your community bank since 1887, member FDIC. At Gambino's Eatery in Louisiana, we're serving up mouth-watering pizzas that'll take your taste buds on a flavor journey. Indulge in our irresistible pizza creations and order now for Sunday pickup through Super Bowl Sunday. Gambino's Eatery. Enjoy a pizza experience like no other. If it's not on the menu, we don't talk about it. Ingram Plumbing has always been known for its outstanding plumbing service. But did you know that Ingram's is also the largest retail plumbing supply store in the area? We carry Delta faucets, a complete line of Whirlpool tubs and showers, jacuzzi pumps, and many other specialty items. Stop by Ingram Plumbing today, Highway 61 Bowling Green. With 14 stores across Missouri and Illinois, La Crosse Lumber Company provides lumber, quality products, and service to homeowners, builders, DIYers, and more. With some of the top brand names in the business available, La Crosse Lumber has what you need for your next project. Stop into any location for a free estimate before you start your next build. La Crosse Lumber Company, the oldest, most reliable lumber and hardware company in the Midwest since 1873. Area High School Sports on Eagle 102. Brought to you by Cellular and Satellite Center, Pike County Memorial Hospital, and Community State Bank of Missouri. The Eagle 102 starting lineups on KJFM are sponsored by Community State Bank of Missouri in Bowling Green and Troy. Welcome back to Bowling Green High School. It's the 99th annual Bowling Green Invitational, the longest, oldest tournament in Missouri. Running neck and neck with Monroe City. And of course, we brought you a number of games from the Winchester tournament earlier this year. That is the longest, oldest tournament in Illinois. This was their 101st year, wasn't it, uh, Stacey? Yeah. They have quite an event over there as well. That's a 16 team tournament, if I'm not mistaken. Yes. All books. Runs from Saturday to Saturday. So a ton of basketball games from Winchester at West Central High School. Both teams are going to the bench, so let's tell you about the starting lineups. North Callaway will be in their home whites with green numbers and black trim. Ellsbury in their road reds with white numbers and no trim on that. Starting for North Callaway there, the number five seed is a senior, number five, Paul Russell, a junior, number 11, Clayton Moore, a senior, number 12, Sam Peasel. A sophomore, number 31, Austin Brown, and a senior, number 35, Isaiah Craighead. So it'll be Craighead, Brown, Peasel, Moore, and Russell for Matt Miller and his North Callaway Thunderbirds. And let's take a look at the Ellsbury roster. I didn't hold it up to see if they were going to do the national anthem when the focus game. Doesn't look like they are. So the number six seed, Ellsbury Indians. Starting for them, a six-foot junior, number three, Noah Wilson. A 5'7", senior, number 10, Ben Dow. A 6'3", senior, number 12, Kyle Tapley. A 6'4", senior, number 21, Ezekiel Dow. And a six-foot junior, number three, Nolan Wilson. So it'll be Byers, Dotson, Tapley, Dow, Wilson for Brandon Miller. And his Ellsbury Indians. They're 7-11 on the season. North Callaway comes in at 4-13. and 
little statistical stuff for you. Ellsbury's giving up 45, or scoring 45 a game and giving up 46 a game, while North Callaway is scoring 53 a game and giving up 63 a game. So the differentials are the same, but we'll see who can get close to their scoring average. And Stacey Martin is going to have the play-by-play for you. All righty. So they're here we're going to start the game, uh, waiting for the refs to start the game with the jump ball as they are at the scores table, just double-checking everything. It's going to be Ezekiel Byers for Ellsbury taking the tip against North Callaway's Clayton Moore when we get started here. Yeah, we're already having issues. We haven't even thrown up the ball well, yet. Well, they don't have a basketball, so it's kind of important. That, that's I problematic. Mean, I think they're going to play yeah. with their hopes and dreams. Yeah, that no basketball <laughs> is problematic. But uh, I mean, well, we, I guess we could play a shadow basketball game. But the referee has one, so I guess we're going to get get started here. Right, we'll this. So uh, Ellsbury going to go from the left to your right on the radio dial. North Callaway gets the tip, and it's going to be in possession of. Sam Peasold on top of the key. He's looking to his left, doesn't use the pick, picks up his dribble, is tough guarded by Dotson, hands it over to Craighead. Craighead throws it over to Russell. Russell picks up his dribble, throws it over to Craighead. Craighead gives it back to Peasold. Peasold looks to drive the lane, kicks it to the corner. Gets on top to Russell. Russell throws it over to Peasold for the three. Just off the mark, it's going to be out of bounds on North Callaway, and Ellsbury is going to have possession. Ellsbury came out in a man-to-man defense. Mike mentioned they've been playing better as of late. They started out really slow this year, but they've got things going, and let's see what they can do on the offensive end. So, Dow is the man with the ball going across the court, gets it over to Dodson. Dodson plays a little pitch and catch with Dow, throws it over to Wilson. Wilson back over to Dow. Thought about the three, didn't take it, so he gives it to Dodson. They're kind of doing a little in and out here, trying to get something in the middle going. Dow has the ball on top of the key. Throws it over to Tapley. Tapley throws it over to Dodson. Dodson back over to Dow. Dow is going to drive the lane. Puts up the two-pointer, and it's going to be no good, and it's going to be rebounded by North Callaway. So Peasold has the ball, getting across the half-court line, setting everything up, getting orders from the coach. Throws it on down to Moore. Moore throws it back to Peasold. Peasold throws it over to Brown and back to Peasold on top of the key. Throws it over to Brown. Back over to Moore. Back Russell now has the ball on top of the key. He's going to be tipped by Dow, but Peasel remains control. Throws it over to Brown for the three. Got it. So North Callaway strikes first as Austin Brown hits the three-point play. Good ball movement that time by North Callaway and found the open shot. Looks like North Callaway's out in like a 2-3 trapping zone maybe as Ellsbury gets the ball in the lane and try to kick it out to Wilson. It's going to be a turnover stolen by Brown. So Peasold is working the ball for North Callaway. He picks up his dribble, finds Craighead inside, kicks it back out to Russell. Russell for the three off the mark, but it's rebounded by Brown. It's going to be a foul on Ellsbury. So North Callaway is going to inbounds the ball underneath their own basket as that was on Noah Wilson, his first team's first. Thank you for that. So Peasold is inbounding the ball. Throws it inside to Craighead. Craighead picks up his dribble, kicks it out to Russell. Russell throws it back out to Craighead for the three. Got it. Throws six to nothing quickly in favor of North Callaway as Craighead hits the three. As we talked about in the pregame, he can go inside and out a little bit as needed. On Ellsbury's side, Wilson skips the crash over to Dotson. Back to Dow. Dow throws it to Wilson. Wilson looks to go for the three, decides to cut the lane, finds Dotson for the three. No good, rebounded by Byers, and he puts it back up and good. Well, a good skip pass that time, but Ellsbury's just got to get it in the high post to break down that defense. They didn't have anybody in the middle, but they got a break with the skip pass and good work on the offensive glass. So now it's North Callaway's turn, and Russell has it. Throws it down to Brown in the corner, takes it back out top to Peasel. Peasel finds Moore. Moore then throws it over to Peasel. Peasel for the three. No good. Rebounded by Brown. Brown puts it back up. No good. And it's going to be rebounded by Byers using that big 6-4 frame for his advantage. 
Zodal throws over to Dodson. Dodson tries a three again. No good. Tipped out by Ellsbury, and it's going to be North Callaway's ball. Yeah, Byers got inside that time. Could get to it to tip it, but tipped it too hard and eluded Wilson at the end of the North Callaway bench. I will say that North Callaway's doing a real good job. I want some rebounds, but Ellsbury has to put their body on somebody, or you can't keep giving these teams this many chances. That's the physicality we talked about in the pregame. As Peasold, another end for the three, no good. And it's going to be a jump ball, so it will be Ellsbury's ball. He's a little frustrated. He's had three good looks and hasn't been able to convert as checking in is Levi Drake for North Callaway along with Eric Blair. So Ellsbury has another end down on top of the key. Throws it out to Wilson. Wilson tries the three this time, and it's no good. And it's going to be rebounded by North Callaway, but they're going to call a jump ball, so North Callaway still going to maintain possession. So it's newly checked in. Uh, Drake brings it across to half court, throws it over to Blair. Blair finds Craighead. Craighead looks to go to the left hand to the lane, picks up his dribble, throws it out to Brown. Brown throws it over to Drake. Picks up his dribble again, throws it over to Craighead. Now kind of doing a little bit of weave on top here. Kind of in and out. Oh, and a nice move by Peacehold. And he misses the bunny. So Ellsbury with the momentum on the fast break as they get a tip on North Callaway. So they're going to maintain possession. Nice reverse pivot that time by Peasel on the offensive end. and Just couldn't convert. He hadn't, he hadn't been able to buy a basket so far. I'm not sure if he was shocked he was that open, but I was, <laughs> I was surprised he missed it. Ellsbury throws it in, and they find Wilson for the three. So he is on the board for Ellsbury. That's going to make it 6-5 to five with 3.17 to go in the first quarter. Dow picks up his defense here against North Callaway. Throws it over to Blair. Guarded by Byers. By Blair throws it over to Craig Hedder. Gives it back to Blair. And we're going to have a travel, so it's going to be Ellsbury's ball. And that's going to be the first turnover of the day. It is. 6-5 our score, 302 to play here in the first. Dow walking up the court, finds Dotson on the right-hand wing. Looks inside, nothing there. Goes it back to Dow. Dow finds Wilson. Wilson goes to the baseline, looks inside to Byers, and Byers throws it out to Dotson. Dotson with a little floater, and it's going to be a tip back for Byers. He's all over the offensive glass. Two offensive rebounds, two buckets for Ezekiel Byers, and Ellsbury has their first lead. He's definitely making his presence known on the inside. So on the other side, we have Brown on the top of the key, guarded by Wilson, throws it over to Drake. Drake looks to go the lane, kicks it off the glass, and it's going to be good. High off the glass for Levi Drake. So that's going to make it 8-7 to seven in favor of North Callaway. Dotson has the ball on the right wing. Look inside, nothing there, so he goes to skip pass over to Dow. Dow gives it right back to Dotson. Dotson tries the three again. No good. It tipped out, but it's no. It is going to be collected by North Callaway. Quick ball move on the other end. Brown throws it inside to Craighead. Craighead throws it out to Peasel, back to Craighead. Looks to drive the lane. Goes up with his left hand, but he loses control, and Wilson picks up the ball. He's going to try a wraparound pass that time. It got it knocked out of his hands on the way up. Dow on the other end drives in the lane, kicks out to Dotson. Who finds Byers? Byers kicks it out to Dotson. Down to Dow. And he got called for a travel and knew it immediately. I feel like Dotson's kind of hesitant now. He hasn't hit one outside the arc yet and kind of scared to take that shot when he just needs to trust his ability. And yeah, shooter's got to shoot is what I'm trying to say, basically. Sophomore Noah Hoskins checks in for Ellsbury. Tapley will take a seat. So, on the other end, Cunningham looking to drive the lane. Turns it over, and it's going to be stolen by Hoxton. And Hoxton's going to, <clears throat> excuse me, look to drive the lane. It's going to be tipped out of North Callaway, so Ellsbury's going to maintain possession. Hoskin never really got good control of that ball on the dribble. And in now for Ellsbury is Matthew Jordan. 
So Wilson looks to drive the lane. It's going to be a foul. And he should be shooting two, and he is. So this is going to be Ellsbury's first attempt from the free throw line today, as it is 8-7 to seven in favor of North Calloway. A minute and eight to go in the first quarter, and his first one is up. And good. As he rolls it in. Fouls on Clayton Moore, his first. Team's first, so not a lot of fouls in this first seven minutes of the game. And Ellsbury takes the lead for the first time today with that free throw by Wilson to make it 9-8 to eight in favor of Ellsbury. So Drake gets the ball across the court. He has a double pick. He uses his left-hand side, throws it inside to Blair. Blair mishandles it but gets, an, gets a shot off, and he's going to be fouled. So we have back-to-back -back free throws for both teams quickly after not having much fouls called, as Jim said earlier in the game. Foul's going to be on Byers, his first, team second. So Blair's first one up, and it's no good. Back in for Ellsbury, Kyle Tapley. Byers will take a seat with 57.2 seconds to play in the quarter. Blair receives the ball for the second, rolls it up, and gets the roll in. So he is one for two to make it nine to nine. Tie ball game, 53 seconds to go. Dow with the ball on the other end for Ellsbury, throws it over to Jordan. Jordan gives it right back to Dow. Back to Wilson. Back to Dow. Dow wants to shoot the three, but he doesn't. He drives in, kicks back out to Wilson. Back over to Dow. A little pitch and catch between Dow and Wilson as they're looking to probably run this clock out maybe for the last shot. Dow does a Euro step inside, finds Tapley, and he puts it in. So I was wrong on the last shot. Good feed that time by Dow. Good catch by Tapley and finish it to the iron. So North Callaway with uh, 16 seconds to go with the ball in their possession. Drake. He tries to go left. He gets cut off by Dow. So he goes right. Finds Cunningham. Cunningham puts it up, and it's going to be no good. Saved by North Callaway. And Drake is going to put the ball up. No good. Rebounded by Ellsbury. So that's going to be the end of the first quarter. So we have Ellsbury 11, North Callaway 9. And we'll have the second quarter when we come back with KJFM WBBA Sports. Brought to you by Bolin Chevrolet. Get spot a shot in Louisiana and DG Firearms. Greatness doesn't happen overnight. It takes time, focus, and dedication. At Shelter Insurance, we understand that because we put in the hard work and dedication for decades. And that commitment has paid off with award-winning customer service for your auto, home, and life insurance. Ask me, Ashley Jenkins, about Shelter's auto, home, and life options. I'm Tylee Mills, the CEO of Pike County Memorial Hospital. You've heard it from your friends, family, and even neighbors. They choose Pike County Memorial Hospital. Quality care from quality people. Pike County Memorial Hospital. Follow area high school sports on KJFM Radio. Brought to you by Browns Processing and Smokehouse Meats, Young Enterprises, and Family Drug. Well, we are back here for the Constellation game between Ellsbury and North Callaway. And after the first quarter, Ellsbury is going to have a two-point lead, 9-11, to 11, as they are going to start the second quarter with possession. And quickly, they throw it over to Dodson, who finds Dow. Dow thought with the three, drove in the lane, kicked it out to Wilson. He tries to drive the lane, kicks it out to Dodson. Dodson kind of holding the ball, throws a skip pass over to Wilson. Wilson drives the lane, picks up his dribble, and it's going to be tied up for a jump ball, and it's going to be North Callaway. So kind of a wasted possession there by Ellsbury. Dribbled into the double team and had nowhere to go. Third turnover of the game for the Indians. So on the other end, we're going to have Drake leading the charge. Finds Craig, Car Craig head at the top of the key. Immediately gives it to Brown to set things up. He's old back in the game to start the quarter as he has possession. Finds Brown, looks inside, nothing there. Finds Craig hit, he looks to go inside, nothing there. Finds with the Peasolt. Peasolt spin dribble, tries to do a no-look pass, and it is stolen by Dotson. Dotson leading the charge, picks up his dribble, and finds Byers, who gives it to Dow. Dow gives it out to Jordan. Back to Dow, 
goes baseline, finds Byers, finds Dotson. Dotson drives the lane, little floater, and it's good. Good look that time by Dotson, and we've got a whistle and a timeout on the floor. So we will be back with more from KJFM WBBA Sports. By Mick Mailer and Sons, Backhoe and Excavating, Advanced Eye Care, and Wood Smoked Meats. Get the best deals of the year during New Holland's Value Bonanza. Going on now at Bowling Green Tractor. Put 0% financing for 72 months in your pocket or choose a freeloader on Workmaster Subcompact and Compact Tractors and Boomer Compact Tractors. Reliable, powerful, and easy to run. They help you tackle chores without breaking the bank. Work smarter with year-end value bonanza savings at Bowling Green Tractor. Stop in today. Offers end December 31st. For commercial use only, customer participation subject to credit qualifications and CNH Industrial Capital America LLC approval. Standard term, conditions, and other restrictions apply. Down payment may be required. High school sports on your area sports leader, Eagle 102. Brought to you by Bowling Green Tractor, Vicki Cadwalder, Real Estate, and Ingram Plumbing. And we're back here after the timeout as North Callaway has the ball. Brown puts up a three, and it is good to make it 12-13 to 13 in favor of Ellsbury. So that was Brown's second three of the half. On the other end, Dow has the ball against a 2-3 zone that North Callaway is presenting. Gives it over to Dodson, takes a pick by Tapley, doesn't use it, throws it over to Dow. Dow finds Jordan in the corner, back out to Dow. Tapley sets the pick. Dow doesn't really use it. Finds Jordan in the lane. No good. Rebounded by Tapley, but he's fouled. So Tapley is going to get the chance to shoot free throws to increase this lead in favor of Ellsbury. Man, Jordan had a good look that time. Just couldn't convert. Fouls on Clayton Moore, his second. So we'll see if Matt Miller, if his practice is to take out the player with two. First free throws off the mark. By Taplin. And Jordan goes to the bench as Wilson comes back in for Ellsbury. And Tapley gets the ball for a second. Two bounces. Rolls it on his hands. Puts it up. And it is good. And Hoskin will return for Taplin. So that's going to make it 14-12 to 12 in favor of Ellsbury with 5.50 to go in the second quarter. Drake with the ball across the court for North Callaway. Finds Craighead. Craighead picks up his dribble on the left-hand wing. No no one opened. Then he finds Brown. Brown gives it over to Peasel. Peasel looks to drive the lane. Kicks it out to Drake. Looks inside to Russell. Sorry, Moore. He puts it up and is no good. It's rebounded by Hoxton as he finds Dow on the break. Dow tries to go inside. Finds Wilson on the other end. Who finds Byers? Or the pass was just cutting the lane. I kept yeah. getting deflected. I wasn't sure who to say. It was deflected and fell right in the hands of Byers. He's got six now and a lead back to four, matching the biggest lead of the game at sixteen to twelve. So on the other end, Craig has gives it Peasold. Peasold pulls up the twelve footer and gets the roll. So he finally gets his first baskets of the night as North Cali comes out in the four court press. And it's going to be a foul on North Callaway. Well, let's see if they're well, going to they're give him a timeout first. Well, I think they are giving him a timeout first. Ball was actually loose, so timeout, El Ellsbury. All right, so we're going to have a quick we'll, – we'll probably just leave it. We'll, we'll just leave it here because the timeout, keep, keep it right here, yeah. the timeout already started and, and so forth. But like you said, the ball was kind of – on the ground, rolling around. I wasn't sure he should have got awarded the timeout. I'm, I'm confident Mary you used to wear the stripes. Probably wouldn't have given the timeout, but that's neither here or there. Yeah, I always question whether allowing the coach to call timeouts makes sense or not. <laughs> so I'm going to go with no for right now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So Ellsbury is going to inbounds the ball in front of their own bench. With 4.48 to go in the second, 14 to 16 in favor of Ellsbury as North Callaway has this full court press back on. Dotson immediately finds Jordan. Jordan gives it back to Dotson, mishandles. Still had to get across the half court, and they do, and they find Wilson. 
gives up the dots and dots and looking inside nothing there finds jordan and it's going to be a turnover in favor of north callaway as they steal it away so now we're going to have russell looking down to Peasel. Peasel in right hand wing and finds blair blair looks to go to his left picks up his dribble finds russell russell then gives it to craighead not much spacing going on with North Kelly. They got four guys in one little area as Russell gets the ball to try to set things up again. So then he throws it over to Blair at the top of the key. Kind of running a five, four out, one in. P hold quickly puts up the 14 footer. No good. Rebounded by Byers as Byer finds Dotson to run things for Ellsbury. Finds Wilson on the left hand wing. Gives it back to Dotson. Dotson throws it over to Jordan. As they're doing a little pitch and catch, Wilson has it back to Dotson. Dotson gives it back to Wilson. Looks to drive the baseline. Nothing there. Throws out to Dotson. He tries a deep three. No good, but Byers with the rebound. And they're going to call a foul on North Callaway, so Ellsbury will keep possession and not have to worry about losing the arrow in their favor. I think the foul is going to go on Eric Blair. That will be his first as Dow will return. 3.28 to play in the half. 16-14, Ellsbury on top. Dow's going to be one inbounds it. They have three up top. Cut into the basket. Throws it out to Jordan. Jordan gives it to Dodson. Dodson, the left-hander, goes to his left, goes back to his right, goes back to his left again to give it to Jordan. Jordan looks him through to Hoxson. Hoxson throws it out to Dow. You haven't seen him shoot a three-pointer yet, which is kind of surprising for me. As Jordan has it on the left-hand wing, gives it to Dodson, back over to Dow. They're trying to give it inside, but nothing's there. So Dow tries to cut the lane. Who gives it to Byers on the inside? He puts it up and he gets the rolling. Just crawled over the front of the rim. Good ball movement that time by Ellsbury to get it inside. And it's back to a four point lead at 18 14. So Ellsbury's patience really paid off. They had a good, easy shot there for him. And on the other end, we got Blair looking inside the Brown. And it's going to be out of bounds on. Ellsbury, so North Callaway will keep possession underneath their own basket. Tapley and Wilson return for the Indians. Hoskin and Jordan will take a seat. So, Pizzo is going to inbounds the ball. Throws it into Craighead and by the basket. Nice up and under, and it is blocked by Byers. So, Ellsbury is going to run possession with it. He's going to throw it out. Dow is going to throw it out to Wilson, who's going to find Dow on the right-hand side. Dow's trying to set things up. Nothing there, so he throws out the dots and he gives it right back to Dow immediately. Dow looks to go inside, kicks it back out again. Looking to see Wilson cut into the basket. Nothing there, so he throws it to Dotson on the left-hand wing, back to Dow. Now he finds Wilson on the right-hand side. Skip past to Dotson. Top the key to Tapley. Tapley tries to throw it out to Dotson. It's tipped, but Dotson maintains possession. Now we got Dow cutting the lane, puts a little floater up. It's going to be tipped around by Ellsbury, but North Cali is going to maintain possession, and they're going to throw it immediately over as Wilson steals the ball. Who finds Dotson? Who finds Tapley inside? Who turns it over on North Callaway? So North Callaway now gets possession as Craighead gets it across the half court line. Throws it to Russell. He finds it to the ground. Finds Brown. Brown, who then finds Blair, who throws it out to Craighead, who then throws it to Peasel. Puts up to three, no good, rebounded by Wilson. So it's 14 to 18 with a minute 15 to go in favor of Ellsbury as they have possession of, as Dodson's running the charge. Finds Dow, picked by Tapley, nothing there, throws it over to Dodson. Dodson looking inside, gets it to Dow. And it kind of just burning some clock here, trying to find a good easy shot. Dodson gives it over to Dow. Inside to Tapley. Inside to Wilson, and it's going to be deflected. So North Callaway is going to get possession. Russell gets the ball across the half court to Pizzo. Pizzo looking to set things up. Throws a skip pass to Craighead. Craighead immediately pulls the three and got it. His second three-pointer, he's got six, and it's a one-point game at 18-17. So North Callaway here pulling the press on. Ellsbury gets by it pretty easily. As he tries to throw a lob pass to Byers, as Byers can't get, is a thorn over his head, so it's going to be a turnover on Ellsbury. Mm -hmm. And 
End of the game is Levi Drake for the Thunderbirds. Brown will take a seat with 25 ticks to play in the half. So we have Drake leading the charge with the last 18 seconds to go in the second. Throws it to Russell. Ball going around everywhere, but they maintain possession. He throws it over to Drake. Drake trying to get something going. Finds it over to Russell. we got eight seconds left. Good pressure by Picked up his dribble. we got three seconds left. Nothing's changed. Craighead looks to go to the lane, but he is fouled. Yeah, Hoskin accidentally hit him in the head from behind. He was just reaching for the ball. It was inadvertent. But 2.5 seconds to play in the half. We'll see what it what the North Cowboy draws up. Drake inbounded the ball. Look in, finds Craighead. Craighead over the open three-pointer. No good at the buzzer. So that's how the first half is going to go. Ellsbury 18, North Callaway 17 in this Constellation game. We'll be back with the halftime stats and talk about what we saw and what you heard after this with KJFM WBBA Sports. Bank and Trust, Mike Henry Excavating and Sun Window Company. The Eagle 102 halftime report is coming up. Brought to you by Cellular and Satellite Center in Bowling Green. Cellular and Satellite Center is the only stop you need to make when it comes to satellite providers. Offering direct TV and dish network along with antenna installs. Wait, there's more. They also offer several options for internet service with Viasat, HughesNet, and AT&T. Hold on, there's still more. They can also do security system installations, have TVs and stocks, mounts, and cables. Now, a special message from Matthew Niemeyer himself. If you call an 800 number and they say we will be the local installer, they are wrong. Contact Matthew at Sailor and Satellite Center in Bowling Green, your local authorized dealer. State Farm in Pittsfield understands that life can be tough. The State Farm staff is there to help you make smart decisions when it comes to all your insurance and financial service needs. Call, email, text, or stop by the office Monday through Friday between 9 to 5 to talk to an agent. State Farm in Pittsfield. A family-oriented office is located at 311 Half West Washington Street in Pittsfield, serving Pike County, Illinois, and the surrounding areas. Lynn's Heritage House isn't your average senior living facility. At Lynn's, residents have an abundance of social and recreational activities, including trips to the Twin Pike Family YMCA, numerous craft projects, and even the occasional day trip around Pike County. As a resident, you can enjoy the same independent lifestyle you've always enjoyed, but with the peace of mind knowing that help is available when needed. For more information, visit Lynn's Heritage House, 800 Kelly Lane in Louisiana, or online at lensheritage.com. From the classic cheesesteak and rich crab cakes, a taste of Philly in Bowling Green is a fan favorite. A meal ready for you before or after the game, and game day jerseys are welcome. Open seven days a week. A taste of Philly. Business Highway 54 West in Bowling Green. The most complete coverage of high school sports is on Eagle 102, and it's brought to you by Mid-America Auto and Towing, Perkins Electrical Services, and Pike County Mutual Insurance. Hear all the action from the Eagle 102 broadcast booth, sponsored by Family Drug in Louisiana. It's now time for the Eagle 102 halftime report on KJFM, sponsored by Cellular and Satellite Center in Bowling Green. The halftime show from the 99th annual Bowling Green Tournament. Maddie Ingram, Jim Ross, Stacen Martin in with you today. And we have this consolation game, the North Callaway Thunderbirds taking on the Ellsbury Indians. It's been a good performance from both sides and a close one, 18 to 17. Stacen Ellsbury leads North Callaway in this one. Yeah, it's been a very uh, good, close game, just like we expected, Mark, like we talked about in the pregame. Two teams uh, very matched well against each other. Um, and it's been a really good first half. I'm hoping we're going to see what happens in the second half. Yeah, so we've uh, seen some really good things um, from the perimeter. We've seen a lot of three-point shooting, um, but we've also have a, had a pretty physical game uh, down at, below the locks. We've had some uh, jump balls. It's It's been pretty aggressive in play, and both of these teams wanting to come out on the side of victory. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, what I noticed is that the first quarter seemed like North Callaway really had the momentum inside the paint. And the second quarter, Ellsbury had momentum inside the paint as Byers kind of took over a little bit with the rebounding and the putbacks and so forth for Ellsbury. And I feel like that's what they need to do if they want to make sure they win the consolation game today. 
Yeah, so we've had a good one so far. Just a reminder, we'll have a couple more games after this. So this is our consolation game. After that, it'll be the third place game between the Bowling Green Bobcats and the Winfield Warriors. Your championship game this year on the boys' side of the bracket, it is the Van Far Indians. They are the top seed in this tournament, and then the three-seeded Clopton Hawks. So lots of good basketball still to come as we continue to put the wraps on the 99th annual Bowling Green Invitational Tournament, and we'll come back with some uh, scoring from the first half next on KJFM WBBA Sports. All three tournament coverage brought to you by Bouquet Florist Gift Shop, Pike Lincoln Technical Center, and Pogue Ford. Sailor Satellite Center is the only stop you need to make when it comes to satellite providers, offering direct TV and dish network along with antenna installs. Wait, there's more. They also offer several options for internet service with Viasat, HughesNet, and AT&T. Hold on, there's still more. They can also do security system installations, have TVs and stocks, mounts, and cables. Now, a special message from Matthew Niemeyer himself. If you call an 800 number and they say we will be the local installer, they are wrong. Contact Matthew at Sailor and Satellite Center in Bowling Green, your local authorized dealer. Bowling Green Veterinary Clinic knows that getting the best care for your pet is a top priority. They strive to provide the greatest quality medical and surgical care for our furry companions. Their newly expanded and remodeled facility with accommodations for comprehensive inpatient hospital care and complete outpatient care allows the friendly and knowledgeable staff at Bowling Green Veterinary Clinic to keep your pet healthy and safe so the whole family can cheer on our area teams. Geared Up, just off the square in Pittsfield, is your first stop for screen printing and embroidery. The folks at Geared Up take pride in making their communities and schools look great while offering the best prices around. If you're looking to expand your wardrobe or maybe a gift is on the list, stop by their store and check out numerous items in stock. When you're looking for custom apparel and awards for your business, organization, or team, stop by Geared Up, 211 South Madison in Pittsfield. Your car, your stuff, your savings. Combine your auto and renter's insurance with a call to State Farm Insurance agent Cindy Blaylock in Louisiana and let Cindy show you how to put life back in your life insurance. Auto, home, and life. Make your wallet happy. Here to help life go right, State Farm Insurance agent Cindy Blaylock in Louisiana. Area high school sports on Eagle 102. Brought to you by Rod Prentice and Brenda Crawford, State Farm agents. Pepsi and Ackles Farm Market. The halftime show from the high school gym as we have the consolation game underway. 18 to 17 is our score as the Ellsbury Indians currently lead the North Callaway Thunderbirds. Been a good tournament for Ellsbury. They they lost their first game, had to fight back and get a victory in that uh, second game on that Constellation semifinal, and they found themselves here and made it all the way to Saturday, which is a lot harder to do than, than some people would expect. Yes, uh, so kudos to Ellsbury for doing that, but the journey's not done. They still have 16 minutes of basketball left to bring home a little bit of hardware. I kind of keep their chins up and yeah. continue on for the season. Uh, I'm going to do some stats and scoring for both teams as we got just probably a couple minutes till the second half starts. For the leading Ellsbury Indians, we have Ezekiel Byers leading the team with eight, Nolan Wilson with five, Kyle Tapley with three, and Devion Dotson with two. Tapley was one for two from the free throw line. Wilson was two for two from the free throw line to make him three for four in the first half. For North Callaway, Drake with two. Sam Peasel surprisingly only has two points. Kind of need to get them going if North Callaway wants to win this game. Eric Blair has one. Austin Brown has six. And Isaiah Craighead has six. Uh, North Callaway is one for two. From their free throw line in the first half. There wasn't many fouls called in the form of shooting. There's only four fouls called for each team in the first half. Yeah, so it's been a, a really back and forth game in the scoring for North Callaway. They posted nine points in the first quarter. In the second quarter, they did outscore Ellsbury by one. They posted eight points in the second quarter of action. It was 11 points for Ellsbury in the first quarter, seven points for Ellsbury in the second quarter. That's how your first half scoring wraps up. We have about 
Two minutes until we get started in this second half. Will Ellsbury hold on to bring home the consolation trophy? We'll see you next on KJFM WBBA Sports. Bowling Green Tournament coverage brought to you by Browns Processing and Smokehouse Meats, Kearns Construction, and All Parts. Browns Processing and Smokehouse Meats is your first stop when stocking your freezer. Browns has frozen chicken, steaks, brats, and burgers ready to go. For wholesale and custom butchering, Browns is your first call. It's where quality meets service. Browns Processing and Smokehouse Meats. For your meat processing, smokehouse meats and homemade sausage. Just off Highway 61 in Silex. The Eagle's Nest Inn Bed and Breakfast in Louisiana is where history, comfort, and charm come together. Explore quaint streets, visit local attractions, and return to comfort at the end of the day. Call or book online at the Eagle's Nest Inn, bb.com. Castile Color Wheel has been proudly serving Pittsfield and the surrounding communities since 1950 and is an expanded retail area. They began as a paint retailer handling Benjamin Moore and Pittsburgh paints, developing into a full-service decorating center, including wall coverings and Hunter Douglas custom window treatments. Castile over the years has expanded with home decor, high-quality gift items, bridal and baby registry, an upscale ladies and children's boutique, open Monday through Friday, 8 a.m. until 5 p.m., and Saturday, 8 until noon. Let Castile's be your one-stop shop located just off the northwest corner of the square in Pittsfield. Pepsi Cola Bottling Company is a proud sponsor of the local schools and their athletes. When it's time to quench that thirst, reach for one of the many Pepsi products found in the local concession stands, including Pepsi, Mountain Dew, Sundrop, or the all-new Starry Lemon Lime. If you are wanting something other than soda, enjoy Bubbler, Clarbrun Water, Lipton Teas, Gatorade, and more. Pepsi Cola Bottling Company in New Haven and Bowling Green wishes all the area athletes a great season. The best coverage of high school sports on KJFM brought to you by Community State Bank of Missouri, County Market in Louisiana, and Bowling Green Pharmacy. So we are back here, and Ellsbury quickly put up a three by Wilson, and it was good. North Callaway matched by Russell to put up a three. So 21 20 in favor of Ellsbury on the other end. North Callaway tries to put up another three by Brown, and it's no good. And tipped out of bounds by Ellsbury. So North Callaway will keep possession down here on their end. We got 7-11 to go in the third quarter. Russell has the ball on the inbound. Look to Brown at the top of the key. Guarded by Wilson. Throws it out to Russell, who's guarded by Dow. Setting up the offense. Dow tightens up the pressure. Weeks to go, reaches inside and calls the and gets the foul called on him. I'll spit it out of my mouth eventually. His first foul, teams, teams <laughs> first. So Pizzo looks to inbounds the ball for for North Callaway, finds Craig Head at the top of the key, finds Russell. Russell looks to go inside, nothing there. Throws it to P hold. Pizzo can't control the ball, and it's going to be out of bounds. Turnover on North Callaway. Forced there there as it just went right through the hands of Peasel. North Callaway picking up the full court press. See how Ellsbury responds. They've done fine in the first half, doing it. And they, oh, so Peasel steals it, throws it over his head without looking, and finds Craighead running down the lane. <laughs> There's kind a highlight for you. Look what I found, Cracker Jack box, I guess. And so that's going to be 22-21 in favor of North Callaway. 6.37 to go. We'll be back with more after this with KJFM WVBA Sports. Cross Lumber, Silex Banking Company, and Calumet of Missouri. Show off your Bulldog ride with the People's Bank and Trust Bulldog Debit Card. For every purchase you make using the card, People's Bank and Trust will make a donation to the Louisiana School District. Stop by any People's Bank and Trust location to get your Bulldog debit card and start supporting your school while you shop. People's Bank and Trust, hometown banking the way it should be. Member FDIC. Area High School Sports on Eagle 102. Brought to you by People's Bank and Trust, State Farm Insurance, Cindy Blaylock Agent, and Bowling Green Pharmacy. So we are back after Ellsbury timeout. Well, an interesting start to this. A couple of turnovers and a couple of threes by each team. And uh, North Callaway's retaking the lead at 22-21. So this time, Wilson's going to inbounds the ball. North Callaway still maintaining the full court press. Dotson gets it over in front of North Callaway's bench. Throws it over to Wilson. 
Wilson gets it across to half court to Dow. Dow throws it down to Byers. We tries to find Tapley, who is stolen by Russell. So North Callaway has possession. Turnover by Ellsbury. And that's a ball where the big man Byers just take it to the hole. You're two steps from the bucket. Absolutely. Take the size difference and roll with it. Brown now on the other end finds Pizzle. Pizzle top of the key gives it over to Moore, who finds Russell. Inside the Craig kid, back out to Russell. Russell picks up his dribble, who turns it over and stolen by Tapley. So now Dow has possession for Ellsbury. She's starting to push the ball a little bit, finds Dotson in the corner. Looking inside to Tapley, nothing there. So goes out to Dow, throws it over to Wilson with the left hand, puts it up. No good, rebounded by Tapley, and he is fouled. And he's going to shoot two. And we will see who the foul is, and it's going to be on Clayton Moore. That's going to be his third, I believe, team first. And Tapley's going to shoot two. One for two from the line so far tonight. And he missed the first. And coming in the game is going to be Eric Blair. Or I guess I should say this afternoon, huh? No, oh, yeah. It's just time. <laughs> Tapley gets the ball for the second and puts it up, and it is good. So he is one for two, two for four on the day. So it's 22-22, 5.42 to go in the game in the third quarter as Russell sets things up, finds Beasold on the right-hand wing, throws it on the front free throw line to Craighead. Craighead throws it out to Blair. Nothing there, so he gives it out to Brown to set things up again, finds Russell. Tightly guarded by Dow. Russell takes him one-on-one, -on -one, but it's blocked by Byers. And now Dow has possession, looking ahead, nothing there as he keeps dribbling on the right-hand wing. Picks up his dribble, finds Tapley on the right-hand wing, skip pass over to Dotson. Back to Dow on top of the key. Dow looks to go in the lane, puts it up, nothing called, and it's going to be a rebound by North Callaway as Craighead starting to press. Finds Brown on the left-hand wing, puts up an 18-footer, no good, rebounded by Dotson. Both teams. Dotson looking ahead, nothing there. Both teams a little wild right now. Yes, they need both teams need to calm down, get their composure, and just run the offense that they're capable of running. As Dow has on the right hand wing, those are the Dotson. Dotson looks to drive in the lane, puts up a little floater, and rims in. Did two three sixties for Dotson, but it dropped. So a seven twenty for anyone doing the math. And it is going to be Russell. Throws it over to Craighead, looking inside. Nothing there. Finds it over to Blair. Did you learn that in your snowboarding days when you're doing the slalom <laughs> and the snowboarding? I can barely even walk, <laughs> let alone do snowboarding, Jim. So, uh, Ellsbury tips the ball out, and we're going to have quite a few subs. Two subs, actually. Yeah, actually, Caleb Sheets will see his first minutes of the game, and uh, Levi Russell returns as well. So, Drake has the ball, the inbounds play, throws it to Pizzle. Pizzle puts up the three immediately, misses it, doesn't follow his shot. As if he did, he probably would have got his own rebound. So, now Ellsbury has possession. Dow with control of the ball on the right-hand swing, ring, and he throws it to nobody on the other end. Turnover number 10. Somebody on the front row of the bleachers on a nice grab there. And Jordan is coming in as Dow is going to the bench. A little frustrated with that mistake, but it happens. And Drake will have the point for North Callaway as he finds Blair. Blair gives it to Craighead. Craighead wanted to three, passed on. It gives it to Peasold. Peasold throws a sharp pass into Drake. Throws it out to Sheets, who gives it out to Peasold. Peasold gives it to Craighead for the three. No good. And it's going to be off on Ellsbury. As kind of a dart off the rim, kind of getting really, I mean, react fast enough. Really good ball movement that time, and Craig had got the ball in in stride, and uh, was short, and as you said, just shot off the rim. As back in for Ellsbury is Noah Hoskin. North Carolina looking to throw it in. They do, and they find Sheets, who steals it away. Wilson with the possession on the other end, and no good. So, Ellsbury stole the ball in the inbounds play. Wilson went to full court, put up the layup. He was fouled by Sheets. The basket was no good, so now he's going to shoot two from the line. Under heavy pressure, got bumped a little bit, and that layup just rolled out. And his first one is no good. So, it's 24-22 in favor of Ellsbury over North Callaway. 3.30 to go. 
Wilson looking to make a free throw to extend it a three-point lead. And he does not. And it is rebounded by North Callaway, but he was out of bounds when he caught it. So Ellsbury catches a break, and they will inbound it on their rent. Blair got bumped a little bit on the rebound, and when he caught it, he was standing on the inline. So we got Jordan throwing it into Wilson. Wilson looking back to Jordan. Nothing there. Finds Dotson. Dotson inside to Hoxton. Throws it into Byers, but it's stolen by Pizold. Fourth As, turnover of the quarter for Ellsbury. 11 for the game. And he throws it over to Drake. As Drake gives it to Pizold. Doesn't use the pick by Craighead. Puts up a little fadeaway floater, and Ooh. it is good. So... That's only his fourth point of the night. That was a tough shot, And too. that's going to make it 24-24 as Ellsbury gets by this press, finds Dotson on the right-hand side, double-teamed. Now it's just guarded by one as Wilson's left well for the three-pointer. No good. Rebounded by Drake. Now Drake running the point for North Callaway. We kind of got it a back-and-forth game so far in the third quarter. Kind of sloppy at times, but both teams starting to pick it up a little bit. Pizold kicks it off of Ellsbury's foot, so they will maintain possession. Yeah, a sloppy quarter here is uh, not a whole lot of scoring. Uh, six for Ellsbury, seven for North Callaway. Greg had with the ball in the inbounds play, puts it up over Byers, and it is good. Ellsbury inbounds the ball. Jordan has it. Getting across the left-hand side. Picks up his dribble. Throws it back to Dotson. Dotson goes to the middle of the court. Breaks the press to Wilson, who throws it over to Hoxton. He can't control it, and he is out of bounds. So it's going to be North Callaway's ball. They do a great job. Ellsbury's great job getting past the press on the half court. And then, for some reason, the last 25 feet to the basket, <laughs> it goes haywire. Yeah, they... Uh, you already did the hard work. Get a little excited, don't they, as Tapley checks in for Ellsbury. So, also back in, excuse me, is Cunningham for North Callaway. So, North Callaway has has the lead, 26-24 to 24 with 155 to go. As Cunningham has topped the key, drives the lane, left mm -hmm. hand, up and good. It nice. kind of went lower coast to coast. No one really wanted to stop him. Nice move right at the bucket there to avoid the defender. So Ellsbury gets past the half court. Wilson throws it over to Dodson, and it's going to be tipped off of Pizold as Ellsbury will maintain possession. Kind of a lazy high arc skip pass across the, the court to allow Pizold to get his hand on it. And high arcing passes at the varsity level are dangerous. Absolutely. And we got a little tie up, but they call a travel on Wilson as it could have been easily been a jump ball. But the ref called the travel, so we're going to go with that. As Wilson goes out of the game and Dow comes back in. Just a reminder, it's 28-24 North Callaway with 125 to go in the third quarter in the Constellation game. Greg Hale looking inside the Pizzo. Pizzo puts up the floater. No good. Rebounded by Dodson, who immediately gives it to Dow, who just checked in, looking to go... To the lane, he pulls it back out, setting things up. Dow gives it to Dotson. Dotson throws it over to Jordan. Jordan uses the pick set by Tapley. Skip pass over to Dow, touch pass over to Dotson, back over to Jordan. Jordan looking to drive the lane, puts up a little floater. No good, rebounded by Byers. Mm. No good, and it's almost a foul and a make, but it was just a foul. So Byers will go to the line to shoot, too. Got it on the glass just a little too hard, and it spun out. And he gets the first. Two bounces and a roll. Up and no good. So he misses the first. Back in for the Thunderbirds. Paul Russell returns. He will get a break with 56 seconds to play in the quarter. Byers gets the ball in the second one. It's up and no good. So I guess you could say it was a good foul for North Callaway. Didn't make a single one. On the other end, we got Russell leading the charge. He turns it over, stolen by Jordan. Jordan finds Dotson cutting to the basket. Little makeshifts, avoids the contact, but misses the layup. And North Callaway gets possession. Russell picks up his dribble, finds Drake, who throws it over to Cunningham, who Ellsbury's picking up the pressure a little bit. They get it across the half court. 
Craig Head looking to drive the lane. But throws it out to Cunningham. Cunningham drives the lane. It's blocked by Byers again. And it's going to be a tipped ball off of North Callaway. So Ellsbury's going to maintain possession. It's just a lot of reaching and grabbing and ball deflecting and all kinds of stuff. And a lot of whistles being swallowed. But that's that's, that's, here or there, whatever. (laughs) So Jordan gets the ball for Ellsbury. He throws it over to Dow. Try to get past his full court press. And they do against North Callaway. Jordan has it. Throws it inside the to Tapley, who is blocked. Great defensive play by, by Levi Drake. Drake. Yeah. Tapley could have just caught that and tipped it in. Or if he had hops like you, he could have just dunked it on the lob. But uh, Yeah, well, I don't think no one wants my three-inch vertical. <laughs> so, Dotson has the ball. There's a skip pass over to Jordan to Dow in the corner. Dow looking to go inside. Still looking to go inside. Throws it all across the court to Dotson. It's going to be end of the half. So, they had a chance there to beat the clock, and they did not. So, after three, it's 28 to Cal- 28 North Callaway, 24 Ellsbury. We'll be back with the fourth quarter with more with KJFM WBBA Sports. Brought to you by Barnes Roots and Herbs, Bowling Green Veterinary Clinic, and Tom Bowling Ford. Experience the ultimate golf adventure at Tea Time Golf, Bowling Green's premier golf simulator destination. Whether you're a solo golfer looking for a relaxing round or want to challenge your friends, Tea Time Golf can accommodate up to six players per hour. Choose from a variety of game modes, stroke play, scramble, teams, or even driving range. Visit their Facebook page for more information on pricing and reservations or call 573-591-6699. Tea Time Golf is not just a game. It's a golfing experience year-round like no other. Swing by and elevate your game. They're located at 1107 Business Highway 61, Bowling Green, Missouri. Follow area high school sports throughout the season on Eagle 102. Brought to you by Eolia Landscape Supply, Royal Banks, and a taste of Philly. And we are back here at Bowling Green at the 99th Annual Bowling Green Tourney Constellation Game, North Callaway versus Ellsbury. North Callaway currently has the 28 to 24 lead. The Constellation Game, is that some, like, something like a consolation game? What? What are these in you? Oh. <laughs> you're, you're confusing me, Jim. So, North Callaway has it in. This B-hole has it top of the key. Puts up to three. No good. Rebounded by Craighead, who is fouled. And he's going to go to the line to shoot two. So, no. the rest are starting to call the whistle a little bit here to start the fourth quarter. Oh, it's just the first possession. Give them time. They'll settle in. You've worked tournaments before. This is the first game. I normally haven't waited this long to blow the whistle. but You don't want to get the tournament behind, though. First foul on Jordan Matthew, or Matthew Jordan, I should say. And this Craig his first free throw is no good. He shoots it at a 67% clip for the year. And he gets the, the ball for the second free throw. And it's good. So he makes one of two. Dotson on the other end for Ellsbury. Finds Jordan. He gives it back to Dotson. Those are to Dow on the right-hand wing in front of Ellsbury's bench. Skip pass over to Jordan. Skip pass back over to Dow. Dow puts up to three. Good. His first one of the day. Got it in rhythm that time and drained it. So that's going to make it 29-27, North Callaway. 7.20 to go in the fourth quarter. Drake on the other end finds Craighead at the free throw line. Finds Pizzold off the pick. Pizzold puts it up, and it's fouled. So he's going to go to the line to shoot, too. They will say it's in the act of shooting. See who they whistled for that one. It's going to be on Jordan, Jordan his second. Peasel is 79% free throw shooting. As he makes the first one. And gets the ball for the second. And makes them both. So he makes them pay by sending them to the line. As that's going to make it 31-27 North Callaway. Dotson on the other end gives it back to Dow. Dow puts up to three, looking to go back to back. No good. Rebounded by North Callaway. And it's going to be a foul on Ezekiel Byers. Should be his second. Team's third, however, so Ellsbury's. Inching ever closer to that five-team foul limit. 
So Drake throws it into Brown. Brown has it. Throws it to Peace Old in the corner. Back over to Craighead. Craighead going left over to Drake. Finds Brown in the corner. Back to Craighead. Back to Brown. Brown throws it over to Drake. Drake looking to go in the lane. Nothing there. Throws it out to Brown. Who finds Moore in the corner? Who gives it to P Peasold? He thought about the deep three. Kind of a pump fake. Nothing there. Finds Looks for Craighead cutting the lane, but stolen by Byers, who gives it to Dotson. On the fast break, they pull it out. Dow throws it over to Jordan in the corner, who finds Byers open in the lane. Nice little pass to Dotson for the three, and got it. Good save that time by Byers, and Dotson able to convert. He's got seven, and it's a one-point game, 31-30. Six minutes to play in the ballgame. So Drake finds Peasold on the right-hand wing, looking to go to the lane. It's stolen away by Jordan and immediately fouled by Pizzo. Kind of a frustration foul. And Ellsbury showing a little fight here, saying they're not going to go away easily. Second foul on Pizzo. First team foul. And we got a 30-second timeout with Ellsbury, so we'll be back quickly after this with KJFM WBVA Sports. Bowling Green Tournament coverage brought to you by Custom Works Salon and Tanning, Hayden's Motorsports Center, and Lynn's Heritage House. Community State Bank of Missouri in Bowling Green and Troy, where the number one priority is the customer and adding new services to help simplify your life and building a strong, high-performance financial services organization. Community State Bank in Bowling Green and Troy, your community bank since 1887, member FDIC. The area's best coverage of high school sports on Eagle 102, brought to you by Pike County Health Department, People's Savings Bank, and all parts. So we are back in the fourth quarter. It's 31-30 in favor of North Callaway. One-point game, 5.55 to go in the fourth. Dotson has the ball for, the, for Ellsbury across the half court. Byers sets the pick, doesn't use it. Dow has the ball in the left-hand wing. Back to Dotson. Dotson kind of stoned things down. Finds Wilson on the right-hand wing. Back to, back to Dotson. Back to Dow. Dow drives the lane, kicks out to Dotson. Dotson left alone for the three. Got it. He's getting a good rhythm going on now. That's his second 30 this quarter. He's got 10 for the game, and Ellsbury takes the lead at 33-31. North Callaway looking the answer as Brown has the right-hand wing. Over to Moore, over to Drake. Drake finds Beasel cutting. He puts it up to off balance. No good. Byers with the rebound. Gives it up to Dow. Ellsbury on the fast break. Finds Dawson. Thought. Gives it back to Dow. Dow puts up the three. No good. Oh. Nipped by Byers. And he's going to shoot free throws as his tip back was not good. Yeah, I tried to tip it in. Actually had a good chance to tip that in. I think he got a little hand in the back. They're going to say it's on more. That is four on more. They'll send Byers to the line for two. And his first one is no good. If Ellsbury could just make their free throws. They are four for 10, or were four for 10, now four for 11 for the game. You are right. Yeah, it's not good, you know, having 40% or below now, below 40% from the line. Looking to change that with the second one. It is up, and it is no good. As Ellsbury maintains possession of the rebound. Jordan got the rebound, and he'll be fouled by Brown. Third team foul, three teams fouls apiece now. With five minutes to play. Ellsbury up by two. So Dow inbound the ball for Ellsbury. Looking inside, nothing there. Finds Wilson. Wilson drives the lane, puts up a little one-handed oh. over, and it is good. Banks open. And he makes it a four-point lead in favor of Ellsbury. He's got ten for the game as well. Drake finds Russell on top of the key for, for North Callaway. Craig Kedd. Gives it over to Brown at the top of the key. Brown looking to set things up. Goes over to Russell. Back over to Craighead. Right, Left-hand wing finds Drake, who finds Peasold, who finds Russell for the three. No good. Rebounded by Wilson. Wilson gives it over to Dow. Dow running point for Ellsbury. Looking to drive the lane. Throws the skip pass to Dotson for the three. No good. Rebounded by Byers. Who puts it up? No good. Rebounded by Wilson. Who puts it up? It's no good. Tipped out. Wilson gets possession again. Offensive rebound. And Dow 
slows things down. Ellsbury all over the offensive glass. They've taken this physicality and turned it into their advantage. Dotson finds Wilson cutting the lane as he puts it up to make it a six-point game in favor of Ellsbury. Timeout North Galloway. We'll be back right after this with KJFM WBBA Sports. <laughs> Tournament coverage brought to you by Center Locker Service, Community State Bank of Missouri, and Meyer Implement Company. Lynn's Heritage House isn't your average senior living facility. At Lynn's, residents have an abundance of social and recreational activities, including trips to the Twin Pike Family YMCA, numerous craft projects, and even the occasional day trip around Pike County. As a resident, you can enjoy the same independent lifestyle you've always enjoyed, but with the peace of mind knowing that help is available when needed. For more information, visit Lynn's Heritage House, 800 Kelly Lane in Louisiana, or online at lensheritage.com. Area high school sports on Eagle 102, brought to you by Rick Rodhouse, Country Financial Agent, Noah Builders, and Central State Bank of Illinois. So we are back here in the fourth quarter after a timeout by North Galloway. Ellsbury's responding with a strong fourth quarter on a 13-3 run. As they have North Callaway kind of on their heels a little bit. Let's kind of see if Ellsbury goes for the knockout punch, per se. Six points is the biggest lead of the game for either team. And you're right. Ellsbury's muscled up here in this fourth quarter inside. So Drake has the ball for North Callaway, looking to go inside. Finds Russell on the, on the point. Duke tries to go inside. Stolen by Wilson. And Wilson gives it to Dow to slow things down. Turnover number 11. Good choice by Wilson that time. They haven't had much luck when they've run crazy to the other end. Byers looking to go inside. It's kind of blocked. And it's rebounded by North Callaway, but he was out of bounds. So Ellsbury's going to stay in possession. we got some subs. Sheets coming in for North Callaway. And Hoskin Hos Hos coming in for Ellsbury. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. As Hoskins looking inbound in the ball, finds Dotson, who gives a nice little touch pass back to Hoskins, and he's fouled. So he's going to go shoot too. Nice little quick ball movement there for Ellsbury. Yeah, I kind of like to see that. That was a sweet little inbounds play as it, Hoskins came in off a pick from the inbounder, and they tipped it right back to him, but the defender was able to get there and foul him to save the easy shot. So his first free throw is no good. Yes. Ellsbury needs to find somebody to break this free throw missing streak they got going on. <laughs> yeah. That's now 4 for 12. 13. 4 for 13. Or 14. Well, it'll be 14. No, ah, they made it. So the purse is blocked, right? Or there we go. Them. There we go. Here comes Wilson returns, I think. Uh, was it? No, that's all right. So now we got 38-31. Ellsbury center leads by 7 with 3-12 to go in the fourth quarter. She has the ball, finds over to Drake. Drake looks to go inside, puts up the 12-footer, and it's good. Nice little mid-range jumper. You don't see that all that much anymore these days. No, you do not. It's either a 25-footer or a two-footer, it seems like. So, Dow has it on the, on the top of the key for Ellsbury. Throws it over to Dotson. Sets a pick by Byers off the roll. Puts it up. Oh, no good. Goodness. Misses the bunny. Rebounded by Hodson as he puts it back in. Byers from point blank range, and now Dow steals the inbounds pass. And Dow's going to set things back up for Ellsbury. That's a seven-point lead in favor of Ellsbury. Throws in to Hoxton. Hoxton tries to – and they're going to call a jump ball. They are. Ellsbury will maintain possession. He's a little frisky when he gets in a tie-up. Stop on the whistle, young man. In comes Matthew Jordan for Hoskin. Waiting for someone to take it out. And it's going to be Dow for Ellsbury. Dow looking inside. Nothing there. Throws it up top over to Wilson. Wilson gives it back to Dow to set things up. we got 223 to go in the fourth. 40 to 33 in favor of Ellsbury. Seven points has been the largest margin of lead. This game, there's going to be a foul on Brown. Check foul or body check, if you will. So Dow's going to go to the line to shoot free throws. We are officially in that moment in the quarter. And it's called the bonus still? I believe so. Okay. And this first one is good. Terrific. Keep the track at home. 
That is two in a row for Ellsbury. Well, your point guard's got to be able to shoot free throws, right? Uh, you sure hope so, as he makes them both. He's got five all in the fourth quarter. So, North Callaway gives it over to Pizzle. Pizzle looking to drive the lane. He does. Kid by Byers, but it goes right in the hands of Craighead to put it in the hoop. And North Callaway merely calls a timeout. So, we have a seven-point ball game for Ever Ellsbury. We'll be back with more KJFM WBBA Sports. Tournament coverage brought to you by Bolin Chevrolet. Get Spot a Shot in Louisiana and DG Firearms. Brown's Processing and Smokehouse Meats is your first stop when stocking your freezer. Brown's has frozen chicken, steaks, brats, and burgers ready to go. For wholesale and custom butchering, Brown's is your first call. It's where quality meets service. Brown's Processing and Smokehouse Meats. For your meat processing, smokehouse meats, and homemade sausage. Just off Highway 61 in Silex. Area High School Sports on Eagle 102. Brought to you by Cellular and Satellite Center, Pike County Memorial Hospital, and Community State Bank of Missouri. So, Jason Martin, Jim Ross, Maddie Ingram back here in the fourth quarter at the Bowling Green Tournament Constellation game. Tannis taking pictures. Got to give her some props. Oh, April, yes. April back to the station. See, I like working with you. You always fill me in when I'm wrong, kind of like I'm at home. I I, I appreciate that. <laughs> oh, man, maybe I'll wear a skirt next time. <laughs> yeah, don't make any problems you can't keep. That'd be the second one you told me that wasn't true today. So Ellsbury has possession. Wilson throws it over to Jordan. Jordan gets it across to Dodson. Dodson double teamed. Finds Byers. Guarded by P-hole. He's old. Picks up his dribble, finds Dotson, he finds Dow. 144 to go. Dow kind of looking to keep possession, burn the clock down, make him foul. As they find Wilson, Wilson thought about the three and said he drives the lane wide oh, open. It's good. It's and then they call the foul. So that's going to be a chance for a three point play. Yeah, Ellsbury was wanting to get into the spread, and unless they got the layup, and the layup is exactly what Wilson got, and then an ill-advised foul that time by Craighead. His second will give Wilson a chance to complete the three-point play. And it's up, and it's no good. So that's going to be a nine-point lead for Ellsbury as North Callaway is looking to get something going here before it's too late. She's for the three. No good. Rebounded by Dow. We, North Callaway needed a bucket there bad. Dow tries to throw it over to Jordan. It is stolen away by North Callaway. Drake takes it coast to coast, puts it up. No good. Rebounded by Jordan. And it is fouled by Craighead. So we have 1-11 to go in the fourth. 44-35 to in favor of Ellsbury. And we'll walk to the other end and shoot free throws. And it should be Jordan, I believe, shooting, shooting free throws. I believe you're right. First time to the charity stripe. Give, give him a chance to get in the scorebook. He hadn't scored today. Played pretty well, though. Done a lot on the boards. Uh, first one's no good. He's done a lot of the dirty work for Ellsbury. Exactly. What doesn't show up on the score sheet, he misses the first free throw. Were they 6 of 18 from the free throw? I've lost count. If he makes it, it'll be 7 of 19. And he does not. So he's 6 of 19. Rebounded by North Callaway, and it's going to be a foul on Ellsbury. And North Callaway will will get possession as they try to come to this nine point lead. Looks like they're going to call it on Byers, who's third. third. So Pizold has it across the half. Picked by Craighead. Go over to Drake as he travels. Yeah, turnovers have mounted in the second half. They had seven in the first half, and now they've got, or I'm sorry, four in the first half. Now they've got 13 in the game. So Dow gives it over to Wilson. Wilson back to Dow. North Callaway has the full court press on. Tips off of Byers and a stone by North Callaway. Up ahead to Pizzle, and he puts it in. Seven-point lead in favor of Ellsbury. 45 seconds to go. Jordan has it. Gives it to Wilson. Back to Dow. They're just, they just need to slow and down just is, a little bit. Yeah, they're going to fire you. Then you know, give them a chance. <laughs> absolutely. Let them come to you. The clock is your friend. As yeah. it is 38 seconds to go in the fourth, Ellsbury 44, North Callaway 37. 
Dow going to the line to shoot two more free throws as he's done twice already in this quarter. Foul on Brown, his third, third I should say. First free throw spins out on Dow. Well, but we had a lane violation, so we'll do it one more time. And timeout on the floor. 38.8 to play in the game. 44-37, Ellsbury. And this is KJFM WBDA Sports. Taylor and Sons Backhoe and Excavating, Advanced Eye Care, and Wood Smoked Meats. Ackles Farm Market has locally produced beef, pork, and honey. Stop in for your farm fresh cut ribeye, New York strip, sirloin steaks, fillets, stew meat, ribs, ground beef, snack sticks, and all beef hot dogs. While there, stock up on homegrown fruits and vegetables as well. Open every day, 9 to 7. Ackles Farm Market, just off Highway 54 between Louisiana and Pittsfield. Follow area high school sports on KJF. FM Radio, brought to you by Brown's Processing and Smokehouse Meats, Young Enterprises, and Family Drug. And we are back again. Just to kind of give you a recap, it's 44 to 37 in favor of Ellsbury over North Callaway with 38.8 seconds to go. And Dow is shooting his second free throw to increase this lead. And it is good. He's going to get one more because there was a violation on the first one. So now his second. It is good. So he makes them both. So four for five. Oh, we got in the a, fourth quarter. They wipe, wipe it out. They wiped it out. Another lane violation. So that's going to go against a miss. That was on Dow. And on the other end, North Callaway. Brown has it top to keep. Gives it to P. Zolt. Who turns it over from Dow? Dow steals it away, gets across. Gets. I thought he got by everybody, but they're going to call a foul. He's going to go to the line to shoot two more. And that will be on Craighead, his fourth. And Ben Dow will go back to the line for two more. And his first one, good. So he's been the most consistent free throw shooter so far. Yeah, he's got the feel, got the roll, got a good rotation going on right now. He's got a rhythm going. That's important. He makes them both. That's a 10-point lead for Ellsbury with 20 seconds to go in the fourth. As North Cal is going to try to just close the margin a little bit as Ellsbury is going to pull away with the win. Ball's tipped. Drake has it. Finds over the sheets for the corner for the three. And it is good. So his first bas basket for Caleb Sheets. They continue to foul. Trying to get that seven-point play with 2.1 seconds to go. That'll be on Craighead. Should be number five on him. And we'll send Dow back to the free throw line for two more shots. Ellsbury's going to win this. And Dow will be the one shooting the free throws. We've got some last-minute subs here to kind of get some people in. Isaiah Craighead fouls out with 13 points in the game. And Dow gets the ball in the first. Puts that one up. And good. Ellsbury has shot a truckload of free throws in this fourth quarter. Yes, they have. And the second one is good. He makes them both. And North Cali inbounds the ball, and that's going to be it. So Ellsbury's going to walk away with the win, 49-40 to 40 over North Callaway, as they will be the Constellation champs. We will break down the game with the stats and talk about what we saw when we come back with more from KJFM WBBA Sports. By People's Bank and Trust, Mike Henry Excavating, and Sun Window Company. Raffle tickets are on sale now. This is Tracy Brookshire with Pike County Health Department Home Health and Hospice. Our Home Care and Hospice Foundation is selling raffle tickets. Enter for your chance to win $1,200 in local restaurant gift cards, a Smith & Wesson 9mm, a beautiful patio set, or a Henry 22 pump action. $5 for one ticket or $20 for five tickets. Get yours online at pikecountyhospice.com or by stopping in at our office at One Healthcare Place in Bowling Green behind Walmart. Winner will be drawn at our annual Valentine Gala fundraiser in February. 
February and does not need to be present to win. Since 1939, Meyer Implement Company has been serving the local agricultural and business communities with quality sales and service. Meyer Implement has also taken great pride in supporting those communities and would like to wish the area sports teams the best of luck throughout their seasons. Be sure to stop by and visit the people who truly appreciate your business. Meyer Implement Company, we both agree. Geared Up, just off the square in Pittsfield, is your first stop for screen printing and embroidery. The folks at Geared Up take pride in making their communities and schools look great while offering the best prices around. If you're looking to expand your wardrobe or maybe a gift is on the list, stop by their store and check out numerous items in stock. When you're looking for custom apparel and awards for your business, organization, or team, stop by Geared Up, 211 South Madison in Pittsfield. You simply can't buy a better replacement window than one from Sun Window Company. Energy efficient windows and doors with a lifetime warranty on both the window and installation. Sun Window Company, family owned and operated since 1989, offers low factory direct prices on high quality vinyl windows. Custom designed to fit perfectly and built to last. See how much you can save. Call Sun Windows, 573-549-2080 for details and a free estimate. Sun Window Company, Highway 161 in Middletown. High School Sports on your area sports leader, Eagle 102. Brought to you by Bowling Green Tractor, Vicki Cadwalder, Real Estate, and Ingram Plumbing. The Eagle 102 postgame show is coming up. Bringing you all the action from the Eagle 102 broadcast booth. Sponsored by Family Drug in Louisiana. Welcome back to the Bowling Green Invitational. Ellsbury is the consolation winner. They went 49-40 over North Callaway, and uh, we've got a quick turnaround between game stations, so we can't take a whole lot of time. So I'm just going to run with the scoring here real quick. North Callaway for them. Only one player in double figures, Isaiah Craighead with 13. Six apiece for Sam Peasel and Austin Brown. Four for Levi Drake. Three each for Russ, uh, Paul Russell and Caleb Sheets, and two for C.J. Cunningham and one for Eric Blair. They were four for six from the line, and they turned it over 15 times. So they didn't get to the line, and they had uh, 11 turnovers in the second half, which was their undoing. For Ellsbury, three guys in double figures for them. Nolan Wilson finished with 14, 10 for Ben Dow, 10 for Davion Watson, 8 for Ezekiel Byers, 4 for Kyle Tapley, and 3 for Noah Hoskin. Ellsbury was 12 for 26 from the line. But uh, Ben Dow made a bunch of free throws in that fourth quarter to lead them to victory. They turned it over 14 times. It was a 18-17 game at half. North Cali actually outscored Ellsbury 11-6 and led 28-24, but Ellsbury outscored them 25-12 in the fourth quarter to win this game by the final score of 49-40. That's going to do it for the consolation game. Next up, the... Bowling Green Winfield and for the third place game, Rodney Dolbert will jump in here with Stason, and we'll be back with that third place game right after this on KGFM WBBA Sports. Florist and Gift Shop, Pike Lincoln Technical Center, and Pogue Ford. At Pike County Memorial Hospital, we know how important athletics are for your kids. But with an active lifestyle of sports comes health risk and safety hazards. As a certified athletic trainer at PCMH, I work closely with our primary care physicians, orthopedic doctors, and physical therapists. We can make a difference between safe play and dangerous injuries for your athletes. Working with Bowling Green, Clopton, and Louisiana schools, our goal is to provide the best possible outcome for your athletes. I'm Eric Schaefer. Certified Athletic Trainer at Pike County Memorial Hospital. I'm at work while your athletes are at play. NOAA Builders in Silex is a proud supporter of all area athletes. They're a small locally owned contractor with over 25 years of experience in custom and new home construction. NOAA Builders wants to take your forever home plan and make it a reality. Call or visit NOAA Builders at noahbuildersinc.com. Experience the ultimate golf adventure at Tea Time Golf, Bowling Green's premier indoor golf simulator destination. Whether you're a solo golfer looking for a relaxing round or want to challenge your friends, Tea Time Golf can accommodate up to six players per hour. Choose from a variety of game modes, stroke play, scramble, teams, or even driving range. Visit their Facebook page for more information on pricing and reservations or call 573-591-6699. Tea Time Golf is not just a game. It's a golfing experience year-round like no other. Swing by and elevate your game. They're located at 1107 Business Highway 61, Bowling Green, Missouri. 
It's time to visit Hayden's Motorsports Center in Frankfurt. Time to ride with Honda and Polaris ATVs, side-by-sides, and motorcycles. Time to work with steel and Husqvarna chainsaws, weed eaters, leaf blowers, and more. Hayden's Motorsports Center, just off Highway 61 North in Frankfurt. The most complete coverage of high school sports is on Eagle 102, and it's brought to you by Mid-America Auto and Towing, Perkins Electrical Services, and Pike County Mutual Insurance. I'm Stacey Martin here with Rodney Dolbear in the third and fourth place game. We got Bowling Green against Winfield. Kind of give you a recap of how the teams got here. Uh, Winfield lost to Clopton 58 to 52. Bowling Green was defeated by Van Farr 66 to 40. So these two teams are going to square off for third and fourth. And Rodney's now joining me kind of. What do, you, what do you expect from this game, uh, Rodney? Well, you've got a team that uh, it's kind of the Cinderella of the, of the tournament. The sixth seed comes in, uh, obviously been playing very well to get there. Uh, I haven't had the chance to see Winfield this year. I have called a Clopton game and uh, seen them in another, so I, I kind of know what they bring. But uh, I'm looking forward to see how Winfield matches up, if they can keep their, their good play rolling. Now, the last time I saw Winfield was at the Clopton tournament. Where they upset Clopton per se, if, if that's what you want to use, and they won that tournament, and it's ironic that Clopton kind of got a little payback the other night. Now Clopton advances and puts a Winfield here. Well, you know, and we had this discussion during the uh, semifinals of the consolation side. The, the the seating for these tournaments is typically done in advance, so they're you know teams play some teams play better, some teams play worse, so. Although coming in as a sixth seed, they'd already shown that they were playing pretty good basketball. Absolutely. We'll be back with keys to the game after this with KJFM WBBA Sports. Coverage brought to you by Brown's Processing and Smokehouse Meats, Kearns Construction, and All Parts. This is Tara Grody, and People Savings Bank is excited to announce the Bobcat Debit Card. People Savings Bank believes in giving back to the communities we serve, and that begins with the school district. Every time you use your Bobcat Debit Card as a credit, People Savings Bank will give the school district five cents. That may not sound like a lot of money, but since starting this program six years ago, PSB has been able to give back over $120,000. Open an account online at OurPSB.com or stop by our branch. We are the one with the bright blue roof. Start earning the Bowling Green School District money today just by using your debit card. Member FDIC. Ingram Plumbing has always been known for its outstanding plumbing service. But did you know that Ingram's is also the largest retail plumbing supply store in the area? We carry Delta faucets, a complete line of Whirlpool tubs and showers, jacuzzi pumps, and many other specialty items. Stop by Ingram Plumbing today, Highway 61 Bowling Green. Think about all that's important to you, your family, your possessions, and your future. Pick up the phone and call Rick Rodhouse from Country Financial. He, along with his staff, will assist you with insurance coverage to protect what matters most in addition to preparing you for the future. Best of all, Rick will take the time to get to know you and find solutions for your budget. For coverage you need at a price you can afford, contact Rick Rodhouse Insurance Agency in Pleasant Hill to chat about your insurance needs today. Pepsi Cola Bottling Company is a proud sponsor of the local schools and their athletes. When it's time to quench that thirst, reach for one of the many Pepsi products found in the local concession stands, including Pepsi, Mountain Dew, Sundrop, or the all-new Starry Lemon Lime. If you are wanting something other than soda, enjoy Bubbler, Clarbrun Water, Lipton Teas, Gatorade, and more. Pepsi Cola Bottling Company in New Haven and Bowling Green wishes all the area athletes a great season. Area High School Sports on Eagle 102. Brought to you by Rod Prentice and Brenda Crawford, State Farm Agents, Pepsi, and Ackles Farm Market. Well, we are back. I'm Stacey Martin, Rodney Dolbear, in the third and fourth place game between Bowling Green and Winfield. I uh, kind of do some uh, keys to the game as we got just a uh, little over four minutes before we get the tip off here. Uh, the big thing for Bowling Green is, for me, is the what I've noticed, they like to score and like and like to score often, and they love to shoot behind the arc. Um, the last time I saw Bowling Green play, I had the privilege of watching Eskew score 33 points, and uh, 
I knew he had that many points, but looking back, you're thinking, man, they're all quiet. Which is, it's hard to understand to have a quiet 33 points, but if you were there at the game, you would know what I am talking about. But Winfield needs to kind of uh, slow down Bowling Green's pace. Uh, you got anything on Winfield, Rodney? Well, I don't. As I mentioned, I hadn't um, hadn't had a seat, a chance to watch him. A, a general key that that was very evident in our two consolation semifinals, the uh, Ellsbury, of course, advanced to the consolation championship as as did North Callaway. Both of those teams made ten free throws in the fourth quarter. Um, North Callaway was ten of ten, and and Ellsbury coming down the stretch against Louisiana was like ten of twelve or thirteen. So, a, a key to this game, if it's a close game as we come down the stretch, certainly. Um, can you make your foul shots in the, you know, in the latter stages of the game? Because the two teams that advanced, it was a close game in the fourth quarter, and both teams pulled out and had a fairly handy win because they never, they never gave the the opposition a chance to get back into it. And it's ironic you said that about making free throws down the stretch. Ellsbury struggled the last game just a few seconds ago, or a few minutes ago. I'm sorry, and they still pulled out to win, but the free throw was not their friend tonight. Um, yeah, I'm I'm really just looking for uh Bowling Green to keep the game plan in their favor. If if, if it doesn't go their way, um can they rebound from that, no pun intended, and uh have a counteract. Um I'm interested to see if Grody kind of stays out of foul trouble, has that inside presence for Bowling Green and so forth. We will be back with more with KJFM WBBA Sports. Brought to you by Lacrosse Lumber, Silex Banking Company, and Calumet of Missouri. Community State Bank of Missouri in Bowling Green and Troy, where the number one priority is the customer and adding new services to help simplify your life and building a strong, high-performance financial services organization. Community State Bank in Bowling Green and Troy, your community bank since 1887, member FDIC. The Eagle's Nest Inn Bed and Breakfast in Louisiana offers inviting guest rooms, each with its own unique character and historic charm. Call or book online at theeaglesnestinbb.com. The best coverage of high school sports on KJFM brought to you by Community State Bank of Missouri, County Market in Louisiana, and Bowling Green Pharmacy. CMC Distributing in Louisiana is the place to turn for steel, culverts, industrial supplies, and central welding supplies. In addition, CMC Distributing offers trailer parts, truck accessories, truck beds, and trailer repairs. At CMC Distributing, they always go the extra mile while working hard to make sure you're satisfied. They do it that way for a simple reason. They appreciate your business. CMC Distributing, Highway 54, west of Louisiana. From the classic cheesesteak and rich crab cakes, a taste of Philly in Bowling Green is a fan favorite. A meal ready for you before or after the game, and game day jerseys are welcome. Open seven days a week. A taste of Philly. Business Highway 54 West in Bowling Green. Area high school sports on Eagle 102. Brought to you by People's Bank and Trust, State Farm Insurance, Cindy Blaylock Agent, and Bowling Green Pharmacy. The Eagle 102 starting lineups on KJFM are sponsored by Community State Bank of Missouri in Bowling Green and Troy. new services to help simplify your life and building a strong high performance financial services organization community state bank in bowling green and troy your community bank since 1887 member fdic 
Ackles Farm Market has locally produced beef, pork, and honey. Stop in for your farm fresh cut ribeye, New York strip, sirloin steaks, fillets, stew meat, ribs, ground beef, snack sticks, and all beef hot dogs. While there, stock up on homegrown fruits and vegetables as well. Open every day, 9 to 7. Ackles Farm Market, just off Highway 54 between Louisiana and Pittsfield. Follow area high school sports throughout the season on Eagle 102, brought to you by Veolia Landscape Supply, Royal Banks, and a taste of Philly. The Eagle 102 starting lineups on KJFM are sponsored by Community State Bank of Missouri in Bowling Green and Troy. We are back to Bowling Green High School Gymnasium. The third game of the, the third game will be played here shortly between Bowling Green and Winfield. I'm Rodney Dolbear alongside Stace and Martin. Starters are getting announced. We will get them to you as well as soon as they are announced we're about ready to get this thing underway championship hardware on the line tonight the winner gets the third place trophy both teams on the court for winfield your starters brady creech a 510 senior logan kyle a 64 junior connor martin a six foot junior camden palmer a six foot senior and caden palmer a six foot three Junior. And here we go. Tipped into the backcourt, controlled by Bowling Green. Ryan Hall brings it into the near court to the right wing. Looks to hand off at the hash. Fairchild has it. Drives to the lane. Shot off the glass and in for Fairchild. Score the basket and the foul. And an early and one for Bowling Green. An opportunity to convert a three point play the old fashioned way. Kind of get Bowling Green off and running here. Foul shot on the way is good. 3-0, just underway in the third place game. Bowling Green Invitational Basketball Tournament. Winfield comes into the near court. Preach sets the offense between the circles. He'll cycle back to Martin. Connor Martin has it. He kicks it left wing, looks into the corner, now back top of the key for Palmer. Palmer hands off beyond three for Palmer. Two Palmers on the floor, Camden and Caden. Shots on the way. It's missed. Rebound comes long, run down by Ryan Hall. He'll come into the near court with it. Drives into the corner, looks to the post. Shot off the glass and in. Score the basket for Palmer. Or Ryan Hall, rather. Ryan Hall with the bucket. 5-0, Bowling Green right off the bat. Winfield comes into the near court, sets their offense. Not a lot of motion away from the ball so far. Palmer cycles to the left wing beyond three for Creech. Left wing at the hash for Palmer. You say Bowling Green kind of sticking to their 1-2-2 two, two zone on defense that they typically run. Three ball on the way off the mark by Caden Palmer. He almost got it to rattle home off the glass. Bowling Green quickly into the near court with it. Zach Gibson passed up the three. He dribbles back out near midcourt, dumps it into the corner. Now top of the key, setting the offense is Eskew. He drives into the lane. Going to be fouled. It's on the floor. First team foul. They're going to say second team foul, actually. Yeah, that's going to be the second. And that was going to be on Logan Keel, his first. Bowling Green inbounds. Rainbow pass into Gibson. Gibson holds it high. He hands it to Eskew. Shot on the way, no good. Rebound Winfield underneath. Creech pushes it up four ahead of the pack to Palmer. Caden Palmer, cross-court pass, nice look, couldn't get it to go. Palmer with rebound, score the basket in the foul for Caden Palmer. Caden had a nice look across the lane for a layup for Camden Palmer. Palmer missed it. Caden right there to put it back up and in, and he'll have a chance to cut into this 5-2 lead. And the shot is up and good. Two foul shots attempted, two made, one for each team. Full court pressure. Winfield, Bowling Green, struggling a little bit with it. Going to have a cheap foul, kind of bailed out. The 10-second clock was starting to get just a little bit short there. Bowling Green was still 15 feet from the half-court line, but the foul is going to go against Winfield. 
That's their team third already, so they're in danger of getting in a double bonus already in the first quarter. Askew kicks it to the corner beyond three for Gibson. Three-pointer on the way. It's off the mark, nearly in. Rebound underneath. Bowling Green gets it back. Ball's out of bounds. Last touch, touch by Winfield. It'll stay with the Bobcats underneath their own basket. 5.28 to play, first quarter. 5-3, Bowling Green on top with the ball. Rainbow in, ball's loose. Still loose. It's going to go out of bounds. Last touch by Winfield, they're going to say. Looked to me like Gibson might have gotten his hand on that. Nonetheless, it stays with the Bobcats. Fairchild set to inbound. He gets it into Ryan Hall. Ryan Hall dribbles beyond three on the right wing. Holds the ball high. Now Rainbow's back out for SQ. SQ left wing three-pointer head and shoulder fake by Gibson. Heavy ball pressure. Gibson dumps it to SQ in the corner left wing. Puts it on the floor, cross-court pass, dumps it to the corner. Another head and shoulder fake, three-pointer. Gibson doesn't take the shot. Eskew has it, puts it on the floor, drives off the glass. They're going to say a foul before the basket. It's against Winfield. Nice move by Eskew. Bowling Green has done a really good job so far in this quarter, driving to the lane, making the defense collapse, kicking it outside, kind of going back and forth, back and forth. And a couple of times they've kind of gotten open looks and made them made Winfield foul. Eskew gets it. He holds it high. He's guarded by Palmer. Cycles back to Ryan Hall into the paint. Has it tipped and stolen away by Sims. Sams knocked it away. It goes all the other all the way down the court, and we've got a foul underneath. Looks like foul shots are coming. And that was going to be on Gibson, his first, team second. Brady Creech will have a pair of foul shots on the missed basket. First one's nothing but the bottom of the net. Five to four. Bowling Green jumped out to a 5-0 lead. Winfield. And Brady Creech, a chance to tie it up at five. 4.42 left in the first, third place game at the 99th annual Bowling Green Invitational Bas uh, Basketball Tournament. Second foul shot's good. Full court pressure. Gibson has it. He'll come across the timeline down the right side and loses it out of bounds. They're going to say last touch by Bowling Green. It looked like it kind of went off his knee there. Looks like Creech kind of deflected. It went off of Gibson's knee and... Therefore, it's Renfield's ball. Preach walks it across the timeline, looks to the right wing for Palmer. Palmer swings it left side for Caden Palmer. Head and shoulder fake into the paint. Nice give and go. Look underneath. Basket won't count for Camden Palmer, but he's going to be fouled, and he'll have two foul shots coming. That's going to be on SQ. That's going to be his first team third. As you said, Palmer's going to go to the line to shoot, too. First miss of the night from the charity stripe by either team. And he misses them both. Rebound to Bowling Green. Ryan Hall brings it into the mirror court. He's guarded by Connor Martin. Picks up his dribble. Dumps it inside. Eskew looks inside, has it stripped away. Now it's stripped again. Ball still tipped and controlled. Three on one, Winfield. The other direction, left-handed layup off the glass and in Connor Martin. And Winfield has their first lead of the game. Full court man-to-man. -man. Eskew easily breaks it. Bowling Green with numbers. Right side of the lane, off the glass, missed the bunny. Tipped out of bounds, last touch by Bowling Green. Did a nice job of breaking the man-to-man. -man. Couldn't convert on the layup. Turnover back to Winfield. Now Bowling Green's extended this 1-2-2 two, two full court press with Winfield trying to break it. Winfield across the timeline, holding it high. Creech dumps a corner. Three-pointer on the way. It rims home. 
Score the basket for Caden Palmer. And just like that, Winfield has ripped off 10 in a row. They lead 10 to 5. Tipped out of bounds off of Winfield. Pass intended for Aiden Grody. Nearly resulted in a turnover there. Bowling Green will have it on the far side by the scorer's table. Bowling Green kind of needs, this needs to take a breath. Stick to your game plan. Don't force anything. Offensive foul. Eskew takes it right to the basket. Nice job by Winfield. I believe that was Colin Sams, the 6'2 senior, maintained his position and got the charging call. It looks like when, when Winfield went to the full court pressure, it sped Bowling Green up. And even when they break the half court timeline, they're still sped up and they've been a little bit out of sync on offense. Absolutely. And it's kind of a crucial mistake by Eskew there because he picked up a second foul already in the first quarter. But the coach is going to give him the confidence that you are going to stay in and not pick up a third. I think he just did. As we'll see who they called it on the head. And they did. They called it on Eskew. He got into a pushing match in the post and they called on Eskew. So he goes to the bench with three already in the first quarter. Well, and that was a frustration foul, just battling for the ball underneath. And he just, he just extended both arms and a blatant shove. I thought they were there. Should that's five on Bowling Green? Should have Winfield foul shot. Will be shooting free throws. Yeah, scores table blows the buzzer. All right, so we're squared away here. Fair, uh, sorry, Sam's will be the one shooting for Winfield after the foul on Eskew. Two forty-seven, ten to five, Winfield. Winfield tries to stretch their 10-0 run. First foul shot on the way. It rims home softly. It's 11 to 5. Kudos to Winfield for making 11 straight, 12 straight points now in the first quarter. Sams makes them both. Full court pressure. Ball in for Gibson. He picks up his dribble, nearly stolen. Now Bowling Green across the timeline with Hall. Hall to the basket, lays it off the glass. No good. Rebound underneath, fought for by Grody. It goes off of his hands. But Gibson runs it down. Three-pointer on the way. Right wing short. No good. Rebound in the corner. Nice job by Grody to get it. Save it. Three-pointer. Top of the key. Yes! Score the basket for Zach Gibson. A much-needed basket for the Bobcats. Timeout taken on the court. We'll step aside as well. 12-8 is our score. Bowling Green down by four. This is the Bowling Green Tournament on KJFM and WBBA Sports. and herbs, Bowling Green Veterinary Clinic, and Tom Bowling Ford. Are you pursuing a nursing degree? Do you want $2,000 to put towards your tuition? Of course you do. This is Tracy B. with PCHD. Our Home Care and Hospice Foundation is now accepting applications for our annual nursing scholarship. Deadline is April 12th, 2024, and the application can be found on our website at pikecountyhospice.com. The area's best coverage of high school sports on Eagle 102 brought to you by Pike County Health Department, People's Savings Bank, and All Parts. After the timeout, Bowling Green was able to, before the timeout, they broke the 12-0 run that Winfield was on. It's 8-12 to now. Winfield has it in the near court. Baseline kicks it top of the key. Head and shoulder fake with the three. Caden Palmer now shot put out, up. Rebound underneath. Nice job of rebounding the miss by Sams. And he's played strong here in the early going, and it's 14-8 Winfield. Bowling Green gets it in. Gibson on the far side, picks up his dribble. He gets it middle of the court for Oliver Neumeyer. And saying how the Bowling Green got it across. They need to slow it down, run their game as they quickly get a foul called on Camden Palmer. I think that's going to be the fifth on Winfield. It is. So free throws forthcoming for Bowling Green. And Jack McDonald. He'll toe the stripe and have a chance to cut into this six-point Winfield lead. Nothing but the bottom of the net. 14-9. Substitution. DJ Barth checks in. Checking out Connor Martin for Winfield. Second foul shot on the way. 
too strong off the back iron, tipped out of bounds, last touch by Grody, almost pulled down the offensive rebound. It'll go to the Warriors, and they'll put it in play under the Bowling Green basket. No pressure from Bowling Green. They sit back in their 2-3 zone in the Winfield offensive end. Creech walks it across. Barth hands left side to Palmer. Left wing Creech, work it around the perimeter. Beyond three, drives to the free throw line extended. Hands off to Palmer. Palmer drives, shot up, miss, no good. They're going to call a jump ball there? They did call a jump ball. Winfield's going to maintain possession. Nobody had possession on the rebound, although it was just about to be ripped away by Aiden Grody. Nonetheless, Winfield has it in the pass, traveling. Camden Palmer shuffle his feet on the right wing beyond three, looking to drive baseline. Turnover gives it back to Bowling Green, down by five, a minute 12 left in the first quarter. Once again, full court pressure. Gibson gets it. He hands ahead to Niemeyer. Niemeyer across the timeline, pass to Hall. Hall sets the offense between the circle. With the right hand dribble, dribble to the right wing, hands back to Gibson. Gibson closely guarded by Creech. Left wing, could have been a travel there. McDonald has it. Going to have a foul. Winfield's putting a lot of pressure, full court, on the ball pressure. Maybe getting just a bit aggressive, picking up some fouls there. Sams picks up the foul, just his first, however. Bowling Green, under a minute to play first quarter in the bonus. First shot on the way, no good from Gibson. Yes, Winfield is definitely playing with a lot of intensity on the defensive end. And curious to see how Bowling Green's going to respond if they keep this up the rest of the game. Missed both free throws. Had a chance there to cut the lead to three. Ball stolen. Into the near court with it. Bowling Green running. Shot off the glass. Could have called a foul. Rebound Bowling Green. No good. Rebound underneath again. Ryan Hall shot back up. This time it goes. Ryan Hall, three offensive rebounds. Bowling Green does cut it to three. 14-11, or under 30 seconds. That's his fourth point of the quarter. Winfield walks it across the timeline under 20 seconds. Caden Palmer now puts it in motion. He has left side to Connor Martin. He backs it out near midcourt with 12. Left wing, Palmer. Right side with six. Into the corner, three-pointer on the way. Off the mark, no good. Rebound, fought for, tipped out of bounds. And that's going to do it for the first quarter. After one, 14-11, Winfield back with more on KJFM and WBBA Sports. Bowling Green Tournament coverage brought to you by Custom Works Salon and Tanning, Hayden's Motorsports Center, and Lynn's Heritage House. Don't have time to stop by the bank? That's not a problem if you're a customer of People's Bank and Trust. With our mobile and online banking service, you can now bank from anywhere. Deposit checks, pay bills, transfer funds between accounts, check the latest activity on your account, and view images of your checks, all from the convenience of your desktop and smartphone. So start banking on your schedule and download the People's Bank and Trust app today. People's Bank and Trust, hometown banking the way it should be. Member FDIC. Castile Color Wheel has been proudly serving Pittsfield and the surrounding communities since 1950 and is an expanded retail area. They began as a paint retailer handling Benjamin Moore and Pittsburgh paints, developing into a full-service decorating center, including wall coverings and Hunter Douglas custom window treatments. Castile over the years has expanded with home decor, high-quality gift items, bridal and baby registry, an upscale ladies' and children's boutique, open Monday through Friday, 8 a.m. until 5 p.m., and Saturday, 8 until noon. Let Castile's be your one-stop Shop located just off the northwest corner of the square in Pittsfield. Area high school sports on Eagle 102 brought to you by Rick Rodhouse, Country Financial Agent, Noah Builders, and Central State Bank of Illinois. And we're back here to start the second quarter. And Winfield gets it right out of the they get the first possession of the second uh, second quarter and promptly drive it length of the court and turn it over on the baseline. So Bowling Green gets it back. Ryan Hall, he traveled. That's going to be their 
fifth turnover on the game. Well, they're having trouble with the full court pressure that Winfield has put on Bowling Green. So Winfield gets it back after their own turnover. This one goes off with some legs. It's fought for and underneath controlled by Bowling Green. Ryan Hall comes out of it out of the pack with it, and he comes into the near court. He hands off to Niemeyer. Right side for Hall. Nice inlet pass for Brody. He turns and lays it off the glass and in. Timeout on the, full, on the floor. It's 14-13, Bowling Green to within one. We will step aside for a break as well. Back with more of the Bowling Green tournament on KJF WBBA Sports. Brought to you by Center Locker Service, Community State Bank of Missouri, and Meyer Implement Company. With 14 stores across Missouri and Illinois, La Crosse Lumber Company provides lumber, quality products, and service to homeowners, builders, DIYers, and more. With some of the top brand names in the business available, La Crosse Lumber has what you need for your next project. Stop into any location for a free estimate before you start your next build. La Crosse Lumber Company, the oldest, most reliable lumber and hardware company in the Midwest since 1873. Area High School Sports on Eagle 102. Brought to you by Cellular and Satellite Center, Pike County Memorial Hospital, and Community State Bank of Missouri. All right, timeout just about complete. This has been a game of run. Bowling Green jumped out on top 5-0. 12 unanswered for Winfield. It was 12-5. And after that, now Bowling Green back to within one at 13-14, to trailing by one. Just underway, second period of play in the third place game at the 99th annual Bowling Green Basketball Tournament. I'm Rodney Dolbear alongside Stace and Martin. Bringing this to you on the airwaves and the internet and everywhere else. Winfield has it, tipped, controlled by Kyle. He swings it left side for Barth, top of the key for Connor Martin, right side, now Rainbow. Driving into the paint, out of control, throws it away. DJ Barth got it, had some contact, kind of knocked him off balance, and when he tried to pass to the perimeter, it went into the stands. Gotten a little bit sloppy here in the last couple of minutes. Substitution. So Eskew's coming back in the ball game, playing with three fouls. Well, I'm sure he's smart and at the kind of be a little cautious as he almost went over and back but stayed <laughs> but stayed clear there and the bowling green has it down by one a chance to retake a lead they last had at five four three pointer left wing yes score the basket zach gibson knocks it down the open look and it's 16 14. winfield sets up in the near court palmer swings it right side to camden palmer Palmer looks into the corner, has Caden there. Caden gets it. Caden Palmer, ball fake. Three-pointer NBA range, off the mark, it's no good. Rebound SQ. He hands off to Hall, Ryan Hall, quickly into the near court. Bowling Green with the ball and two-point lead. Three-pointer SQ, yes! Bowling Green heating up from three-point land. It is now 19-14. Bobcats match their largest, largest lead of the night at five. Another timeout on the floor. We'll step aside for a break. Back with more after this on KJFM and WBBA Sports. Tournament coverage brought to you by Bolin Chevrolet. Get spot a shot in Louisiana and DG Firearms. Get the best deals of the year during New Holland Value Bonanza. Going on now at Bowling Green Tractor. Put 0% financing for 72 months in your pocket or choose a freeloader on Workmaster subcompact and compact tractors and Boomer compact tractors. Reliable, powerful, and easy to run. They help you tackle chores without breaking the bank. Work smarter with year-end value bonanza savings at Bowling Green Tractor. Stop in today. Offers end December 31st. For commercial use only, customer participation subject to credit qualifications and CNH Industrial Capital America LLC approval. Standard terms, conditions, and other restrictions apply. Down payment may be required. Follow area high school sports on KJFM Radio. Brought to you by Browns Processing and Smokehouse Meats. Young Enterprises and Family Drug. 
After the timeout, Winfield drives length of the court, passes it around a bit, and then uh, had it in the lane, took a shot, and they, they called a foul on Grody. Pretty tough call there on Grody. It does send Creech to the line, shooting two. He makes the first, but, boy, I didn't think there was much there on that call. That's Aiden's first. Yep, first team first as he makes the second free throw. So the lead is three for Bowling Green. Winfield has pulled their full court press. So this time, Hall's able to walk it across the timeline, running one-hander off the mark. Eskew has it pulled away quickly into the near court preach with numbers. Off the underneath side of the rim, they're going to call a foul. That's going to go against Niemeyer. That's going to go against Zach Gibson, I believe. Well, yes, you are correct. That's going to be his second, team second, as Breach is going to look to go to make two more free throws as he did last time he was here. He's made three in a row, 19-17. Lead cut to two. Technically, he's made five in a row. He's made his first five. All points been from free throws. He's looking to make his sixth. Second one's on the way and good as well. Now the full court pressure is back. Eskew, got to watch out. Just about could have got called with the elbow there. Bowling Green, nice pass down low oh, nice, for Niemeyer. Nice ball movement there from Bowling Green. You kind of find an open Niemeyer right down in the paint. Right in the paint. Couldn't get the shot to go, but he's he was fouled. And we'll have a pair of free throws coming. 4.57 left, second quarter, 19-17. Two free throws coming for Niemeyer. First one rattles out no good. Paul's going to go to the bench, and McDonald is going to come back in the game for Bowling Green. Niemeyer misses them both. Rebound controlled by Winfield. So they'll have the ball down two quickly, pushing into the near court. Connor Martin, he hands back to Preach, to Palmer. Palmer to Palmer. Pass into the paint. Now kick it back out. Preach, three-pointer on the way. Rims out, no good. Rebound. Controlled by Grody. Bowling Green has it. He'll hand off to Gibson. He pushes ahead of the pack to Eskew. Eskew, a good ball handler. In a little bit of trouble. Throws it away. Has a man for Winfield ahead of the pack. Palmer to the glass. Finger roll. It's good. Camden Palmer with the bucket. And we're tied at 19. Eskew and Gibson in the backcourt. Need to get this ball across. They do. Grody has it. He throws it away. Didn't have to make that pass. And I think they're going to whistle either Gibson or Grody for the foul. As Connor Martin was bringing it across the timeline. And it's going to be on Grody, his second. Team third. Like you were saying, they get across the half court line. And then all of a sudden they forget what they're doing and they throw it over. And they throw it away. My bad. Grody didn't have to make a pass there. He he caught it. He could have he had established position in the front court. Could have waited for some help from his teammates, but he tried to make the quick pass. Shot up, no good. Rebound Palmer gets it back. He can't make it. He's missed two, gets his own rebound again. He'll bring it back out and set the offense. Palmer to Palmer to Creech. Creech looks for direction from the sideline. He has it over to Camden Palmer back to Caden. To Creech in the right side. Free throw line extended. Now top of the key left wing for Palmer. Palmer drives baseline over Grody. Nice running shot from about eight feet. Winfield now with their lead at 22-19. The lead at three. Bowling Green, Gibson fakes the three. Zone defense, corner. Shot on the way. High arcing three-pointer. It won't go. No good off the mark for McDaniel. Rebound Winfield. Palmer into the near court, takes to the glass. It's off the mark. Rebound, Winfield tipped, controlled underneath. Palmer left wing on the block. No good. However, two coming. That's going to go against McDonald. It is very important, and it's more my biggest pet peeve, is 
When the shot goes up, you have to put your butt on somebody, box them out, because if they don't stop this offensive rebound, Bowling Green is going to be upset when this game is over because they're going to be on the losing end. And we have a timeout. So we'll be back after this. It's going to be a full timeout. We'll be back with Winfield up 22-19 to over Bowling Green from the Bowling Green Tournament. We'll be back with more from KJFM WBBA Sports. Nick Naylor and Sons, Backhoe and Excavating, Advanced Eye Care, and Wood Smoked Meats. Bowling Green Veterinary Clinic knows that getting the best care for your pet is a top priority. They strive to provide the greatest quality medical and surgical care for our furry companions. Their newly expanded and remodeled facility with accommodations for comprehensive inpatient hospital care and complete outpatient care allows the friendly and knowledgeable staff at Bowling Green Veterinary Clinic to keep your pet healthy and safe so the whole family can cheer on our area teams. High School Sports on your area sports leader, Eagle 102. Brought to you by Bowling Green Tractor, Vicki Cadwalder, Real Estate, and Ingram Plumbing. All right, 2.54 left in the second period of play. It's been a back-and-forth game. Both teams have had a decent lead. They've both gone on big runs. Right now, the run is favoring Winfield as they're up by three with foul shots coming for Camden Palmer. First shot too strong off the back iron. It didn't go for the senior. So far, he is 0 for 3 from the line, looking to get his first on his fourth attempt. Rim, up. Rims out no good. Rebound Grody, ahead of the pack for Eskew. Now Gibson runs it down, nearly threw that away. Gibson sets the offense. He'll hand right side for Ryan Hall. He backs it out near the BG logo at midcourt. Looks for SQ in the right corner, guarded there by Palmer. Cross-court pass, three-pointer on the way. Gibson hits off the front iron, no good. Rebound fought for, tipped, and Winfield comes away with it. Creech into the near court, drives, stops, and a foul. That's the fourth on SQ. He tried to make a block, and I'll be honest, he, he jumped up and he rattled the backboard. I didn't know that he got that much of preach, but they're going to say that he did. That's four on Eskew. So yeah, I I agree. I didn't see a lot of contact there. I saw more kind of. I mean, he's he's six four, six five, and preach is only about six foot. So he jumped up. He had his hands way up there. I didn't see anybody, but the refs did, and unfortunately, you have to go to the bench with four as preach makes the three point play. The lead is six. I think if he doesn't rattle the backboard there, I, I wonder if that call gets made because it was he crashed into the backboard and it was loud and I don't know. Nonetheless, Bowling Green now finds himself down by six. They have it in the front court. Gibson, he turns it over. Ball's loose. Fought for. Preach comes away with it. Niemeyer gets whistled for the foul. Did not like the fact that he had the foul called. Got to be careful. Don't want to pick up a technical. Definitely not. It's easy to get your emotions the best of you. I've been there, done that, but got to stay cool. As Creech is going to line to shoot two. Winfield in the bonus for the rest of the second period. Creech with the miss. So if you're Bowling Green, you know you've got a six-point deficit. You'd like to trim that a little bit going into half, and certainly game hasn't been decided. The lead now seven, 26-19. No pressure. Paul gets to walk this one up, has Niemeyer on his left, throws it away to nobody. A little bit of confusion right now. He, was, he had Niemeyer there. Niemeyer cut back towards the ball handler just about the time that Hall – made the pass, he thought Niemeyer was going to go the other direction. That's Bowling Green's 11th turnover in the half so far. Winfield, Palmer, left wing. Now Creech, open for three. It was good for line. Now rebound comes long into the near court. Fairchild. Bowling Green has it. A minute 27 left, 26-19. Bowling Green looking to answer. Paul to Gibson. 
Gibson dribbles, looks to the corner. Three-pointer on the way. It's going to be too strong. Rebound controlled by Creech. And then a needless foul there. You just didn't need to pick that foul up. You're in the backcourt. Gibson, I believe, is who they're going to call. It's going to be either Gibson or Hall. Both of both of them were reaching in, trying to slap the ball away. That's going to be on Hall. That's going to be his second. And it's going to send Creech back to the line, who's a very, very good free throw shooter. I say that, and he misses it. I think he's missed three in a row now. Uh, he didn't make either of his last two. He made one of his last two to make it 26. That's correct. He made the second of two. Second of two on the way, and this one goes down as well. 27-19, lead is stretched to 18 here as we approach the one-minute mark, second quarter, third place game. Bowling Green Tournament, the 99th annual version of that. Ball's going to be thrown away. Too, pass too tall for Fairchild. Xander got a hand on it, but it flies over to the scorer's table, and the 12th turnover gives it back to Winfield here, a chance to push this lead to double digits. Bowling Green definitely playing to Winfield's style of play here in the first half. Winfield has it in the near court. Palmer gives to Creech, top of the key beyond three. Palmer drives baseline underneath the basket. He's going to be fouled by Grody. That's going to be his third. So he's going to go to the line to shoot two. Bowling Green getting uh, themselves into some foul trouble. They've committed quite a few. A lot of foul shots attempted for Winfield, but you've got Eskew on the bench with four, three for Grody now. Caden Palmer makes the first of two. It's 28-19, 37 seconds left, second quarter. Second one's good as well, so the lead is 10. No pressure. You don't, you don't have to force anything. You start got another half. Run a good play here, get some points, cut into this double-digit lead. He kind of has some momentum going towards in the second half. Gibson, bounce pass right wing at the hash for Hall. Hall has it tipped out of bounds. They're going to say last touched by Winfield. It'll stay with the Bobcats in their own end with 14 seconds left, second quarter. Niemeyer has it swatted. Ball's loose, stolen. It's on the ground. Winfield picks it up in the backcourt. Bodies are all around, and Bowling Green steals it back. Niemeyer with the long three. Off the mark, it won't go. Had a little more time than he thought. Launched the 35-footer with about five seconds left. But nonetheless, the half comes to a close. 29-19 Winfield. We'll be back with halftime after this on KJFM WBBA Sports. Coverage brought to you by People's Bank and Trust, Mike Henry Excavating, and Sun Window Company. The Eagle 102 Halftime Report is coming up. Brought to you by Cellular and Satellite Center in Bowling Green. Cellular and Satellite Center is the only stop you need to make when it comes to satellite providers. Offering direct TV and dish network along with antenna installs. Wait, there's more. They also offer several options for internet service with Viasat, HughesNet, and AT&T. Hold on, there's still more. They can also do security system installations, have TVs and stocks, mounts, and cables. Now, a special message from Matthew Niemeyer himself. If you call an 800 number and they say we will be the local installer, they are wrong. Contact Matthew at Sailor and Satellite Center in Bowling Green, your local authorized dealer. Did you know the average person uses their debit card more than 20 times a month? Because debit cards are part of our daily lives, People's Bank and Trust wants to make getting and replacing your debit cards even easier. We are excited to offer debit cards instantly at our branch locations. Now when you open your account or need a replacement card, we can issue you one immediately. Call or stop by People's Bank and Trust on Business 61 in Bowling Green or Historic Downtown Louisiana to see how we can help you with your debit card needs. People's Bank and Trust, hometown banking the way it should be. Member FDIC. Gambino's in Louisiana is now open 10 a.m. to 8 p.m. Wednesday through Saturday. Enjoy lunch options, and Gambino's dinner menu begins at 4, including the popular Make Your Own with your choice of pasta, meat, sauce, and veggie. Other entrees, including lasagna, red wine pot roast, and weekly specials with a variety of beer and wine available to enjoy with your meal. Wednesday through Saturday, 10 a.m. to 8 p.m. 
If it's not on the menu, we don't talk about it. Ingram Plumbing has always been known for its outstanding plumbing service. But did you know that Ingram's is also the largest retail plumbing supply store in the area? We carry Delta faucets, a complete line of Whirlpool tubs and showers, jacuzzi pumps, and many other specialty items. Stop by Ingram Plumbing today, Highway 61 Bowling Green. The most complete coverage of high school sports is on Eagle 102, and it's brought to you by Mid-America Auto and Towing, Perkins Electrical Services, and Pike County Mutual Insurance. Hear all the action from the Eagle 102 broadcast booth, sponsored by Family Drug in Louisiana. It's now time for the Eagle 102 Halftime Report on KJFM, sponsored by Cellular and Satellite Center in Bowling Green. At the half. 29-19, a game that was back and forth for much of the first quarter and a half. Winfield just stretched out the last four or five minutes of the second quarter and had established a 10-point lead. Bowling Green got a little bit sloppy with the ball, a lot sloppy with the ball. I think they were 12 or 13 turnovers, something like that. They had 13, yeah. Uh, just You just can't do that. And they also got themselves in some foul trouble. As we mentioned, Eskew on the bench with four. And... Grody has three. A lot of other teammates picked up fouls. Winfield was in the bonus with a couple of minutes at least left in each of the two quarters, so they shot a lot of free throws and did a pretty good job of converting. Yeah, they were uh, 14 of 20 of free throws, and that is, that's what most teams have in the game. That's a tremendous and, amount of foul shots and, for one half a play. Yes, and they just did that in the first half. But Bowling Green now just has to to they're going to see the full court pressure because it caused them it caused them trouble. They hit a little stretch there where they got the three point uh, ball falling, and they like to shoot a lot of threes, so they're going to have to get get that falling. But they just need to let their offense slow down once they get it across the the timeline. But that pressure will, and you see it at all levels of basketball. Effective full court pressure speeds the it speeds the offense up and. It's like when they get it across time, the timeline, they're still in, in hurry mode, and it just uh, it caused some turnovers directly, and it certainly caused some rush shots that went the other way as well. Yeah, uh, it's obvious, you know. I mean, it's a it's a big game, third place game. Bowling Green wants to win. Winfield wants to win, and like you made the comment, Bowling Green gets to cross the half court line, and their jitters are going, their nerves are going, they're trying to make the perfect play happen, and they just need to slow down, let the play come to them. Capitalize on Winfield's mistakes. Winfield is doing that to Bowling Green. They're capitalizing their mistakes. They're getting all. They're getting 13 turnovers. Winfield's pushing the ball in the fast breaks, getting the open layups, or getting the fouls called on Bowling Green and sending them to the line, and making the free throws that they have in the first. So I just think it's important that uh, Bowling Green just realizes they're only down 10. That's not that many points. There's still 16 minutes to go in the second half. Take a deep breath. Now, I know SQ has four fouls and Grody has three. Now, I know the coaching staff is going to be telling SQ, hey, you have four. We need you. Be smart. Let's go come back and let's go get this W. Well, they're going to have to, and um, Winfield did a nice job. You know, a lot of the free throws that they shot, they, they did a nice job of getting the ball down to the post and getting some easy looks. Some of them they made, but a lot of them that they – even if they didn't, they got uh, they got fouled, got to the free throw line there. So uh, Winfield played played a nice a nice half. We'll take a break here at halftime. Come back with a rundown of the scoring in the first half after this on KJFM and Eagle Eagle One Hundred Two and WBBA Sports. Tournament coverage brought to you by Bouquet Florist and Gift Shop, Pike Lincoln Technical Center, and Pogue Ford. Sailor Satellite Center is the only stop you need to make when it comes to satellite providers, offering direct TV and dish network along with antenna installs. Wait, there's more. They also offer several options for internet service with Viasat, HughesNet, and AT&T. Hold on, there's still more. They can also do security system installations, have TVs and stocks, mounts, and cables. Now, a special message from Matthew Niemeyer himself. If you call an 800 number and they say we will be the local installer, they are wrong. 
Contact Matthew at Sailor and Satellite Center in Bowling Green, your local authorized dealer. Community State Bank of Missouri in Bowling Green and Troy, where the number one priority is the customer and adding new services to help simplify your life and building a strong, high-performance financial services organization. Community State Bank in Bowling Green and Troy, your community bank since 1887, member FDIC. Your car, your stuff, your savings. Combine your auto and renter's insurance with a call to State Farm Insurance agent Cindy Blaylock in Louisiana and let Cindy show you how to put life back in your life insurance. Auto, home, and life. Make your wallet happy. Here to help life go right, State Farm Insurance agent Cindy Blaylock in Louisiana. You simply can't buy a better replacement window than one from Sun Window Company. Energy efficient windows and doors with a lifetime warranty on both the window and installation. Sun Window Company, family owned and operated since 1989, offers low factory direct prices on high quality vinyl windows. Custom designed to fit perfectly and built to last. See how much you can save. Call Sun Windows, 573-549-2080 for details. Details and a free estimate. Sun Window Company, Highway 161 in Middletown. Area High School Sports on Eagle 102. Brought to you by Rod Prentice and Brenda Crawford, State Farm Agents. Pepsi and Ackles Farm Market. So we're back here at the halftime. It's a 29-19 in favor of Winfield. I'm going to run down a few stats real quick before we continue with the second half. Uh, for the leading team, Winfield, Brady Creech has 11. And nine of those 11 are just from the free throw line. Sams has four. Martin has two. Palmer has seven. Caden Palmer has five to give them 29. For Bowling Green, Gibson has six. Fairchild has three. Eskew has three with four fouls. Niemeyer has zero, Grody has two, Ryan Hall has four, and McDonald has one. And we are going, looks like we're going to start the second half a little a little early, am I wrong? I think so. There's about two minutes left on the clock, but they've blown the buzzer at the scores table. Both teams have completed their warm-ups. And These refs are ready to roll. I like that. I like that little pace of play here, yep. you know, for golf terms per se. I like that little pace of play. Most Can't of, go wrong with that. Most of the tournaments we play in, you don't think about pace of play because it's good, you're <laughs> going to be out there for six or seven hours, whether you like it or not. Um, in case the wives are listening, he means 10 to 11 hours. Yeah, something like that. I lose track of time. <laughs> so coming out of the half, it's going to be Winfield's ball and Rodney. Let's see what uh, what happens. I don't know why the ref is giving the player the ball when the Wilson has him blow. Oh, he's just wiping the sweat off his eyes. Uh, that's a nice gesture. All right. Pock is reset to eight. We're just about ready to get things underway. So Camden Palmer, he's going to put it in play to Caden Palmer. Winfield has it. They move right to left on your radio dial. They have the ball at the start of the third quarter with a 10-point Lead, 29-19. Creech, he hands to Martin, to Palmer. Palmer back to Creech, beyond three on the right wing. Fake, now Martin saves it. Top of the key, Palmer, left wing. Palmer running 15-footer. Tough shot there. Rebounds fought for. And they're going to call a foul against Bowling Green. I believe that's going to be Niemeyer. Going to pick up his... His second. His second first foul on Bowling Green. Already underway here. The, just 30 seconds gone in the third quarter. Bowling Green already with their first personal foul. Winfield inbounds. Palmer has it between the circles for Martin. The Palmer on the left wing beyond three. Back to Palmer. Camden has it. He dribbles. Creech looks at the three. He's guarded tightly by Hall. Passes up the three. Back to Palmer. To Caden Palmer. To Camden. Camden with the left-hand dribble, right side for Creech. Dumps it inside. Going to be a traveling. Yep, yep. I'm, I wanted to blow my whistle, and I don't even have one because he, he took probably three or four steps yeah, on that. Nice look to Kyle. Got it to the left block, but took a couple of steps or more before getting the shot. So turnover gives it back to Bowling Green. Traveling, turnover right there. 
Paul gets it across the timeline, dribbles into a trap, picked up his dribble, shuffled his feet. Winfield gets it back in what has been a – It's actually, unfortunately, the third time that he's been called for that same call, the travel. So we'll try this again. Kyle gets it. The free throw line extended at the elbow. Martin has it, loses the dribble, t- tip Martin to Palmer. Shot on the way, won't go. Niemeyer is going to be picked, whistled for the foul. So Winfield to the fr- charity stripe. 20 attempts in the first half. These will This will be the first two of the second half of play. That was Niemeyer's third, team second. Like you said, he's going to the line to shoot two. First one's good. The lead is now 11, 30 to 19, 640 to play third quarter, 99th annual Bowling Green Invitational Basketball Tournament. This is the boys' night out, third place game underway as the second foul shot is good as well. About 12 minutes after this one wraps up, we'll have the championship game. Turnover, Bowling Green, Winfield gets it back on the inbounds play. Creech drives, kicks it to Palmer. He's at the left elbow. Now Creech takes the open three. It's off the mark. Rebound run down by Martin. He gets it in. It's going to be out of bounds. Last touch, they say, by Winfield. Bowling Green will get the ball back. They're down by 12. Substitution. Welch is coming in as... Drawing the blank on who went to the bench. But Welch is in for the game for Bowling Green. In the backcourt, Gibson has it. He goes baseline. His layup's blocked. Rebound, Niemeyer. But it did hit the end line before it bounced up to Niemeyer's hands. It'll stay with Bowling Green. Inbounding and starting the play will be Ryan Hall. He slaps the ball, puts people in motion. Rainbows, top of the key, Gibson to McDonald. Right. Welch gets it free throw line to right elbow. He throws it away. Ball's tipped. Niemeyer gets it back. Shot block. Neymar will go to the line with a pair of foul shots. And this would be a good time for Bowling Green to start making their gimmies or their freebies. Down by 12, 5.58 to play third quarter. 31-19, two coming for Oliver Neymar. Rims out, too strong. Those are the ones you got to make if you want to cut into this 12-point lead and Start playing the kind of basketball that everyone knows you're capable of in this third and fourth place game as he misses both of them. Misses both. Rebound. Ryan Hall quickly ahead of the pack. Palmer three. Yes. Palmer knocks down the three. It's 34-19, the largest lead of the evening. It's 15. That was Camden Palmer just had the baseline three right side and knocked it down. Nothing but net. Ball stolen. On the ground, it's loose. That's going to be a travel. No, they're going to call. They're going to call a timeout. Camden Palmer dove on the loose ball and was sliding on his back. Their coach called the timeout. We'll keep it right here. A 30-second timeout. Game is quickly on the verge of getting away from Bowling Green. They need to do something here shortly to stop this run. They're down by 15. Yeah, I agree. Uh, Winfield's kind of get a nice little rhythm, get a nice little pace of play. Definitely doing what they do. And uh, Bowling Green kind of needs to stop the bleeding. Uh, I don't know what else to say. I mean, everyone knows what Bowling Green's capable of doing. They just haven't done it tonight, and they need to find it and find it quick. Well, Ryan Hall that time, it's, it's uh, happened at least twice here in the third quarter, dribbles across the timeline right into a trap and picks up his dribble, and that leads to a possession the other way. So Winfield has it. Pass in the paint. It rattles home. Nice look there. Wide open underneath was Logan Kyle. 36-19. Bowling Green turns it over again. Breach drives baseline, hangs in the air, and scores the easy layout. Timeout taken. Bowling Green wants to talk it over. 38-19. They've doubled up. They're doubled up by Winfield at this point. We'll step aside for a break as well. Back with more on KJFM WBBA Sports after this. Brought to you by Brennos Processing and Smokehouse Meats, Kearns Construction, and All Parts. Experience the ultimate golf adventure at Tea Time Golf, Bowling Green's premier indoor golf simulator destination. 
Whether you're a solo golfer looking for a relaxing round or want to challenge your friends, Tea Time Golf can accommodate up to six players per hour. Choose from a variety of game modes, stroke play, scramble, teams, or even driving range. Visit their Facebook page for more information on pricing and reservations or call 573-591-6699. Tea Time Golf is not just a game. It's a golfing experience year-round like no other. Swing by and elevate your game. They are located at 1107 Business Highway 61, Bowling Green, Missouri. The best coverage of high school sports on KJFM brought to you by Community State Bank of Missouri, County Market in Louisiana, and Bowling Green Pharmacy. Well, this one has slipped away from Bowling Green to this point in the third quarter. They find themselves down by 19, 38-19, doubled up. They will have the ball coming out of the timeout. They're going to have to figure out this full court pressure. It's not going anywhere. Across the timeline, ball swatted, tipped again into a trap. Numbers the other direction. Palmer to the rack, off the glass and in, score the basket and the foul. That time it was Caden Palmer. Paul got the ball to Fairchild and across the timeline in front of the scorer's table, and he was immediately trapped. Made made a pass. It was tipped, and Winfield converts coming the other direction. And that's going to be Hall's third, team third. And Palm's looking for the three-point play, and he converts. 41-19, Hall Winfield, especially here in the second half. Hall in the backcourt, throws it away. It's tipped out of bounds last touch by Winfield's Palmer. Camden Palmer got his hand on it, tipped it into the Bowling Green bench. Bobcats will inbounds from the left hash. I've lost track of how many times Bowling Green has tried to throw these high rainbow, high arching uh, passes across the court, and Winfield keeps picking it off, or they keep tipping it out of bounds. Well, they're working right into the to the. They're they're doing exactly what the trap wants you to do. This time, pass in tended down low for Niemeyer. It was tipped away. And a foul coming the other direction. That's going to be the fourth on Bowling Green. But when you break that pressure, if you can't dribble it across in the middle of the court, you need to have a man top of the key to the to the middle circle somewhere that can catch the ball high. And then who has two fields of, of of play, he can go to his left or right with the guard coming across the timeline. But they're just bringing the ball across into the corner. And then you've got the sideline, the half court line, and two defenders. And there's there's just nothing. Nothing going good for Bowling Green out of that. SQ came in for Bowling Green. Hall is taking a seat. Reminder, SQ does have four fouls. Winfield has it. Breach into the lane. Swings it left side. Martin launches a three. It's off the mark. Just a little strong. Rebound Welch underneath. Nice job by Hank Welch to pull down the rebound. And he'll hand off to Gibson. He drives lane. Nice screen set up there by Neymar. Very good offensive play. And trims the lead to 20. Bowling Green needed a bucket to stop the bleeding. Winfield into the near court. Palmer to Martin to Palmer. Palmer picks up his dribble, looks to Creech. Corner, back to Creech, beyond three on the left wing. Into the paint, now right side, three-pointer open on the way. It's an air ball. And Welch with another rebound. That's two in a row. Ahead of the pack, Fairchild. Fairchild puts it on. Niemeyer down low. He puts a shoulder down, can't get it, gets his rebound, shot up, and two shots coming. Nice job by Niemeyer, battling down low. That's going to be a foul on Palmer. It's going to be his second, team second, as Niemeyer is going to go to the line to shoot two, where he is 0 for 4 from the free throw line, looking to make his first free throw of the night. This one finds the mark. 41 22, 318 to play third quarter. Winfield on top by 19. Bowling Green is 3 of 10 from the free throw line so far in the game. Niemeyer's second shot too far off the mark. And Welch, a nice job. The six foot junior pulls down the rebound, tries to go back up, and he'll go to the line with a pair of foul shots. So some good minutes here lately for the junior Hank Welch. Foul shot rolls around the rim. It won't fall.
Niemeyer checks out. Grody checks in, playing with three fouls. Welch makes one of two, 41-23. Substitution, actually, now Niemeyer back in. As Welch is taking the seat after he made the free throw. That's some good minutes. Good minutes for Welch. So it's 41-23 in favor of Winfield, 3-12 to go in the third. Creech comes near court, looks left wing for G DJ Barris into the game. Pass for Kyle. It's on the ground, tipped and controlled by Grody. He'll hand off to his teammate. Zach Gibson brings it across the timeline. Left wing. SQ. He drives, hands off Grody, puts it on the ground. His shot up. It won't go over the rim. Tipped, controlled by SQ. Now it's on the ground, loose, and Bowling Green has it. Gibson, three-pointer. SQ on the way. Nothing but the bottom of the net. 41-26, Bowling Green showing signs of life. I'm say SQ being a big part of the offense kind of gets it going there as Winfield has the other end. Winfield, Barth into the paint, has some trouble. He gets it back beyond three to Creech. He backs it out with 2.15 left in the third quarter. DJ Barth, he hands to Palmer. Palmer, guarded by Hall. Barth has it. Top of the key, Palmer. Winfield just looking to run some clock at this point. Dumps it into the free throw line extended. Ball nearly thrown away. Into the corner. Baseline, 10-footer on the way. It's blocked, but it kicks right to the Winfield player. Barth gonna, is, Barth's going to be fouled. That's going to be a foul in Fairchild. That's going to be his first, team fifth, so Winfield is going to be shooting free throws for the rest of the third quarter, and there's a minute 46 to go in the third, 41-26 in favor of Winfield. DJ Barth, his first one's on the way and off the mark. Fairchild checks out. Ryan Hall back into the game for Bowling Green. Second foul shot. It rims out. No good. Rebound controlled by Hall for Bowling Green. A chance to cut into this 15-point lead. It has been as much as 22. Gibson guarded by Creech to the baseline for Eskew. Eskew rises up. Hits another three. 41-29. The lead is 12. Eskew heating up from three, and that will bring you back in the game. He's got nine for the game, six for the quarter. Winfield, Palmer to Palmer to the baseline, Creech beyond three. Palmer double dribbles. Pass from Creech, went right to his feet, and he double dribbled. Turnover gives a chance for Bowling Green to get this back to 10 or single digits with a three. A minute 11 left here in the third quarter. Bowling Green showing a little life here. Kind of get some rhythm, kind of pushing back against Winfield here. Paul to Gibson to Niemeyer. Top of the key needs some help. Gets it back to Hall. Hall with the left-hand dribble. Right side, Gibson holds it high. He drives baseline. Bounce pass. Luckily stays with Bowling Green. I think Gibson had, it, had an open lane to the basket there. Tried to make the extra pass across the court, across the lane to Eskew. It does stay with the Bobcats. 50 seconds left here in the third period of play. Eskew has it between the circles with 40. 47, now 45. Ryan Hall launches a three. It's good. The lead is nine. 38 seconds to play. Bowling Green back in this one, 41-32. Heating up. Winfields. Creech will bring it across the timeline slowly with 30 seconds left in the third. Back in this ball game, the three-pointer bringing them back. The last thing Winfield wants is a Bowling Green get extremely hot for a long period of time behind the arc like they are right now. Three-pointer on the way from the corner. It won't go, but the rebound comes long to Palmer. His shot off the glass and in, and that stops the mini run with seven. 43-32 with four. Need to get something in the air. Half-court shot on the way. Off the mark. It won't go. 
We've played three, 43-32, back with the fourth quarter after this on KJFM and WBBA Sports. Bowling Green Tournament coverage brought to you by La Crosse Lumber, Silex Banking Company, and Calumet of Missouri. At Pike County Memorial Hospital, we know how important athletics are for your kids, but with an active lifestyle of sports come health risk and safety hazards. As a certified athletic trainer at Pike County Memorial Hospital, I work closely with our primary care physicians, orthopedic doctors, and physical therapists. We can make a difference between safe play and dangerous injuries for your athletes. Working with Bowling Green, Clopton, and Louisiana schools, our goal is to provide the best possible outcome for your athlete. I'm Casey Sutton, certified athletic trainer with Pike County Memorial Hospital. I'm at work while your athletes are at play. Bowling Green Veterinary Clinic knows that getting the best care for your pet is a top priority. They strive to provide the greatest quality medical and surgical care for our furry companions. Their newly expanded and remodeled facility with accommodations for comprehensive inpatient hospital care and complete outpatient care allows the friendly and not knowledgeable staff at Bowling Green Veterinary Clinic to keep your pet healthy and safe so the whole family can cheer on our area teams. Area High School Sports on Eagle 102. Brought to you by People's Bank and Trust, State Farm Insurance, Cindy Blaylock Agent, and Bowling Green Pharmacy. Eight minutes to play in this third place game. Bowling Green down by 11 after trailing by as many as 22. They do get the ball to begin play here in the fourth quarter. SQ has it beyond three, heavily guarded. Step back three, shot on the way, rebound out. It won't go. Bowling Green gets the rebound with the ball. 18-footer. It won't go. Rebound underneath Grody. He'll go to the line with a pair of foul shots. Ryan Hall couldn't get the 15-footer to go. Well, they're always critical, but there are no more periods after this one, so these are very important. Grody has two. First one's on the way. Bricks off just a little bit too long. That was Palmer second, obviously team first as the fourth quarter just started. Brody second is no good. Missed them both. Eskew gets the rebound. He has it. Dribbles on the right wing. He gets it to Gibson between the circle. Dribbles to the right, back to Eskew. He's hot from three, launches another one. It won't go. Rebound underneath. Winfield's Creech pulls it down. They're also going to whistle somebody for a foul. I believe it was on Zach Gibson. That's going to be his fourth. And no, I'm sorry. It was on Grody. That's going to be Grody's fourth. I didn't see much there. Creech comes into the near court. He's going to take it. And that's going to be Grody's fifth. Well, Creech wisely just took it right to Grody and drove into him. And there was contact with the body and and Grody fouls out. I, you hate to see that type of a foul in the night for somebody. Yeah, those are two back-to-back touchy fouls, technically fouls, but touchy fouls that really haven't been called all night. Creech knocks down a three-pointer, the lead back to 14. Bowling Green in some foul trouble. Welch across the timeline. Three-pointer launched on the way. It's off the mark. No good for Gibson. Rebound underneath Kyle. Kyle ahead of the pack for Creech. Dribbles around traffic. He hangs in the air. Kicks it right side beyond three. Top of the key for Martin. Martin to Palmer. He puts it on the hip at the right hash in front of the Winfield bench. We can say Winfield's going to stay on the way outside of their perimeter, make Bowling Green come to them, make them move the ball, foul them, or they're going to find an open layup. 46-32, Bowling Green trailed by as many as 22, got it back to nine. The lead now is 14. Winfield is very content to just run some clock. Martin has it beyond three between the circles now for Caden Palmer. Caden Palmer to Creech with 6.15 to play fourth quarter. Niemeyer guarding him there. He drives, layup, left hand off the glass. No good, Creech. Goes to the floor. He's fouled by Niemeyer. That's going to be his fourth. He's in Greach is going to go to the line to shoot two. Try to extend this lead for Winfield. More than 14. 
just three minutes, not even two minutes, rather, in, underway here in the fourth quarter. Three personal fouls on Bowling Green already. And at this point, they're going to have to do some fouling. This uh, foul shot hits the left side of the rim and spins out. No good for Creech. So Bowling Green's going to have to put Winfield at the line. And for Bowling Green to get back in it, Winfield's going to have to miss. Problem is Bowling Green doesn't have a lot of players that they can give the fouls. Creech makes one of two. 47-32, lead pushed back to 15 as Ryan Hall comes into the near court. Looks for Gibson. Holds it high. Dumps it for Niemeyer at the left elbow. Askew hangs in the air from 10. It's off the mark. It won't go. Niemeyer fights for it. Tips it to his teammate, Gibson. Niemeyer gets it back, puts it on the ground. Looks for somebody across the lane. Had no one home, throws it away, turnover. That's going to be the 19th turnover from Bowling Green. As they still trail by 15 with 5.38 to go in the fourth and the third and fourth place game. Oliver probably should have gone back up with that one. Reach is going to be fouled by Zach Gibson. That's going to be his fourth, team fourth. Winfield to trigger. Palmer puts it in the air. Creech gets it. Guarded by Gibson. The right hash, he gets it to Kyle. Layup off the glass and in for Creech. Had the open lane to the basket. The lead is 17. Bowling Green, three-pointer. Gibson, it's good. 49-35, lead back. To 14. Timeout on the floor. We'll step aside for a break as well. Bowling Green wants to talk it over. Back with the last five minutes of the fourth after this on KJFM WBBA Sports. Brought to you by Barnes Roots and Herbs, Bowling Green Veterinary Clinic, and Tom Bowling Ford. Agriculture is the backbone of Missouri's economy, and to be successful, you need a strong financial partner. Silex Banking Company wants to be that partner. This is Michael Mudd, president of Silex Banking Company. Whether you're buying commodities, livestock, equipment, or real estate, Silex Banking Company has a lending option for you. Come see our loan officers at 20 South 2nd Street in Silex or call 573-384-5221. Silex Banking Company, equal housing lender, member FDIC. Follow area high school sports throughout the season on Eagle 102. Brought to you by Veolia Landscape Supply, Royal Banks, and a Taste of Philly. After the timeout, Winfield takes the ball out. They have the length of the floor to drive. No pressure, token pressure. As Creech comes to the near court, we've come under five minutes. Sams takes it to the rack. He can't get it to go. Rebound. Eskew, Eskew, head of the pack. It's going to be fouled by Sams, I believe. We'll see who they call. It's a Winfield call. No, they're going to they call, they're call Palmer? it Camden Palmer. They sure did. That's going to be his third, team second. Winfield probably didn't need that shot, although Sams did get to the basket. They certainly didn't need the foul. Bowling Green has it. Welch, shot won't go, rebound underneath Kyle. He hands off to Creech. Nice look for Welch, just didn't get quite enough air underneath it. Kyle pulled down the rebound. Drives the basket, layup good. That was an easy one. No one was even five feet from him as he had an easy lane. Caden Palmer with the bucket, 51-35, ask you. Baseline, hangs in the air from 10, it won't go. Welch underneath with the rebound. Left wing three-pointer blocked. Rebound, Niemeyer. Niemeyer back to Gibson, to Hall. It won't go, but the put back by Welch, it does go. Welch got three offensive rebounds that one possession there, so he's working hard down there. That's good to see. He's had a, had a nice game. Rebound of the Winfield miss by Niemeyer. Bowling Green, 349 to play ahead of the pack. Eskew. Eskew drives, kicks it to the left wing. Three-pointer, no, nope. into the paint, now right side. Gibson's three, on the way. It's just a little short. you got to yeah. follow your shot. It would have come right to him if he follows that shot. 
Creech with the rebound. Ten footer on the way. It's good for Palmer. Caden Palmer. We'll keep it right here. Short timeout. Winfield wants to talk about their strategy as they try and notch the victory in this third place game. 328 to play, 5337. Winfield with the 16 point lead. Bowling Green will have the ball after this timeout. Well, Bowling Green expended a lot of energy to get back to the at least the periphery of the game, had cut that 22 point lead to nine, and then haven't been able to get it any closer. It's back to 16 now, and time is starting to run short for sure. Four fouls on Bowling Green in the fourth quarter, so the next foul puts Winfield at the charity stripe. Only two to this point on the Warriors, so they've got a few to give. They can still be aggressive if they pick up the foul. Bowling Green doesn't get to shoot foul shots, and the story of this game has been the pressure and Bowling Green's inability to handle it, the full court pressure that's caused them trouble uh, all evening long. Yeah, um, yeah, this pressure just been a has been a big problem for Bowling Green, and they're making they're making these little runs here and there, but it's kind of it's not quite enough. Obviously, as they still trail, but they get back in the game, and then they give it right back to Winfield. Like you said earlier, it's kind of a story of runs this game so far. Winfield does not have pressure. Gibson comes into the near court, gives the SQ beyond three, double team there, looks to drive baseline. He looks inside for Niemeyer. His shot off the glass, it won't go. Rebound pulled down by Palmer. He hands to Creech. And I would expect Winfield to just look to run some clock unless somebody has an unimpeded path to the basket. Fourth bowling ring, SQ can't foul. He's got four. Palmer. He drives baseline. He puts the shot up off the glass, draws the foul. Shot doesn't go, but two foul shots coming. Yeah, and that's going to be on Gibson. That's going to be five. So his night is done. Well, as we mentioned, they're going to have to start fouling, and they just don't have many players that, that can give a foul. You've still got Eskew on the floor, which now with Gibson on the bench, and, and even probably before, Eskew has been your best shooter all night. Mm-hmm. First foul shot for Palmer. Camden touches nothing but the bottom of the twine on the way through. 54-37. Winfield bringing in a few guys that are seeing a few extra minutes. Second shot, no good. Welch with another rebound. He's got to have seven or eight rebounds tonight. SQ takes it to the basket, but they're going to say he was fouled prior to the shot, so it'll stay with Bowling Green. Third team foul. Second on Brady Creech. Hall will inbounds. Gets it in to SQ, back to Hall. Dribbles around, has it stolen, has his pocket pit by Creech. Creech into the near court, and they'll run some time. 2.30 to play here. Looks like Winfield is in control of this one. Trying to salt this one away and take home a little tournament hardware. Palmer gets right to the basket, lays it in. Very nice job of, of salting this game away by Winfield. They they run some clocks, spread the floor, and then get, get the basket. You know, the easy lane. That time, Eskew takes it to the left block. Shot won't go. Two foul shots coming for Eskew. 56-37, lead is back to 19. 208 to play in the fourth. Eskew knocks down the first. That's going to give him his 10th point of the night. Brendan Scherter checks in for Niemeyer, who takes a seat on the bench. Keegan Smith also in the game. As Eskew makes them both. Colin Calhoun on the floor as well for Bowling Green as both teams start to empty their bench. Creech brings it into the near court, guarded by Keegan Smith. 
Smith, the sophomore, Creech dribbles around. Nice defense. Top of the key, three-pointer on the way. It won't go. No good off the mark for Luke Pruitt. Bowling Green quickly the other direction. Eskew open for three. It's good. Spicer's home. 56-42. A minute 41 left in this one. Creech in the backcourt, guarded by Smith. Creech stops, lays it off the glass, scores the basket. 58-42. That's 21 for him. He's had a great night. SQ dribbles, looks inside, shot off the glass. It won't go. Nice give and go there to Brendan Scherter. Scherter couldn't convert the basket, but he'll have a couple of foul shots coming. The 6-1 freshman getting some tournament action. Right-handed foul shot. Here as they come, it finds the mark. He'll have one more. A minute 18 left, fourth quarter, 58-42. Winfield headed towards the third-place trophy as Scherter makes the second. Colton Schulte brings it across the timeline. Nice dribble drive. He backs it out, now kicks it right side to Barth. Barth puts it on the floor. Now a good look. Score the basket for Luke Pruitt. Nice ball movement there. Found the open man. Pruitt converts from just under the basket, about six feet, right in front of the hoop. Eskew drives off the glass. It won't go. Rebound comes to Winfield under a minute. Andrew Hines brings it into the near court for Barth. Rainbow's right side under the basket run down on the baseline before it sails out. Three-pointer on the way. It's no good. It's an air ball. Rebound controlled by Bowling Green. Rolling Green, Eskew. Smith gets it ahead to Eskew with 30 seconds left. Time running down in this third-place game. Well, I don't know if I really see the need for that. They called a foul, a little bump foul, as Eskew went to drive to the basket. That's going to send Eskew to the line to shoot two. Looking for his 22nd? No. Makes the first. He doesn't have 21. That's uh, No, that was Breach for, Breach, yeah. for Winfield. He's got 16 now. Makes them both. Winfield gets it across the timeline with 17. Bowling Green's not going to foul. Looks like they're going to be content to let this one run out as we're under 10 seconds, so... Congratulations to Winfield for bringing home the third place trophy. Our final is going to be 60 46 Winfield by 14 over Bowling Green. We will be back with the post game wrap after this on KJFM and WBBA Sports. Bowling Green tournament coverage brought to you by Custom Works Salon and Tanning, Hayden's Motorsports Center, and Lynn's Heritage House. The Eagle 102 Post Game Show is coming up. Since 1939, Meyer Implement Company has been serving the local agricultural and business communities with quality sales and service. Meyer Implement has also taken great pride in supporting those communities and would like to wish the area sports teams the best of luck throughout their seasons. Be sure to stop by and visit the people who truly appreciate your business. Meyer Implement Company, fully agree. NOAA Builders in Silex is a proud supporter of all area athletes. They're a small locally owned contractor with over 25 years of experience in custom and new home construction. NOAA Builders wants to take your forever home plan and make it a reality. Call or visit NOAA Builders at noahbuildersinc.com. Get the best deals of the year during New Holland's Value Bonanza. Going on now at Bowling Green Tractor. Put 0% financing for 72 months in your pocket or choose a freeloader on Workmaster subcompact and compact tractors and Boomer compact tractors. Reliable, powerful, and easy to run. They help you tackle chores without breaking the bank. Work smarter with year-end value bonanza savings at Bowling Green Tractor. Stop in today. Offers end December 31st. For commercial use only, customer participation subject to credit qualifications and CNH Industrial Capital America LLC approval. Standard terms, conditions, and other restrictions apply. Down payment may be required. 
from the classic cheesesteak and rich crab cakes, a taste of Philly in Bowling Green is a fan favorite. A meal ready for you before or after the game, and game day jerseys are welcome. Open seven days a week. A taste of Philly. Business Highway 54 West in Bowling Green. The area's best coverage of high school sports on Eagle 102 brought to you by High County Health Department, People Savings Bank, and All Parts. Bringing you all the action from the Eagle 102 broadcast booth, sponsored by Family Drug in Louisiana. Time now for the Eagle 102 post game show on KJFM. We are here after the Winfield Bowling Green, third and fourth place game. Winfield pulled out the victory. 60 to 46. Uh, we're going to have the championship game with the Clopton versus Van Farr. So uh, I'm going to do a rundown of the stats and then I'm going to step aside. And then Rodney and Jim are going to be your guys' voice for the championship game. For Winfield Warriors, Brady Creech with 21, Coleman Sams with four, Connor Martin with two, Camden Palmer with 13. Caden Palmer with 16, Logan Keel with two. Warriors war had 19 made free throws and 28 attempts. Bowling Green, for the Bowling Green scores, Zach Gibson had 11, Fairchild had three, Jace Eskew with 16, which is pretty impressive considering he was in foul trouble all the game. Uh, Niemeyer with one, Grody with two, Welch with three, Hall with seven, McDonald with one, and Scherter with two, and Bowling Green was 10 of 21 behind, oh, sorry, for the free throw line, and they had 21 turnovers in the third and fourth place game. So just to recap, that was 60 to 46 in favor of Winfield. Uh, we're going to step aside, and when you come back, you will have Rodney and Jim for the championship game between Van Farr and Plopton. That's it for KJFM WBBA Sports. Tournament coverage brought to you by Center Locker Service, Community State Bank of Missouri, and Meyer Implement Company. Hi, this is Shelly Clucky with Fight County Mutual Insurance Company. We appreciate the value of working hard and making sure you've taken steps to make sure you're prepared for whatever comes your direction. Best wishes to all of our area athletes for another amazing season from myself and Corey Buchanan at Pike County Mutual Insurance Company on the square in Bowling Green. I'm Tylee Mills, the CEO of Pike County Memorial Hospital. You've heard it from your friends, family, and even neighbors. They choose Pike County Memorial Hospital. Quality care from quality people. Pike County Memorial Hospital. With 14 stores across Missouri and Illinois, La Crosse Lumber Company provides lumber, quality products, and service to homeowners, builders, DIYers, and more. With some of the top brand names in the business available, La Crosse Lumber has what you need for your next project. Stop into any location for a free estimate before you start your next build. La Crosse Lumber Company, the oldest, most reliable lumber and hardware company in the Midwest since 1873. Family Drug, your community health mart pharmacy in Louisiana, reminds you that this is a good time to review your medicine cabinet. Another cold and flu season means taking stock of outdated or no longer used medication. The folks at Family Drug also remind you that changes in your prescriptions may pose drug interaction problems. When you're choosing a pharmacy for your family's prescription, talk to your dedicated staff at Family Drug, Louisiana. Health Mart, taking the time to listen and care. Area High School Sports on Eagle 102, brought to you by Rick Rodhouse, Country Financial Agent, NOAA Builders, and Central State Bank of Illinois. Hear all the action from the Eagle 102 broadcast booth, sponsored by Family Drug in Louisiana. It's time now for the Eagle 102 pregame show, sponsored by Bowling Green Pharmacy. Well, welcome back. The championship game, about 10 minutes left to play. Jim Ross, my partner for the Championship game has slid into the captain's seat. I'm Rodney Dolbear. Welcome back. We've had uh, two games already here this evening, and we've got one more to play, Jim. And this one should be a doozy as the number one seed, Van Far Indians, take on the number three seed, the Clopton Hawks, who defeated Winfield in a mild upset back in the semifinals. So 
This ought to be a good one. We'll take a quick break, and we'll be back to tell you all about it right after this on KJFM WBBA Sports. By Fulton Chevrolet. Get Spot a Shot in Louisiana and DG Firearms. Don't have time to stop by the bank? That's not a problem if you're a customer of People's Bank and Trust. With our mobile and online banking service, you can now bank from anywhere. Deposit checks, pay bills, transfer funds between accounts, check the latest activity on your account, and view images of your checks, all from the convenience of your desktop and smartphone. So start banking on your schedule and download the People's Bank and Trust app today. People's Bank and Trust, hometown banking the way it should be. Member FDIC. Experience the ultimate golf adventure at Tea Time Golf, Bowling Green's premier indoor golf simulator destination. Whether you're a solo golfer looking for a relaxing round or want to challenge your friends, Tea Time Golf can accommodate up to six players per hour. Choose from a variety of game modes, stroke play, scramble, teams, or even driving range. Visit their Facebook page for more information on pricing and reservations or call 573-591-6699. Tea Time Golf is not just a game. It's a golfing experience year-round like no other. Swing by and elevate your game. They are located at 1107 Business Highway 61, Bowling Green, Missouri. Brown's Processing and Smokehouse Meats is your first stop when stocking your freezer. Brown's has frozen chicken, steaks, brats, and burgers ready to go. For wholesale and custom butchering, Brown's is your first call. It's where quality meets service. Brown's Processing and Smokehouse Meats. For your meat processing, smokehouse meats, and homemade sausage. Just off Highway 61 in Silex. It's a great time to buy or sell a home. I'm Vicki Cadwalder, and I take pride in offering skills that make the process go smoothly from beginning to end. Even after closing, I enjoy staying in touch and being there to help you if you have any other needs or questions. During the process, I'll work closely with your lender and other professionals to make it as effortless as possible. I'm here with you every step of the way, so when you're ready to buy or sell, call me and we'll create a personalized plan just for you. Vicki Cadwalder Real Estate, loving our small town life. Area High School Sports on Eagle 102, brought to you by Cellular and Satellite Center, Pike County Memorial Hospital, and Community State Bank of Missouri. Time now for the Eagle 102 Keys to the Game on KJFM. Sponsored by Vicki Cadwallader Real Estate in Louisiana. Welcome back to the 99th Annual Bowling Green Invitational. And they've got two old dudes up here now, Rodney. They do. A lot of years sitting here at this uh, broadcast table for this championship game. This should be a good one. Have you seen both teams? I have not. I have not seen. I have uh, seen Clopton actually called one of their games uh, at the Clopton tournament, but I have not seen van far so that'll be new new for me so looking forward to a good good basketball game got the one and the three seed so not completely chalk but fairly close van far is all about transition they don't have a ton of size they've got pacey redding and and carter jennings but they're not big physical guys uh, redding loves to step outside and he'll shoot the three while clopton has got the evans boys inside and and they like to bang around and get after it. So it's probably going to be a battle of tempo. Who can control the tempo of this game? Clopton had problems with Winfield the other night getting back on defense. And they're talking to Coach Francis before the game. He's, he understands, and that's been one of their focuses, is that they know that Van Farr, when they get it, whether it's on a steal or a rebound, they're going to get it and go. Did uh, did Winfield put any pressure, the full court pressure that they did on Bowling Green in that third place game? Yes. Did, did, and uh, how did Pre- pressured the guards hard, particularly in the third quarter, and Winfield came back from a 15 point deficit to make it a three point game, and then Clopton stretched it out with free throws in the end. So, so yeah, they're going to pressure the guards, and so Clopton's aware of that as well, and I think they have a plan of that. Of course. Pat Conway's got a bunch he's had had for quite some time. He's got a number of seniors on the team. They've played together for a long time. Uh, with Pacey Redding coming in as a sophomore now, and he's added a new a new uh, level of offensive threat to their to their squad. And uh, I, I expect this to be a dandy. Well, that uh, that'll be interesting. I always like a game. You, you mentioned it's a, a battle of the battle of the pace. Who is able to play at their own pace and uh, that's always interesting to see how those battles turn out. Both teams go seven, eight deep, so nobody wants to be in foul trouble, but they've got replacement parts that are ready and willing, and we'll get in rotation as the game goes along. If you're just joining us, Ellsbury won the consolation trophy back. That started at 1 o'clock. They beat North Callaway 49-40 to in a pretty entertaining game, and then Winfield just defeated Bowling Green in a slugfest 60-46 to take home the – 
third place trophy and we've got them teed up for the championship game here we're glad to have you with us we've got maddie on the board for us and tannis is taking pictures and april's running around somewhere and i'm guessing probably gordon's back at the station so thanks to all those folks for their help we'll take our final break and we'll be back with the starting lineups may have to get out of here for the national anthem for a second but then we'll have the opening tip after this on kgfm wbba sports at Sons Backhoe and Excavating, Advanced Eye Care, and Wood Smoked Meats. Community State Bank of Missouri in Bowling Green and Troy, where the number one priority is the customer and adding new services to help simplify your life and building a strong, high-performance financial services organization. Community State Bank in Bowling Green and Troy, your community bank since 1887, member FDIC. At Gambino's Eatery in Louisiana, we're serving up mouth-watering pizzas that'll take your taste buds on a flavor journey. Indulge in our irresistible pizza creations and order now for Sunday pickup through Super Bowl Sunday. Gambino's Eatery. Enjoy a pizza experience like no other. If it's not on the menu, we don't talk about it. Pepsi Cola Bottling Company is a proud sponsor of the local schools and their athletes. When it's time to quench that thirst, reach for one of the many Pepsi products found in the local concession stands, including Pepsi, Mountain Dew, Sundrop, or the all-new Starry Lemon Lime. If you are wanting something other than soda, enjoy Bubbler, Clarbrun Water, Lipton Teas, Gatorade, and more. Pepsi Cola Bottling Company in New Haven and Bowling Green wishes all the area athletes a great season. When it's time for some heavy-duty work at your place, there's only one name to remember, Rick Mailer. Rick Mailer and Socks, back on excavating of silage, offers up existing pumping and grease trap cleanouts. Just give a call for all types of backhoe work with eye lift and track hole. They install water or sewer lines, septic tanks, and drain tile. They can build lakes, do dump truck work, jackhammering, bobcat work, and more. Fully insured. Count on quality workmanship from McMailer and Son, backhoe and excavating in Sign Lakes. Call 573-384-5978. Follow area high school sports on KJFM Radio. Brought to you by Browns Processing and Smokehouse Meats, Young Enterprises, and Family Drug. The Eagle 102 starting lineups on KJFM are sponsored by Community State Bank of Missouri in Bowling Green and Troy. We want to remind you not to run away after this game's over with as we'll have the KJFM Kaleo Day at MVP Award along with the All-Tournament team, and they also award a Sportsmanship Award. I think they also have a Free Throw Award here at Bowling Green unless they've changed that. And, uh, and then they'll also have the cheerleading award as well. So a number of uh, awards. And then we hope to have the winning coach join us as well for his thoughts on the game and the tournament uh, at the conclusion of this game. So don't run off. Uh, Van Farr 13-3 on the season. Clopton is 14-4. and four. They have not met this year. And so they are. there are a ton of big-time conference games coming up. Actually, quickly here in the first part of February with Montgomery County, Clopton, Van Farr all in the mix for a conference championship. So be sure and tune in to the morning show. We'll tell you where we're going to be to cover those games as well. Of course, things heating up over in Illinois as Grigsville Perry's playing uh, Beardstown tonight at 6 o'clock. We will not carry that game, but they will play in the championship game of the Triopia Tournament tonight. Again, that is at 6 o'clock, so get up off your duff and go watch a basketball game, huh? If you're coming here, you might want to hurry. It's almost a packed house here for this championship game. A lot of people have stuck around from the third-place game. Student sections have filled in, and uh, we're about ready to go. I'm going to hold on before the starting laps and see if they're going to do the national anthem before this game. I don't believe that they, did they do it before your all's game? They did uh, the anthem before the third place game. So they I, did. I, okay, I so, we're, so we, we're good. So we won't do that. Let's go with the starting lineups then. Popton will be the visitors on the scoreboard as they are the three seeds. Starting for them tonight, a 5'8 junior number one, Adam Lindsay, a six foot senior number three. Chase Hall, a six-foot junior, number 20, Josh Harvey, a 6'2", sen- or 6'4", senior, I should say, number 42, Cash Evans, and a 6'3", junior, number 44, Kane Evans. So it'll be Kane, Cash, Harvey, Hall, and Lindsey for head coach Tony Francis and his Clopton Hawks. For the Van Farinias, they are the number one seed in the tournament. 
starting for them, a six-foot junior wearing number zero is Carson Huff, a 5'10 senior, number 20, Gage Gibson, a 5'10 senior, number 24, Nikos Conaway, a 6'2 sophomore, number 25, Pacey Redding, and a 6'3 senior, number 35, Carter Jennings. Jennings, Redding, Conaway, Gibson, and Huff for Coach Pat Conaway and his Van Far Indians. Van Far in their home whites. Black numbers, gold trim, popped it in their road grays with black numbers and red trim. It'll be Jennings against Cash Evans. Ronnie Richardson, Brent Rich, and Greg Ellis are your officials, and we're underway in the championship game as Coppin controls the opening tip. Coppin moving from our left to our right on your radio dial if you're listening to us on 102.1 or 97.5, and we'll go into that weave offense that we see a lot of from the Hawks. Hall has it on the left wing, gets it to Kane in the paint. He tries to kick it out to Cash. Cash inside the arc, shoots it from 16. It's rattles home. Cash had a big game in the semis, and he spots clopped into the first lead of the game at two to nothing. Van Farr, they'll run motion offense as well, and then Jennings will shoot the three right out of the gate, and he drains it from the left end. The big man steps outside, and it's a three two lead for Van Farr. Little man. Pressure from the Indians. Gibson on Hall. Gets it in the far corner to Lindsay, and they've got a whistle and a foul. That will be on Conway, I believe. Number 24, Nikos Conway picks up the first personal foul of the evening. Clopton averages 59 points a game. They give up 45. Van Farr scores 64 a game and gives up 47. Cash gets it on the block to Kane. Left block. He'll drop step to the glass. Up. And good. So Team Evans has four. Van Far three. We played a minute and five seconds. Gibson right in front of the Clopton Dance. Gets it back to Huff. Right wing out of Jones. He'll fire another three. Ditto. Same thing as before as Carter Jennings. High arcing three pointers. And it's six to three or six to four is what it should be they put the scores backwards on the scoreboard into the paint goes hall and he has it swatted away loose picked up by conaway and he'll be fouled by lindsey you saw what i talked about there rodney they were going to go with it as soon as van far gets it it's pedal to the metal to the offensive end of the floor they were looking to push the pace they pushed the pace had the two threes right off the bat they get an open shot it looks like they're going to shoot it might want to guard Jennings from that spot. He gets it to Conway in the short corner, right side of the paint, fakes the handoff, had the key to Huff. Huff penetrates to the elbow, spins in the paint, he's in the double team, back to Jennings, head of the key three, off the mark that time, doesn't hit anything. So after two switches, all he drew was backboard with that one. And barely got that. That's 6-4 still. Van Fart. Kane goes to the paint, his shot up off the glass, cash on the other side, his put back on, go do it again, and scores. Pass Evans on the offensive glass, and we're tied at six. Back into the front court come the Indians. Redding with his first touch of the game to Huff. Have the key. He'll let the three ball go. Back iron, no good. Long rebound out to Evans. He'll hand it off to Hall, and they'll walk it up the floor. They do not want to get in a running game, I don't believe, in Van Fleet. They will take the break if they've got it, but they're just not going to force the pace that way. Harvey dribbles through the short corner left side, back to Hall. Hall on a pick and roll to Evans, to the left elbow, back to Harvey. Head the key to Hall, right wing now to Lindsay. In the corner to Evans. Payne's going to drive right baseline, gets it in the far corner to Hall. His three balls on the way, hits an air ball. Jennings with the rebound, and that's the band far ahead. Gibson wide open and didn't see him on the break. Huff into the front court now. We've played three minutes. We're tied at six. Jennings left wing to Huff. Huff moved in from Wellsville this year, so he's been quite a nice addition. Then he's going to fire another three off the end. No good. Cash with the rebound for the Hawks. The both teams have gone cold the last couple of trips. Harvey into the front court now. Gets it to Evans on the block. That's Kane. He'll drop step to the glass up and good. So Kane Evans, he was a focus for Coach Francis. They wanted to get him going. He didn't have a normal evening on him. Thursday night for them, and so they're going to need his scoring tonight to win this championship, and Gibson gets away with a carry, but gets it to Conaway in the near corner. Now in the high post to Jennings, left elbow. Not beyond the arc to Conaway. Conaway will penetrate. The little runner from the left wing is good. 
it goes kind of way with his first bucket of the game. He's had a tough shooting week from three, has Conaway. Averages 18 a game. Redding averages 15 for the Indians. And back come the Hawks. On the right wing, Harvey down to 350 to play. They get it inside to Cass, but it's deflected out of bounds by Jennings. be interesting to see. I've been noticing on the uh, the – the Clopton or the Van Far offensive set. Redding has a, ma- a mismatch. I believe it's Hall that's that's guarding him, and uh, he definitely has some size. So I'll be curious to see if they they look to to uh, to exploit that. Couple subs in the game. Jordan Genuine in for Clopton. In for Van Far is uh, Gavin Gaston along with Evan Utterback. On the inbounds play, Louisiana or Louisiana Bowling Green loses it. Clopton loses hand. I'll get it right. I've been here all week. I've got them all mixed up. <laughs> Clopton loses the ball as it's swatted out of bounds by Redding, and they'll have it back at the end of the bench. It's 3.42 to play in a quick moving first quarter. Just one team foul apiece. Been a clean game. Kane with it outside the arc, guarded by Gasson. Pulls up, hands it to Hall on the left wing. Hall f- finds Harvey. He'll penetrate, and he's called for the offensive foul. Yeah, I got the elbow out, Drove. Into the chest of the defender and extended the arm, and once he did that, they're going to call that almost every time. We're tied at eight, and Van Far has it after the offensive foul call on Josh Harvey. Conaway right wing now to Gibson. Gibson holds it, gives it to Conaway ahead of the key. Nikos on the dribble. He'll pull up the shoot three. That's going to be an air ball, and Bowling will just let it bounce out of bounds. That might have been good from just outside the free throw line because that was about three or four feet short. It was. <laughs> Both teams pressuring on defense, pressuring the guards, and so they're going to have to adapt to that in a hurry. Hall into the front court now, dogged by Gibson over to the left wing to Genoine. Genoine had a nice game in the semi. To Kane at the head of Key. He'll penetrate through the short corner, back to Hall, three-point right wing, no good. Rebounds loose, and that's going to be a foul on the Hawks. I think it'll be Genoine. One of the one of the Evans was underneath there, but they did get Genoine. His first, team's third now for the Hawks. Found away, Mosey's into the front court now as the pace slows down and has it stolen away on pass to Redding, and Redding trips up. Harvey, and they're going to call an intentional foul. He was going to have a breakaway, and I don't think he meant to tie up his legs. They got their feet tangled up, and... Yeah, Harvey, I didn't see that. Harvey was going to have a layup because Redding had fallen to the floor, but they call an intentional foul. It's a loose uh, interpretation of the rule for sure. And Josh Harvey will go to the line, and he'll get two shots. He makes the first. He'll get a second, and then the Hawks will get the ball. Second one's up, and here as well. Harvey with an interesting free throw strike. I don't know if you're watching. Doesn't bounce it. Grabs it and shoots it. He makes them both, so Clopton leads by two at 10-8, and they get the ball back at the 28-foot extended right below us here. In the Evans with 240 to play in the first. That's Kane having the key to Hall. Hall gets the cast. He's got his man pin. Ball fake up and under. It won't go. Maybe partially blocked. Genuine with the rebound. Picks it out to Harvey. Goes to the short corner left wing. Now to Har- Evans. Evans drives into paint. Goes up in the air, and that's a trap. Got the turnover. That's the first turnover of the game by either team. So a good start in terms of taking care of the basketball for both clubs. Down to 220 to play in the first. Hawks lead 10-8. Redding from the head of the key now gets it to Conaway right wing. Conaway looks for the other back in the high post. Still has it on the deal. Now they'll look for Redding, have the key. He ball fakes, penetrates in. Up and under shot from 15 is no good. Get a line high for rebound for the Hawks. Nice rebound. Two minutes to play in the, in the quarter. Evans can't. The head of the key right wing to Hall now. Do a man-to-man defense by the Indians. Nice drop step to the right side that time by Kane. Uses the right hand and scores off the glass. And it's a... Four-point lead, biggest of the game by either club, up 12-8. to eight. Head of the Keith, Gaston with the three. It's short, uh, and a rebound off to the Hawks. 
Into the front court to Harvey. He'll slow down and wait for some help. Cash now has a few left wing to Hall. Hall finds Kane in the short corner left side. Kane penetrates to the block, goes up, and they're going to call a travel. Shuffled his feet, trying to get position. Was a, received that pass a little bit too far from the basket to do what he wanted to do and tried to get to the left block and uh, shuffled his feet for the turnover. Carson Huff back in for Van Farr. Gets, Gaston takes a seat. Down to 110 to play. And neither team in a hurry all of a sudden. Gibson on the dribble. Gets it back to Conway between the circles. Near corner to Redding. He'll let the three ball fly, and he's got it. Casey Redding with the three. He had 27 in that semifinal. He's got on track now. And that's a 12-11 lead, however, still for the Hawks. Under a minute to play. See if they want to play for one. They rarely do. They'll get it into Cash. Cash puts it on the floor in the paint. He goes up. His shot's off the mark. Redding with the rebound. 30 seconds to play in the, in the quarter. Huff into the front court now. Gets it back to Redding. He's open from three. Head of the key. That one's off the mark. No good. Rebounds loose. Conway will pick it up. He'll go up and under, and his shot's no good, but he was clobbered as he got rid of the basketball, and we'll have our first free throws for the Van Far Indians as Nico's Conaway will go to the charity stripe for two shots. Cash Evans with the foul, his first. Conaway shoots it with the left hand, and he drains the first. 70% from the line for Conaway for the season. And Casey Christian will come in for his first minutes of the night. Gibson will take a seat and get a little extra rest during the quarter break. 24 ticks to play. Daston will return as well, and they'll get Redding out as well. With all that, Conway waits at the charity stripe. He's ready to fire now, and it's good as well. Back to a one-point lead for Van Farr in a well-played first quarter. Down to 18 seconds. Hall looks like Van Farr may try and trap to Lindsay in the far corner. Back to Hall for three. Left wing. Back iron. No good. Conaway gets it ahead to Gasson. He's got eight, seven. Layup up and good. Gavin Gasson for the layup. And it's 15-12. Hall from half court at the horn off the rim and no good. And that'll do it for the first quarter. And it was a good one. But the Van Farr Indians. Lead top from 15 to 12 as we head for the second on KJFM WBBA Sports. All the great tournament coverage brought to you by People's Bank and Trust, Mike Henry Excavating, and Sun Window Company. Lynn's Heritage House isn't your average senior living facility. At Lynn's, residents have an abundance of social and recreational activities, including trips to the Twin Pike Family YMCA, numerous craft projects, and even the occasional day trip around Pike County. As a resident, you can enjoy the same independent lifestyle you've always enjoyed, but with the peace of mind knowing that help is available when needed. For more information, visit Lynn's Heritage House, 800 Kelly Lane in Louisiana, or online at lensheritage.com. Ackles Farm Market has locally produced beef, pork, and honey. Stop in for your farm fresh cut ribeye, New York strip, sirloin steaks, fillets, stew meat, ribs, ground beef, snack sticks, and all beef hot dogs. While there, stock up on homegrown fruits and vegetables as well. Open every day, 9 to 7. Ackles Farm Market, just off Highway 54 between Louisiana and Pittsfield. High school sports on your area sports leader, Eagle 102, brought to you by Bowling Green Tractor, Vicki Cadwalder, Real Estate, and Ingram Plumbing. As we start the second, Van Farr has the lead and the ball. They lead it 15-12. Rodney, a really good first quarter. Yeah, it really was. Both teams had a pair of foul shots. They made them, they made them both. Van Farr gets it inside on their possession to Redding, but Cash with the block and Clopton heads the other way. Only two turnovers I have, two for Clopton and zero for Van Farr. I agree. Cash at the head of the key, left corner to Genuine. He'll let it go for three. Off the rim, rattles around, won't drop. Conaway with the rebound, and here they go. Full speed ahead. Conaway spins out of trouble. He'll get to the glass. His layup's no good. Got banged by Evans, but no call. Clopton with the rebound. Back they come. They'll want to run with it. Genuine gets it to Hall. Hall slows things down now. It looks like Van Farr may be dropping into the zone this time. One, two, two, maybe? I think so. They'll try and trap if they get a chance. 
And this ought to free things up inside for the Evans boys. Lindsey's open from the corner from three. It's in there off the rim, I should say. Kane with the rebound. He'll put it up in the crowd and scores. Kane Evans got eight already for the Hawks. Eight of the 14. They still trail by one, 15-14. Conaway now. He's a kind of face garden pacing Redding. Now a lob to Conway. He got a fingertip on it, but couldn't tip it in. And the Hawks come away with the rebound. Hall back to Lindsay on the right wing now. The Hall in between the circles. We played a minute and a half in this second quarter. 15-14. Van Farhead. Lindsay's open for three from the corner. He's got Adam Lindsay with his first three ball of the game. And Clopton retakes the lead, 17-15. That was a pretty shot. Good rotation, nothing but the bottom of the net. It's always nicer when it hits nothing but the net, isn't it? Absolutely, and preferably the inside. Right. And Conaway, he'll match it from the head of the key. As I talked about his three-point shooting lows in this turn, he shuts me up and drains one, and we trade, trade leads once again, 18-17, Van Far. All into the front court. Bad far back to the man to man. In the high post to trash. Took now to Kane outside the arc. Left wing to Genoan. Genoan gets it to cross on the block. And the Jennings faked the charge and that cost him because Cash has had a wide open shot. Boy, it could have gone could have gone either way. I think the way we've seen the games officiated tonight, it's going to take just a little bit more contact than that. Huff on the dribble, slashes down the paint, and he's going to be picked off on the way, and he's going to be on. I think it'll be on the floor. And then call it on Kane Evans, his first. And they're actually going to say it's in the act of shooting, so Carson Huff will go to the charity stripe. He's 61% for the year, and he rattles on the first. Back into the game, Josh Harvey for the Hawks. Genoan will take a seat. And Carson Huff, the six foot junior, fires his second one, and it's good as well. Four of four for the Indians from the charity stripe so far. Two of two for the Clopton Hawks. Van Farr retakes the lead. Hall goes all the way to the glass. Nobody stopped him, but he missed a layup. And Van Farr with the rebound. Huff into the front court. Now the Jennings in the corner hands it back to Huff. Huff on the dribble, gets into the paint, and Lindsey takes the charge. I think Huff gave him a forearm so that he really hadn't got there, but he took that forearm. Huff will pick up the first foul of the night. Well, we saw that a little bit earlier, uh, went the other direction, and you, you get into the body, they'll allow a little bit of contact when that forearm extends, which it did there, the left forearm. They're going to whistle that offensive foul. Lindsey at the head of the key to Harvey on the right wing. Now to Kane. He'll drive baseline. Nothing doing. Nearly thrown away. As Conway got a finger on it, but it goes out of bounds in the far corner. And that's where the Hawks will throw it in, in a very difficult spot to throw it in, I might add. And then Hall will do the honors. No problem as the pressure's been pulled off by Van Farr. And they get it in without any problems. Harvey now between the circles. The Hall on the left wing now in the short corner to Cash, and he'll just shoot it from 15 and score it. They didn't get in his face, and it was just like a free throw from the corner, and he drained it. And the back and forth we go. Hawks up 21-20 now. Redding with it now. Had the key to Jennings. Jennings had the early hot hand with a couple of threes. He's cooled off. Huff now outside the arc. Who Jennings thinks about trying it again. He's going to be fouled by Cash. And that'll be two on Cash. And we'll see if Coach Francis wants to stick with his M.O. of you're out of the game when you get your second. Looks like that's what he's going to do. Another tough one to pick up. Kind of a kind of a cheap one. Made contact quite a ways away from the basket. So Cash will take a seat with 4.07 in the second. Van Farr with the possession. Gatson back, Gaston back in the game for Van Farr. He has the ball now. Dribbles to the head of the key. Hands off to Conway. Conway penetrates in. Jump, hop, skips. In and out, no good. And we've got a rebounding foul this time. 
I think that's going to be Kane. If that's on Kane, that's two on him. On the rebound, now the plot thickens for Coach Francis. Well, I just don't think you can play four minutes without either one of those I agree. in the game. Pacey Redden spins to the hoop. His shot won't go. Randy with the rebound for the Hawks. He gets it off to Evans. Kane, the only one in the game now. The Lindsay are checked at Hall. Back to Evans on the block. Goes to the paint up with the right hand and scores. Payton Evans with 10 in the game. And the lead grows to three at 23-20 for the Hawks. 3-20 to play in the half. Conaway directing traffic between the circles now to Gaston. Gaston on the dribble, strips it over to Gibson right in front of the top end doors. Now on the short corner to Jennings. He'll pull up from 15, no good. Long rebound, kicks out, and Gibson tracks it down for the Indians. Left side to Redding now. Redding in the near short corner to Jennings, back to Gibson. Gibson hasn't scored yet tonight. Uh, Redding open for three from the corner, and he gets another one. Pacey Redding with two threes. He's got six. Now we're tied at 23. Now a little stingy of full-court man pressure for Van Farr. Not really getting in Hall's grill, but keeping tabs on him is Gibson. Right wing now to Lindsay. Lindsay he tries to force it into Kane. Loose ball, but he gets it back. To Hall on the right wing. Down to 220 to play in the half. Genoire penetrates down the left lane. Off the of mark, no good. Kane with the rebound. He gets a defender in the air. If they're going to call a foul on the floor. Had him where he wanted him, just didn't get the ball in the air quick enough to get the shooting foul. Had him up in the air and he came down right across the top of his back and made the shot after the foul. Gatson, Gaston checks out, and Utterback comes in for Van Farr. On the inbounds play, Hall on the far side, and I now on the wing. Looking in the post, couldn't get it to anybody, and that gets to Harvey. Harvey outside the arc. Right wing now to Genoine. Genoine. On the dribble, guarded by Redding. Now to Harvey. Harvey. Left wing to Hall. As they work around against this sagging man to man defense. Mm. Evans now penetrates to the block, spins up and under, and scores. And Far hadn't had an answer for Kane Evans yet. He's got 12. Back come the Indians. Gibson right wing down to 140 to play in the half. 25-23. Hawks lead it. Gaston now between circles. Looking for Redding. They're kind of trying to face guard him. He's Lindsay trying to keep him from getting the ball. They get it to Gaston. He'll penetrate in. Loses the handle and stolen away. First turn of the game on Van Farr. Hall back quickly for the Hawks. Tracks it down. Skips it to Harvey. Right wing. Now ahead of Key to Genoine. He's open for three. Got it. Jordan Genoine, his first three ball of the game, and it's a five-point lead, the biggest of the game for the Hawks at 28-23, down to a minute five to play in the half. Gaston now gets it in the high post to Utterback. Utterback on the right elbow now to the corner to Gaston. He'll shoot the three from the wing. It's long, off the mark. Conway with the rebound, has his pocket kicked by Genoine. Now the Hawks will slow things down and walk it across the timeline. Now will they play for one? 45 seconds is a long time to burn off a clock. Hall on the dribble, left wing to Lindsay. Now into the block to Evans. Evans is on this side of the game, paint. Gets it back to Lindsay, to Hall, right wing to Genoine now. Genoine gets to Harvey, shuffle cut into the hole, doesn't take the shot. They whip it around the horn quickly to Lindsay. Lindsay penetrates in, now to Hall on the far corner. And on the dribble, hands it back to Kane. Now they may play for one, down to 22 seconds. Evans now hands it back to Harvey. Now they are going to set a play for the final play of the half. 13 seconds to go. Lindsay gets it to Genoine, to Harvey. Harvey gets it underneath to Evans, and he dribbles it off his foot out of bounds. All of that for a turnover. Had his defender on his back shoulder, but just lost the handle on the basketball before he got to the basket. Huff and Jennings return quickly for this final six seconds for Van Farr. And Clapton's going to come with a little full-court pressure. Conaway, pounded by Lindsay, gets it to the wing, shoots a three. It's an air ball, and that'll do it for the first half. And it was a good first half as well. But the Hawks come back after trailing 15-12 to 12 at the quarter, and they lead it as we go to the locker room 28-23 to 23 over the top seed Van Far Indians. You listen to the 99th Annual Bowling Green Invitation on KJFM WBBA Sports.
coverage brought to you by Bouquet Florist and Gift Shop, Pike Lincoln Technical Center, and Pogue Ford. The Eagle 102 Halftime Report is coming up. Brought to you by Cellular and Satellite Center in Bowling Green. Cellular and Satellite Center is the only stop you need to make when it comes to satellite providers. Offering direct TV and dish network along with antenna installs. Wait, there's more. They also offer several options for internet service with Viasat, HughesNet, and AT&T. Hold on, there's still more. They can also do security system installations, have TVs and stocks, mounts, and cables. Now a special message from Matthew Niemeyer himself. If you call an 800 number and they say we will be the local installer, they are wrong. Contact Matthew at Sailor and Satellite Center in Bowling Green, your local authorized dealer. This is Michael Mudd, president of Silex Banking Company. Building your forever home can be complicated, but your construction loan doesn't have to be. If you're wanting to build, come see the trusted loan staff at Silex Banking Company. We have the experience to help you through the process, a cost-effective mentality, and the dedication to give you individualized service. For all home construction loans, see Silex Banking Company, your locally owned and operated independent bank. Silex Banking Company, equal housing lender, member FDIC. Did you know you can earn money by harvesting wild plants? Hi, I'm Craig Barnes with Barnes Roots and Herbs. We're south of Eolia, and we buy wild harvested plant products like sassafras leaf, walnuts, golden seal, ginseng, and many more. For more information and a list of what we're buying, visit us on Facebook, or you can call us at 636-205-4333. Barnes Roots and Herbs, 636-205-4333. Money does grow on trees. You simply can't buy a better replacement window than one from Sun Window Company. Energy efficient windows and doors with a lifetime warranty on both the window and installation. Sun Window Company, family owned and operated since 1989, offers low factory direct prices on high quality vinyl windows. Custom designed to fit perfectly and built to last. See how much you can save. Call Sun Windows, 573-549-2080 for details and a free estimate. Sun Window Company, Highway 161 in Middletown. The most complete coverage of high school sports is on Eagle 102, and it's brought to you by Mid-America Auto and Towing, Perkins Electrical Services, and Pike County Mutual Insurance. Bringing you all the action from the Eagle 102 broadcast booth, sponsored by Family Drug in Louisiana. It's now time for the Eagle 102 Halftime Report on KJFM, sponsored by Cellular and Satellite Center in Bowling Green. Welcome back to... The 99th annual Bowling Green Invitational Tournament. And, Rodney, it uh, was a good first half of basketball in this championship game. It was. It it, uh, it flowed. You know, we talked about the break. There was four total turnovers, three for Clopton and one for Van Farr. The free throws, were everybody was perfect. Uh, Van Farr made both of their – or all four of their attempts. And Clopton only had two attempts but made them both. So, uh, very, very – smooth flowing half of basketball and that makes it very entertaining as well and uh, in a situation where the hawks are the three seed which the reason they were the three seeds because they lost to winfield in the championship game of their tournament and one of the more bizarre second halves of basketball i've ever seen but those two teams are actually interchangeable, and, of course, they came back and beat Winfield in the semifinal here tonight. So those top three teams were kind of, you know, pretty even and shake them up, and whichever one comes out, that's who's the top seed. And so we expected a close game here, and we've got it. So let's take a break, and we'll come back and give you the scoring for the first half and Rodney's thoughts on the second half right after this on KJFM WBBA Sports. Bowling Green Tournament coverage brought to you by Brown's Processing and Smokehouse Meats, Kearns Construction, and All Parts. Sailor Satellite Center is the only stop you need to make when it comes to satellite providers, offering direct TV and dish network along with antenna installs. Wait, there's more. They also offer several options for internet service with Viasat, HughesNet, and AT&T. Hold on, there's still more. They can also do security system installations, have TVs and stocks, mounts, and cables. Now a special message from Matthew Niemeyer himself. If you call an 800 number and they say we will be the local installer, they are wrong. Contact Matthew at Sailor and Satellite Center in Bowling Green, your local authorized dealer. Brown's Processing and Smokehouse Meats is your first stop when stocking your freezer. Brown's has frozen chicken, steaks, brats, and burgers ready to go. For wholesale and custom butchering, Brown's is your first call. It's where quality meets service. Brown's Processing and Smokehouse Meats. For your meat processing, smokehouse meats, and homemade sausage. Just off Highway 61 in Silex. The friendly and caring staff at Advanced Eye Care have just one goal in mind, to provide professional 
eye care for the entire family, from comprehensive eye exams to management of glaucoma and cataracts, refractive surgery to specialty contact lenses. You can count on advanced eye care to provide vision for a lifetime. Three locations to serve you, Bowling Green, Winfield, and Troy, or visit online at aecmo.com. Doctors Denise Harvey, Jessica Downs, Jackie Mudd, and staff hope to see you soon at Advanced Eye Care. When it's time to service your vehicle, Pogue Ford in Bowling Green has you covered. Right now, get the works package, which includes six quarts of oil, along with the filter, tire rotation, and a multi-point inspection, all for only $62. Maybe those brakes are starting to sound a little squeaky. Get $10 off brake pads when you replace them. Let the friendly service department ease your mind by knowing your vehicle is ready for the road. Visit today, Pogue Ford, just off Business Highway 61 or online at PogueFord.com. Come experience the Pogue difference. Area High School Sports on Eagle 102, brought to you by Rod Prentice and Brenda Crawford, State Farm Agents, Pepsi, and Ackles Farm Market. At the half of a highly contested championship game in the 99th Annual Bowling Green Basketball Invitational Tournament, I'm Rodney Dolbear, Jim Ross alongside as well, and an entertaining first half. We'll run over the scoring and then give you some thoughts before we start the third quarter of play. For Clopton, Adam Lindsay had a single three-pointer in the second quarter. He's got three. Jordan Genowine with three as well. The only two trays that Clopton made. Two free throws for Josh Harvey. He's got two. And then it was the Evans and Evans show. Eight for Cash Evans and 12 for Kane Evans. 20 of the 28 Clopton points come from those two guys. And I think the longest shot, the first one that Cash made was about 14, 15 feet. Everything else came down on the block. For Van Farr. Two free throws for Carson Huff. He's got two. Gavin Gaston has two. Nikos Conaway has seven. Six for Pacey Redding behind, beyond, uh, on the strength of two made threes. And two made threes for Carter Jennings. He has six as well. Five triples for Van Farr. Only two for Clopton. I thought that we talked about the pace. I don't think Clopton shied away from the pace. But certainly in the half-court set, you could certainly tell the difference in what their goal and their game plan was as, as we said 20 of those 28 points came from cash and kane evans yeah and, and coach francis mentioned to me before the game and i mentioned it in the pregame how kane evans is going to be a focal point for them especially early that they needed to get him going because he just didn't have a normal game in the semis and they certainly done that van far led 15 to 12 at the end of the first quarter but popped and outscored them 16 to 8 in that second quarter rodney so quite a turnaround it was, and it was, it was strange because you had some threes going in for Van Farr, but I kept looking, and the score just kind of kept inching a little bit further apart. It it felt like Van Farr didn't get outscored by that uh, by that margin, but they certainly did. They got doubled up in the second quarter. Kind of death by a thousand cuts, right? It it was, it was indeed. About two minutes before we head off into the third quarter, we'll step aside, and you're listening to KJF MWBBA Sports. Bowling Green Tournament coverage brought to you by La Crosse Lumber, Silex Banking Company, and Calumet of Missouri. Community State Bank of Missouri in Bowling Green and Troy, where the number one priority is the customer and adding new services to help simplify your life and building a strong, high-performance financial services organization. Community State Bank in Bowling Green and Troy, your community bank since 1887, member FDIC. If you're ready to start tanning but feel like you never have time, Custom Works Salon in Bowling Green has the answer for you. Chrissy and the gang now offer 24-hour tanning. For only $55 a month, you can get your glow on. Visit their Facebook page for a full list of times. Custom Works Salon, 405 South Court Street in Bowling Green. With 14 stores across Missouri and Illinois, La Crosse Lumber Company provides lumber, quality products, and service to homeowners, builders, DIYers, and more. With some of the top brand names in the business available, La Crosse Lumber has what you need for your next project. Stop into any location for a free estimate before you start your next build. La Crosse Lumber Company, the oldest, most reliable lumber and hardware company in the Midwest since 1873. Best coverage of high school sports on KJFM brought to you by Community State Bank of Missouri, County Market in Louisiana, and Bowling Green Pharmacy. The championship trophy is on the line. If you didn't join us earlier, Ellsbury won the consolation championship 49-40 over North Callaway. Winfield wins the third place trophy 60-46 over Bowling Green. And Clopton will have it to start the second half 
They will have their original starting lineup back in the game, as will Winfield. Clapton will move from our right to our left on your radio dial in this second half. And we're ready to go. Glad to have you with us, Jim Ross, Rodney Dolbear, and Maddie. Tennis down, taking pictures along with April. Paul with it between the circles as Clopton gets, Clopton gets things going and a turnover stolen by Conaway. In for the layup, up and good. Not exactly the way Clopton wants to start the second half. But a wide open layup on a nice anticipation by Conaway on the entry pass for the Hawks. Paul now across the timeline now gets it to Harvey on the left wing in the corner of the hall. Paul. To Cash. Cash will shoot it from the free throw line. Rattles around, falls out, and Huff with the rebound. He'll push the pace now in the front court. Good. Ready into the paint. Up and scores. His first two pointer to go in, and just like that, Coach Francis wants a timeout. We'll step aside as well. 28 27. Hawks still on top. He mission the bowling and invitation on KGFM WDBA Sports. Green Tournament coverage brought to you by Barnes Roots and Herbs, Bowling Green Veterinary Clinic, and Tom Bowling Ford. From the classic cheesesteak and rich crab cakes, a taste of Philly in Bowling Green is a fan favorite. A meal ready for you before or after the game, and game day jerseys are welcome. Open seven days a week. A taste of Philly. Business Highway 54 West in Bowling Green. Area High School Sports on Eagle 102. Brought to you by People's Bank and Trust, State Farm Insurance, Cindy Blaylock Agent, and Bowling Green Pharmacy. 28-27, Hawks lead it. They have the ball out of the timeout. And Coach Tony Francis didn't want like what he saw with the quick little 4-0 run by Van Farr. Had points off the turnover and then um, did another bucket just like that off the, off the Evans miss. And the lead that was five at half is now one. All left wing for the Hawks now. Headed the key to Harvey. Harvey puts it on the floor, spins out of trouble to Kane at the head of the key. Right wing now to Lindsay. They get it to Cash on the right block, and his shot is up, and the one for the foul called on Pacey Redding. Well, Redding got all ball, but he got him with the body. That he did. That'll be foul number two on Pacey. And Cash Evans will go to the line to shoot. Two shots, his first free throw shots of the game, and the first one runs out. A little over a minute into the third quarter, the first miss from the foul stripe by either team. Well, and the second one rattles home. Four Evans in the lead back to two, 29-27. Nine away across the timeline now, gets to Huff. We played a minute and a half in this third quarter. Jennings above the head of the key, now to Huff. Huff on a pick and roll. Thinks about shooting three to size. Now it gets to Conaway left wing. He'll penetrate left block. Up and no good. Redding with the rebound. Gets it back to Conaway. He'll shoot it from 10 under pressure. It won't go. Jennings on the glass. His putback's no good. Blocked by Evans, and he controls the possession. And they want the same call on that end as they got on this end, right? That's what the hollering's about. There was a little bit of a little bit of an outburst there. <laughs> Hawks get it back. Nearly have it stolen away on the entry pass again. It's Conaway snooping around all over the place. Kane gets it, goes to the block. His shot won't go. Rebound to Jennings and Van Farr. Well, the ball not going in the hole quite as much, and business picking up inside. That's usually the way it works. Conaway between the circles now to Redden. Redding on the right wing to Gibson. Down to 5.30 to play in the third. Conaway on the short corner right side. Turns, shoots it off the glass. No good. Redding with the rebound. His putbacks up and good. And just like that, we're tied at 29 all. Token man pressure by Gibson on Hall. Everybody else in the front court. Hall. Dribbles it to the wing to Harvey. Harvey lobs it into Cash, makes the catch on the right block, and puts it off the glass and scores. Great entry pass there. Had to put some touch on it to get over the outstretched arms of the defender, and he did just that. He's just a big body, and it's hard to get around him when he catches it on the block like that. Huff now with it, spins out of trouble on the wing, head of the key to Jennings. Jennings hands it off to Conway with the left hand. They'll run that little weave thing out of Gibson in the high post and out of Jennings, right, right elbow. Back to Huff. Huff drives down the lane on the right side, picks it up and scores. Ooh, tough shot there. Absolutely. 
Had the defense on him, but he got it on the window, and it dropped. We're still tied at 31. Into the front court now. Harvey right in front of the Clopton bench. Moves it back to Kane. Left wing to Lindsay. Lindsay now. Looks for help. Picks up his dribble. Now he's got to have some help. They get it to Hall as he comes and gets the ball between the circles with 4 2 in the play in the third. Harvey on the right wing, far corner now to Lindsay. Lindsay back to Harvey. High post now outside the arc to Kane Evans. Left wing to Hall. Hall back to Evans. Evans to Harvey as they've slowed things down dramatically. Now we've got a carry on Harvey. Turnover number five on Clopton. Van Far still with just one turnover in this game. That's almost crazy. Into the game comes Jordan Genowine for Lansing for the Hawks. And Conway walks across the timeline with 340 to play in the third. We're tied at 31. In, on a pick and roll, Jennings pops out. No, it's Conway that pops out. Shoots a three from the right wing. No good. Harvey with the weak side rebound. Up quickly to Hall. Hall into the front court now. Gibson waiting for him in the near corner to Evans. Evans, ball fakes. Drives to the glass. Shot blocked by Jennings. Loose on the floor. Picked up by Conway. He looks to run. Throws a deep one. And it's going to be stolen back by Hall. Hall now pushes the other way. Doesn't have the numbers. He doesn't care. He's going to the glass. Shoots a layup and scores. Little NBA move there, huh? Absolutely. <laughs> didn't have numbers. Didn't need him. Still, by the time he got to the basket, he was in the clear. And went from the free throw line to the hoop without dribbling. No less. Well, <laughs> he might have. 33-31. Hawks lead at Huff. Down the left lane this time. Puts it up the left hand. Count the bucket and the foul. Carson Huss found his way down each side of the paint. Well, he'll get a chance to put the Indians back on top with the free throw. A foul is on Kane Evans, who is third. Into the game for the first time for the Hawks. Tucker Salmons checks in. And to the free throw line, at Carson Huff. And it's short. And the rebound is swatted out of bounds by Redding. Back to the Hawks. Just about had the offensive rebound. Got his mitt on it. Harvey Couldn't will, quite control it. Harvey will come in and Payne will take a seat with his three fouls. So that will just leave Cash Evans in the game with 245 to play in the third. We're tied at 33. Hall into the front court and throws away. Stolen by Conaway. Conaway goes to the glass. Puts it up and scores. He actually slowed down a little bit, it looked like, waiting for the defense to try and get the foul. But got the layup nonetheless. And Van Far leads again. This is their biggest lead of the game at two. 35-33. Salmon now beyond the arc, right side to Harvey. Gets it into Cash, and we've got a whistle. They're going to call a foul, but it's going to be on the floor. It'll be on Udy back, who checked in during that last old ball, as did Gavin Gaston. Boy, Evans has a nice quick step. When he receives the ball, he gets to the rack in a hurry. He's got great footwork for a big man. Yes, he does. Hall to throw it inbounds, gets it into Cash. And outside the arc, he'll hand it to Solomons back to Hall. Right over in the front of the Clopton bench. To Solomons. Solomons gets it to Cash. He loses the handle back to Solomons. Solomons penetrates to the paint, pulls up from 10. No good. Long rebound out to Conaway. Conaway looks up the floor, being dogged by Harvey. Into the front court now with 150 to play in the third. Conaway spin move to the hoop, gets it underneath the other back, his layups up and good. Nice assist that time by Conaway, and it's a four point lead for the Indians at 37 33. Into the front court comes Harvey, gets to the near corner to Genowine. Genowine, penetrates the left baseline. He'll get to the glass. His left up and good. Count the bucket on the foul. It'll be a blocking foul. Genowine to the glass, and he'll get an opportunity for the old fashioned three point throw. Nice move. Nice control in the lane. Got the shot to drop with heavy contact. Other back will pick up his second. We have a couple subs in the game. Four and the free throw is no good. And Kane Evans, who just checked back in, gets the rebound on the free throw. They couldn't leave him on the bench for much longer. 
tries to lob it in. It's going to be knocked out of bounds on off of Kane Evans, or Cash Evans, I should say. 35-37-35, Van Flaw on top, down a minute 22 to play in the quarter. Payne flirted with that fourth foul as he was battling for that loose ball. It was, uh, he got above the defender, but uh, didn't pick up the foul, but it it wouldn't have surprised me if they'd whistled him for his fourth. Conaway dribbles down the lane, pulls up from 10, no good. Redding on the offensive glass, puts it up with the left hand and scores. Casey Redding with 12 now, and it's 39-35, Van Farr. Matching their biggest lead in the game. Ball into the front court now, dribbles it to the right wing. With Gibson all over him. Decide to clean. He'll penetrate to the free throw line and loses the handle, but he's going to be fouled by Graston, I believe. Second. Team's fourth, but with only 44 ticks to go in the quarter. We may not get to that five foul opportunity. Hall will throw it in for the Hawks' right side of the paint. Outside to Evans. Evans. Tries to leave it for Harvey, but he is going the other direction. So turnover number seven gives the ball back to Van Farr with their four-point lead and 40 seconds to play in the third. A little sloppier with the ball here in the third quarter than they were the first half. Only had three turnovers in the first half. Got them going a little faster than they really want to go, I think, in the half-court offense. Van Farr will hold for the final shot. Conway has it tucked under his arm out at the 28-foot mark. Now he'll dribble a little bit with 20 seconds. Plopped it in. It looks like a 2-3 zone. Down to 14. Redding on the left wing now. The other back right wing to Gibson. He'll shoot the three. Front iron no good. Ball's tipped out by the Hawks. Hall will track it down on the far side. Gets it to Kane from half court with the buzzer, and that'll do it. It's off the window, but no good. And that'll do it for the third quarter of action. The Van Far Indians have retaken the lead over the Clopton Hawks. They lead it 39-35. And fourth quarter's next on KJFM WBBA Sports. Tournament coverage brought to you by Custom Works Salon and Tanning, Hayden's Motorsports Center, and Lynn's Heritage House. Don't have time to stop by the bank? That's not a problem if you're a customer of People's Bank and Trust. With our mobile and online banking service, you can now bank from anywhere. Deposit checks, pay bills, transfer funds between accounts, check the latest activity on your account, and view images of your checks, all from the convenience of your desktop and smartphone. So start banking on your schedule and download the People's Bank and Trust app today. People's Bank and Trust, hometown banking the way it should be. Member FDIC. At Gambino's Eatery in Louisiana, we're serving up mouth-watering pizzas that'll take your taste buds on a flavor journey. Indulge in our irresistible pizza creations. And order now for Sunday pickup through Super Bowl Sunday. Gambino's Eatery. Enjoy a pizza experience like no other. If it's not on the menu, we don't talk about it. Follow area high school sports throughout the season on Eagle 102. Brought to you by Eolia Landscape Supply, Royal Banks, and a taste of Philly. 39-35, 39-35, Van Farr is retaking the lead with a 16-7 scoring advantage in that third quarter. And they'll have it to start the fourth, moving from our left to our right. They had their original starters back in the game, as do the Hawks, short of Lindsey. Genoine in for Lindsey for Clapton. In the 2-3 zone are the Hawks. Gibson backs out and gets it in the far corner to Jennings. And they'll work it around the horn. They'll have... Redding running around in the high post. Maybe he and Jennings play a little high-low game. And nearly stolen by Genoa as he deflected the entry pass over to Gibson. Off of Brett Redding showing those great hands. Went right through him. Good anticipation. Just a split second shy of being able to take off down court with the turnover. After the inbounds, Gibson on the right wing. Now to Huff. Back to Gibson on the right wing. He'll dribble out to the head of the key and reset the offense. Conaway now, back to Gibson, left wing to Huff. Far corner now to Jennings. Jennings back to Gibson. Gibson to Conaway between the circles. He'll shoot it from 23, in and out, no good. Rebound to Jennings. Skip pass over to Gibson. He'll go up and score it. Had Evans on and came. He couldn't pick up that fourth foul, so Gibson picks up his first points of the game. And it's a 41-35 lead, six being the biggest lead of the game for either team. Hawks need a bucket. 
Evans now, that's Kane, drops it to Cash on the right block. He'll go up in the crowd, and that thing goes all the way over the backboard. And out of bounds. Looks like he might have, somebody might have got a hand on it, but we're going to have a whistle and a timeout on the floor. Poppins timeout, 41-35. Van Far Legion, 6.43 to play in the ballgame. This is KJFM, WBBA Sports. Brought to you by Center Locker Service, Community State Bank of Missouri, and Meyer Implement Company. Lynn's Heritage House isn't your average senior living facility. At Lynn's, residents have an abundance of social and recreational activities, including trips to the Twin Pike Family YMCA, numerous craft projects, and even the occasional day trip around Pike County. As a resident, you can enjoy the same independent lifestyle you've always enjoyed, but with the peace of mind knowing that help is available when needed. For more information, visit Lynn's Heritage House, 800 Kelly Lane in Louisiana, or online at lensheritage.com. The area's best coverage of high school sports on Eagle 102, brought to you by High County Health Department, People Savings Bank, and All Parts. Well, Rodney and Van Fart flexed their muscles a little bit in that third quarter, and now they lead by six. Well, they outscored uh, uh, Clopton 16 to 7 in that third quarter, as you mentioned, and that was just a a tick better than uh, Van than Clopton had done to Van Far in the second quarter, so um, that puts their score 41-35, and the momentum has kind of swung in their direction too. It has. Uh, you know, I look at the scoring in the third quarter. It was you know the Evans brothers only had three points. They had 20 in the first two quarters. Van Far has it out of the Clopton timeout. Gibson on the right wing. We've got 6.30 to play in the ballgame to Jennings. Jennings hit a couple threes early, and he hasn't been heard from since. Had a key to Huff. He'll let the three ball fly. It's money. Carson Huff with his first three-pointer of the game. He's got nine, and the lead grows to eight or nine, if I could do some math. Back comes Clopton. Kane in the far corner. Gets it to the paint and scores. Nice spin move by Kane Evans that time from the right side. On the glass and scoring, it's 44-37. Six minutes to play. As Huff took a knee as a guy went by in his calf, he's shaking it off on the dribble, no less. Now he pulls up on the wing, hits Redden going back door. His shot's no good, but he's fouled from behind. They're going to have choices, will it be Harvey or Hall. See who they'll call it on. Redding will go to the line for the first time tonight, and he'll get two shots. Foul is on Harvey, his second. And Redding during the first. 65% from the line for Redding for the season. <coughs> he will get a second. Where's number 25? And just a sophomore has got a solid future ahead of him. Second feet, though, guilt as well. The timeout on the floor. Van Farr is going to take it. We'll step aside. 46-37. Van Farr leads it. You're listening to Bowling Green Invitation on KJFM WBBA Sports. Tournament coverage brought to you by Bowling Chevrolet. Get spot a shot in Louisiana and DG Firearms. Geared Up, just off the square in Pittsfield, is your first stop for screen printing and embroidery. The folks at Geared Up take pride in making their communities and schools look great while offering the best prices around. If you're looking to expand your wardrobe, or maybe a gift is on the list, stop by their store and check out numerous items in stock. When you're looking for custom apparel and awards for your business, organization, or team, stop by Geared Up, 211 South Madison in Pittsfield. Area high school sports on Eagle 102, brought to you by Rick Rodhouse, Country Financial Agent, Noah Builders, and Central State Bank of Illinois. Forty-six thirty-seven. Our score on top. They have just kind of flexed their proverbial muscles, if you will. They've been able to slow down Clopton in this second half. Clopton only scoring uh, what nine points in the entire second half so far, and we've got five forty-eight to play in the ball game. Hawks have it out of the timeout. Hall into the front court. He's had Gibson all over him all night, and he's held him to two points. Kane ahead of the key now, left wing to Hall. Still in a man to man defense this time for the Indians. Harvey to the right side now, ahead of the key to Hall. Left wing to Kane. Kane 
Penetrates on, has Gaston on him. The hall right side. He'll penetrate and runner up off the iron. No good. Rebounds loose and still loose. And Gaston will come away with a good hustle by him and toughness as well. He'll take the ball on the dribble. Gets it to Jennings. He decides to back it out and slow things down to Conway. Conway penetrates in. And he'll go up the crowd. Oh, man, a behind the head. Reverse lap. Count the bucket and a foul. What a sucker shot that was. Absolutely. Nico's Conaway going from the right side to the left, went up with the right hand and just flipped it behind his head and spun it off the glass and scored, and he'll get a three-point opportunity with the foul. And he drains that as well, and now Van Far all of a sudden up by 12. Foul was on Cash Evans, his third, and we've got a whistle and a timeout on the floor. 49-37, Van Far on top, 4.56 to play in the game. You're listening to Boring and Takes on KJFM, WBBA Sports. Tournament coverage brought to you by Mick Mailer and Sons Backhoe and Excavating, Advanced Eye Care, and Wood Smoked Meats. At Pike County Memorial Hospital, we know how important athletics are for your kids. But with an active lifestyle of sports comes health risks and safety hazards. As a certified athletic trainer at PCMH, I work closely with our primary care physicians, orthopedic doctors, and physical therapists. We can make a difference between safe play and dangerous injuries for your athletes. Working with Bowling Green, Clopton, and the Louisiana schools, our goal is to provide the best possible outcome for your athletes. I'm Eric Schaefer, certified athletic trainer at Pike County Memorial Hospital. I'm at work while your athletes are at play. Area High School Sports on Eagle 102. Brought to you by Cellular and Satellite Center, Pike County Memorial Hospital, and Community Station. Another timeout, Clopton with it, cash out beyond the arc. Skip pass over to Genwine, who checked in during that timeout. Now to Kane. Kane from the left wing, holds above his head, gets it to Cash, mid-block area. He'll spin to the hoop, goes up in the crowd, and we'll have a whistle on the fan. Redding's looking kind of guilty there. Is that who they called it on? Oh, they might have called it on other back. Well, that's not possible because he's not in the game. They called it on Jennings, actually. 35, I thought I saw a three there. So Cash Evans to the line, and he'll drain the first. He, just like Harvey, does not dribble the basketball. Grabs it and fires. One for two from the line as he splits the pair, and the Hawks trail by 11, 49, 38, down to 430 to play in the game. Conaway into the front court. They don't stop him. He goes to the glass, score the bucket, and the foul. Another chance for the old-fashioned three-point play is Nikos Conaway. One of the cardinal rules, Rodney, is stop the basketball, and Coppin hasn't done it the last two times, Dan. They have not. It's still been contested in traffic amongst taller players, and uh, Conaway has converted uh, solidly both times and could get six points out of it if he converts the foul shot here. Fouls on Genomwine, his second, and the free throw rattles home. So all of a sudden, Conaway was 17 in the game. And it's a 52-38 lead, 14 being the biggest lead of the game for the Indians. Hall gets into the paint and travels. Another turnover on Plopton. And the most amazing start of the game is we'll get to that after the timeout. As Coach Francis wants to talk about it again, 52-38, Van Farr. You listen to Morgan and Emma on KGFM WDBA Sports. Tournament coverage brought to you by People's Bank and Trust, Mike Henry Excavating, and Sun Window Company. Think about all that's important to you, your family, your possessions, and your future. Pick up the phone and call Rick Rodhouse from Country Financial. He, along with his staff, will assist you with insurance coverage to protect what matters most in addition to preparing you for the future. Best of all, Rick will take the time to get to know you and find solutions for your budget. For coverage you need at a price you can afford, contact Rick Rodhouse Insurance Agency in Pleasant Hill to chat about your insurance needs today. Follow area high school sports on KJFM Radio. Brought to you by Browns Processing and Smokehouse Meats, Young Enterprises, and Family Drug. 52-38, the amazing stat I was about to talk about before we went to break is Van Farr has only two turnovers in this game. And we're down into the final four minutes of the game. That is something in high school basketball you don't see. Well, you don't see that really at almost any level of basketball. <laughs> That's true. That's true. 
So out of the timeout, it looks like Clopton's going to come out in a 2-2-1 press. They got a lot, a lot of traction or a lot of uh, turf to make up or court, if you will, to make up in a short period of time with four minutes to play in the game. Conaway throws over the top of the press to Gibson, makes the catch, and he pulls it out. There's senior leadership for you. Gibson now decides not to fire the three-pointer. Clock is Van Farr's friend right now, leading by 14, and Clopton will have to come out of that zone and play man. After the 2 2 1 press, and now Gaston tries to throw it over the top, but it's deflected, and it's going to be a backcourt violation as Gibson was the last to touch in the front court, first to touch in the backcourt. And the turnover, number three, the old announcer jinx, right? We talk about turnovers, and they do it, turn it over immediately on the next possession. Obviously, Van Farr wanted to run some clock, and Gibson passed up the open three, even had a smile on his face when he pulled it back, and he knew. He knew that he wanted to shoot it, but he wanted to pull it out and run some clock. Huff checks back into the game. He's shaking off. He got that knee in the calf, and he's been on the bench ever since, but he looks no worse for the wear right now. Hawks with a haul in the corner. Gets it off to Kane. Kane dribbles right baseline, skips it to Harvey. Left wing three. Front iron no good. Long rebound into the corner. Goes all the way out of bounds. Back to Van Farr. Well, clock is going to have to hit some from deep if they're going to catch up in this ballgame. Yeah, time is starting to become an issue for sure. 324 left in the fourth. The lead is 14 for Van Farrell. They've got some guys that can hit it, and Hall's really kind of a streak shooter if they get him going, but Gibson has just shut him down if we got a foul in the backcourt. And that's just the fourth team foul. And I'm having nightmares of we're going to see what happened in the Clopton tournament. As they get it inbounds to Conaway. Foul was on Harvey, his third. In the front court, he drives down the paint again, gets his own rebound after the miss, and scores. He's taken over this fourth quarter as Nico's Conaway. Now that's a 16 point lead, 54 38. Kane Evans drives down the paint, his layup's up and good. So the Hawks answered that they've got a ways to go with three minutes to play in the ballgame. Into the front court to Gibson. Gibson is going to be tied up by Hall. Nope, they're going to call a foul on Hall. They say he had him by the arm. And that will send Van Farr to the free throw line. And Gage Gibson with his first trip, two shots, and he's a 53% free throw shooter for the season. 54-40. Indians have come back from a five-point deficit at half. Whereas Gibson drains the first. And really, in this second half, they've owned it. 16-7, scoring advantage in the third, and they've held Klopp into five points here in this fourth quarter with 2.52 to play as Gibson drains them both and makes the challenge even greater. They had a 16-point lead, which is the biggest of the game. Van Farr, 6 of 6 from the stripe in the fourth. All free for the three in the corner off the side of the backboard. Conaway with the rebound. He's got numbers. Three on one, gives it to Gibson. His layup's up and good. That's the way you run the break. And it's an 18-point lead. And timeout on the floor. 58-40, the Van Farr Indians. You're listening to Boy Green Invitation on KGFM WBBA Sports. Bowling Green Tournament coverage brought to you by Bouquet Florist and Gift Shop, Pike Lincoln Technical Center, and Pogue Ford. Since 1939, Meyer Implement Company has been serving the local agricultural and business communities with quality sales and service. Meyer Implement has also taken great pride in supporting those communities and would like to wish the area sports teams the best of luck throughout their seasons. Be sure to stop by and visit the people who truly appreciate your business. Meyer Implement Company, Bowling Green. High school sports on your area sports leader, Eagle 102. Brought to you by Bowling Green Tractor, Vicki Cadwalder, Real Estate, and Ingram Plumbing. Well, it's been all bad far in the second half. They lead it by 18. And then popped them with the ball out of timeout. Harvey drives down the paint. His run is up and good. Give him four for the game, and it's 58-42. Into the front court comes Conaway. He's one of the top guards in the area, and he's certainly shown it here in this championship game. Getting to the hoop, and actually has made a three in the game as we've got a whistle and a foul. 
Conaway with 12 of his 29 or of his night of his 19 points in the second half. Third foul on Harvey, or check that fourth foul on Harvey, and Huff will go to the line for two shots. Battles in and out. Still got a little limp, does Huff. It was an inadvertent collision. He got kneed in his right calf, and he's having a hard time shaking that off as he misses both free throws. But Jennings all over the glass. Two Redding and layups up and gold. Great inside passing by the Van Far Indians, and they lead by 18. Hall goes to the glass. His shot swatted away by Jennings, and a whistle and a foul. I think they'll call it on Jennings. Just his second. Well, I saw a lot of space, at least between the bodies. I don't know where he got him, I guess, on the arm. On the fingertips, maybe. And Hall will go to the line to shoot two. Hall has been held to two points. Gage Gibson, what a defensive effort by him. First one's on its way and good. Good free throw shooter. Gaston and Utterback will return. Jennings and Huff will take a seat for Van Fall. 154 to play in the game. It's a 17 point lead for the Van Far Indians. Second free throw is good as well by Hall, and Coach Francis is going to empty the bench. Let some of the young guys in. Adam Matheny in as Nick Myers. Tucker Salmon's in as well. Larson Hall and James Matheny will get some time in this 99th annual Bowling Green Invitational Tournament. Banfar only dresses, uh, what, 11 guys, I see, and, and math checks out. Five of them have already, four of them on the bench have already played in this game, if not five. I think only dressing 10 tonight. I think there's, five right. on the, there's five on the bench. I think you're right, and three of them are going to come up and get in this game. They may call a timeout just to get them in here shortly. 60 to 44 is Van Fars just working it around the horn. Gas and dribbles out, gets it to Gibson. He's going to be a substitution timeout. They're just going to bring in Caleb Basket, Gibson Condi, and that. Jason Christian will come into the game. Redding, Gibson, and uh, Conaway will take a seat along with Jennings. And so we are in cleanup time here in the fourth quarter of this championship game, which was a doozy first half, and then it's been all Van Farr in the second half as Van Farr continues to run their motion offense and work it around the horn. Condi now hands it off to Christian. Christian to Gaston. In the far corner to Basket. In the short corner now on the block is Christian. He'll go up. His shot's short, no good. Hall with the rebound for the Hawks. Into the front court comes Matheny for Popton. That's Adam Matheny. In the corner to Salmon. Salmon dribbles to the right elbow. Turn around, jump is good. Tucker Salmon gets in the scorebook with a nice jump shot. Gasson will drive to the glass and score. Nobody stopped the ball again. That's been the problem for the Hawks in this second half, and it's 62-46. Down to eight ticks to play. Salmons dribbles to the paint. Turn around jumper from eight is no good. Rebound put back is up and no good for the Hawks, and that'll do it for the ball game. It was a good one, but it was all that far in the second half. As they will win the 99th annual the Bowling Green Invitational Tournament with a 62-46 win over the Clopton Hawks. The post game show is next on KJFM WBBA Sports. Bowling Green Tournament coverage brought to you by Browns Processing and Smokehouse Meats, Kearns Construction, and All Parts. The Eagle 102 post game show is coming up. Greatness doesn't happen overnight. It takes time. Focus and dedication. At Shelter Insurance, we understand that because we've put in the hard work and dedication for decades. That commitment has paid off with award-winning customer service for your auto, home, and life insurance. 
Ask me, Ashley Jenkins, about Shelter's auto, home, and life options. Welcome to Vast National Bank. How can I help you? Hey, I'm here to talk to someone about a loan. Oh, I'll grab you the L97B. We call it the Just Talking Form. Mm, what about actually applying for a loan? Oh my, let me pop in the toner cartridge. Hey Bill, you want to pass me the big stapler? Yeah, I'm just going to go to People's Savings Bank. Skip the mega banks. When you need a loan, visit People's Savings Bank. The people you know and trust. Member FDIC, Equal Housing Lender. You simply can't buy a better replacement window than one from Sun Window Company. Energy efficient windows and doors with a lifetime warranty on both the window and installation. Sun Window Company, family owned and operated since 1989, offers low factory direct prices on high quality vinyl windows. Custom designed to fit perfectly and built to last. See how much you can save. Call Sun Windows, 573-549-2080 for details and a free estimate. Sun Window Company, Highway 161 in Middletown. If you're ready to start tanning but feel like you never have time, Custom Works Salon in Bowling Green has the answer for you. Chrissy and the gang now offer 24-hour tanning. For only $55 a month, you can get your glow on. Visit their Facebook page for a full list of times. Custom Works Salon, 405 South Court Street in Bowling Green. The most complete coverage of high school sports is on Eagle 102, and it's brought to you by Mid-America Auto and Towing, Perkins Electrical Services, and Pike County Mutual Insurance. Hear all the action from the Eagle 102 broadcast booth, sponsored by Family Drug in Louisiana. Time now for the Eagle 102 postgame show on KJFM. Well, it's the Van Far Indians winning the 99th annual Bowling Green Invitational Tournament, a 62-46 win over the Plopton Hawks. Banfar led 15-12 in the first quarter. Plopton now scored in 16-8 in the second quarter, led 28-23, but then it was all Banfar. 16-7 scoring advantage in the third, a 13-11 scoring advantage in the fourth, and they win it 42-36. They're announcing the all-tournament team, which is Jace Eskew from Bowling Green, uh, Preach from Winfield, Cass Evans from Clopton, uh, Nikos Conaway of Van Far, and then the Paleo Dade KGFM MVP award goes to Pacey Redding of Van Far, and the Clopton cheerleaders won the cheerleading award. And I, if they gave any other awards away, I didn't hear it because we had come back on air. So, Rodney, it was a uh, Wonderful uh, basketball game. A little bit shocking after the first half. Clopton leading by five. How Van Farr was able to turn it around. Van Farr just uh, put it on them in the second half of play, both the third and the fourth quarter. And really, all facets of the game, they just forced some turnovers. They converted on the turnovers. They shot the ball well. And they made their foul shots. It was, uh, And they kept care of the ball when they when they had it. They didn't give any cheap, cheap shots away. And they only ended up with three turnovers. I may have missed one, so that's totally unofficial. But... Uh, three or four, whatever it was, that is a, a minuscule number for any team in basketball, particularly in high school basketball. And when you don't give away possessions, it makes it easy to uh, catch up and win a basketball game. Have you got the scoring sorted out? Or you I do. Are you doing your math? I, you got- I, I have it sorted out. No guarantees that I didn't miss a little bit. For Clopton in the loss, I have Lindsey with three points. I've got four points for Chase Hall. Jordan Genowine with five, four for Josh Harvey, two for Tucker Salmons, 12 for Cash Evans, and 14 for Kane Evans. The big thing there, though, is they had eight and 12 in the first half and didn't get much going in the second half. For Van Farr, I've got Carson Huff with nine, Gibson with six, Gaston with two, 19 for Nikos Conaway as he took over the second half of play and especially the fourth quarter. Pacey Redding with 16 on the night two for Utterback, and six for Carter Jennings. Plopton was six for nine from the free throw line. Van Farr, 10 for 13. It's a very good free throw shooting by the Indians. Nine turnovers for the Hawks, as we mentioned, three for Van Farr. And the Van Farr Indians win the tournament, the 99th annual. We're going to be, hopefully we're going to be joined by Coach Pat Conaway. They're taking pictures. So let's step aside for to hear from some of our sponsors, and we hopefully we'll have Coach Conway. Uh, right after this on KGF MWBBA Sports. Bowling Green Tournament coverage brought to you by Lacrosse Lumber, Silex Banking Company, and Calumet of Missouri. 
Is winter giving your home a hard time? Let People's Bank and Trust make financing those home improvements easy. I'm Jake Thompson, and we have loans designed specifically for repairs and renovations, along with home equity lines of credit. Stop by People's Bank and Trust on Business 61 in Bowling Green or in historic downtown Louisiana and ask to speak to one of our lenders about how we can help you. People's Bank and Trust, online at www.pbtc.net, member FDIC, equal housing lender, and MLS number 407724. From the classic cheesesteak and rich crab cakes, a taste of Philly in Bowling Green is a fan favorite. A meal ready for you before or after the game, and game day jerseys are welcome. Open seven days a week. A taste of Philly. Business Highway 54 West in Bowling Green. State Farm in Pittsfield understands that life can be tough. The State Farm staff is there to help you make smart decisions when it comes to all your insurance and financial service needs. Call, email, text, or stop by the office Monday through Friday between 9 to 5 to talk to an agent. State Farm in Pittsville, a family-oriented office, is located at 311 Half West Washington Street in Pittsville, serving Pike County, Illinois, and the surrounding areas. It's time to visit Hayden's Motorsports Center in Frankfurt. Time to ride with Honda and Polaris ATVs, side-by-sides, and motorcycles. Time to work with steel and Husqvarna chainsaws, weed eaters, leaf blowers, and more. Hayden's Motorsports Center, just off Highway 61 North in Frankfurt. Area high school sports on Eagle 102. Brought to you by Rod Prentice and Brenda Crawford, State Farm Agents. Pepsi and Ackles Farm Market. The champions of the 99th Annual Bowling Green Invitational Tournament are the Van Far Indians, and we're happy to be joined by victorious head coach Pat Conaway. And Pat, congratulations. That was a nice effort by your guys. Thank you. Very much appreciated. Uh, you know, didn't play well in the first half as far as defensively, and, uh, you know, they just came out and committed. I mean, that's that's Van Far Indian basketball, and we come out, and our target is the whole team's to 45 or less. Was not happy with giving up 28 in the first half, and then, you know, until the last, I don't know, they scored, what, four points there or whatever in the last minute and a half. Or, you know, we gave up 14 in basically, you know, 14 minutes. And, and that's right. who we are. And that was the difference in the game. So what would you tell them at half? You know, it didn't didn't go right. Uh, you only you only scored 23 points in the first half, which is a little bit out of character for you. But uh, you came out and had a big 16-7 to 7 advantage in the third, and that kind of sent you on your way. Yeah, we've been playing good third quarters. Uh, really, we just told you know, we weren't aggressive. We weren't attacking when when you play a half and you only have fourteen fouls against big kids like that, Cash and Kane, you're not doing something right. You know, Nikos wasn't getting downhill, wasn't attacking. Um, Pacey had trouble getting open. We just we weren't being very physical. And you know, they were letting us play tonight, you know, it was physical both ways. And we just had to, you know, man up and accept that challenge. And they did a very good job. You know, Nico starts off getting a steal and then Pacey gets a bucket, you know, quick four oh run and all of a sudden it's a one point game. They call timeout and you know we're focused. You know, our our commitment to defense is what we what we want to do each half is a minimum. We want three sets of three consecutive stops because that'll win ball games. And we didn't do it in the first half. We didn't even get one set, you know, consecutive. And then the second half, you know, we did a, an excellent job. Yeah, your guards really turned up the screws on their guards in that second half. Yeah, you know, Gage was great defensively. And then, uh, you know, anytime we can get anybody to start pressuring us, uh, that just opens the gates for Nikos. I mean. He can get to the rim, he can elevate, he can finish, and then you, you collapse on on him, he kicks to par, and par hits a wide open three. I mean, that boy can shoot it. But, uh, you know, we, we got great balance, and that, that's what we need to, uh, you know, to be able to uh, make a run, and that's what we're building. We want to be playing our best in February, which is right around the corner. You know, and, and Carter coming out, starting off hitting two threes out of the gates, because we knew we had to try and pull cash away and, mm -hmm. and honestly carter's probably our best shooter pure shooter and uh you know he hit two big ones and that kind of set a tone and then then we got flat you know i wasn't real happy we hit five threes in the first half which is great but we settled for it too much right you know, we, and only scored 23 points yeah yeah, <laughs> you, know, yeah. So. We, you know we only shot four free throws it just shows you know weren't aggressive but uh hats off to the kids uh you know they accepted the challenge and uh you know they're they're tourney champs so i'm very proud of them to, to come in as a one seed and We've always talked about playing like a one seed, and they did this week. And before I let you go, you know, it's a team game. We all understand that. But you did have two guys that really, really showed themselves this, this week. Uh, Pacey had a great tournament all week. Yes. And then Nikos, maybe in the semi, didn't have the type of game that he's used to or that he wanted. 
but man, he really showed it in the second half. Oh yeah, and you know, and that's the thing with with NJ is, you know, people talk about uh, you know his scoring, but you know what he wants, he wants a triple double. And you know, he's our leading rebounder, he's our leading assist guy. And you know, the other night against BG, he only had seven, but he had seven assists. And you know, that's the thing is make everyone else better, get everyone else to easy shots, and then Pacey. When Pacey sees one go in, holy smokes, he might hit three or four in a row. And at 6-3, you know, it, I thought Coach Francis did a good job. They basically were in no help on Pacey and getting physical with him. So we had to make some adjustments, kind of move him around, and, and we freed him up. And then once teams go zone, Gage and Pacey and NJ and Carson can step out and Carter. We got shooters, so uh, we're a tough matchup if we're clicking. We just got to gotta stay consistent. You know, we got to – to win a district with a Clopton and a Harrisburg, you got to play four quarters. Two's just right. not going to do it. Well, congratulations! It's a it's a nice night for your guys. A good win, and uh, good luck the rest of the way. I'm sure Thank we'll you see guys. you a number of times. You got some big conference games coming up. Yeah, we got to go to Moco on uh, <laughs> Thursday, and that's you know that that's going to be a load. But uh, you know, it, it'll let us know where we're at. That's you for bet. sure. You but uh, appreciate you guys' coverage and support. It's awesome because uh, you know. My wife's dad, my father in laws in Fort Myers, Florida, watching the game. And it's pretty awesome that people can do that. So thank you, guys. Right. Congratulations. Good luck the rest of the way. Thank you. That's head coach Pat Conaway, the victorious Van Far Indians, a 62-46 win over the Clopton Hawks in the 99th Annual Bowling Green Invitational Tournament. And we'll be back to wrap things up here from Bowling Green High School after this on KJFM WBBA Sports. Brought to you by Barnes Roots and Herbs, Bowling Green Veterinary Clinic, and Tom Bolin Ford. Geared up just off the square in Pittsfield is your first stop for screen printing and embroidery. The folks at Geared Up take pride in making their communities and schools look great while offering the best prices around. If you're looking to expand your wardrobe or maybe a gift is on the list, Stop by their store and check out numerous items in stock. When you're looking for custom apparel and awards for your business, organization, or team, stop by Geared Up, 211 South Madison in Pittsfield. Noah Builders in Silex is a proud supporter of all area athletes. They're a small locally owned contractor with over 25 years of experience in custom and new home construction. Noah Builders wants to take your forever home plan and make it a reality. Call or visit Noah Builders at noahbuildersinc.com. Your car, your stuff, your savings. Combine your auto and renter's insurance with a call to State Farm Insurance agent Cindy Blaylock in Louisiana and let Cindy show you how to put life back in your life insurance. Auto, home, and life. Make your wallet happy. Here to help life go right, State Farm Insurance agent Cindy Blaylock in Louisiana. Did you know you can earn money by harvesting wild plants? Hi, I'm Craig Barnes with Barnes Roots and Herbs. We're south of Eolia, and we buy wild harvested plant products like sassafras leaf, walnuts, golden seal, ginseng, and many more. For more information and a list of what we're buying, visit us on Facebook, or you can call us at 636-205-4333. Barnes Roots and Herbs, 636-205-4333. Money does grow on trees. The best coverage of high school sports on KJFM brought to you by Community State Bank of Missouri, County Market in Louisiana, and Bowling Green Pharmacy. Welcome back to Bowling Green. Rodney, your final thoughts about tonight. Well, that was a, that was a, a really entertaining game game to watch, and you know the score kind of got away there at the end, but it it just uh, it wasn't that Clopton gave anything. Van Farr just went out and took it. And, you know, he, he Coach uh, Conaway mentioned the first half. They didn't, and we even said on air, didn't really have an answer for the two Evans. And they did the second half. You know, they had uh, 20 points in the first half, and I think they only had uh, two, four, six, eight in the second. And it just, uh, that was the answer. And then they turned up the heat, and, and they just played really good basketball. Bellsbury won the Consolation trophy over North Calais, 49-40. Winfield wins the third place trophy, 60-46 to over Bowling Green. By the way, the Bowling Green girls won the Sportsmanship Award. Clopton Cheerleading Club won the – or cheerleading team won the cheerleading award as well. I want to thank everybody from the station. We've got a whole list of it. As I mentioned, we did every game of the tournament. Even the night we had eight games, we had them on air or on online. Stace and Rodney, Maddie, Tannis, Brennan, Mark, Corey – Liv, April, Chris, Gordon, 
everybody we could find and then, and then a couple. So uh, we, we appreciate all their work. It's a long week for a lot of these folks, and I'm sure they're going to go home and sleep for the rest of the weekend. That's going to do it here from Bowling Green High School. My name is Jim Ross. Your final score in the championship game, Van Farr 62, flopped in 46. So long until next week. to area high school sports on Eagle 102. Join us each week as